The giant skyscraper was drowning in sunlight and unfading glory. This is Xing Lun, the financial high-rise building of Yin City. A burrowing employee of the company demanded fair treatment. After all, he had designed the project himself. However, the guy was not paid for the work he had done. The brazenly shameless boss reminded us that the fruits of our employees' labor belong to the company, and said company is run by this brazen bald hoarder. So he gets all the credit. The young lanky man was strong, intelligent, and talented. However, he was also very willful, and liked to quarrel with the top management. That's why the chief hated this stubborn man. The impudent willful man thought that only idiots could work in such a company, and he didn't want to be one of them. Annoyed, Yang Chen hastily packed his things. He left nothing for the crumbs. Concerned employees asked their colleague to temper his pride and resentment. After all, the guy has to financially support the girl who takes care of her paralyzed father. The young man was an incurable romantic. He truly loved his girlfriend and never cheated on her. The flighty daredevil was not discouraged. After all, he had his own house and car, so he could be a driver and earn a living. In our small and vast world, personal information spreads quickly among people. A young woman finds out in a flash that her lover has lost his job. The selfish, self-loving whore said that she no longer wanted to date an unemployed poor man. After all, she had always wanted to bask in luxury and shine among the wealthy bigwigs. The mercurial windbag even blocked the guy's number. She didn't want love without money. Overnight, the heartthrob lost his job and his love. He found himself at a crossroads in life. However, Yang Chen was an optimist. He couldn't grieve for long. The restless boy was not out of work. The first order came in. The driver confirmed the order. He wanted to make as much money as possible quickly. After all, maybe then the girl would love him again. The client demanded a cab be sent to him immediately. That's why we can't delay. The young man flew to the specified place in no time. But, as it turned out, the customer had only applied foundation to her face, and she demanded that the driver wait for her for 20 minutes. The cab driver yelled that the makeup could have been done before the order but the customer said she would complain to the driver if he continued to talk to her rudely and canceled the order. The cocky guy wasn't one of the shy ten. He immediately wanted to teach the insolent customer a lesson, so he canceled the order in a flash. Unexpectedly, a complaint flew in. The client was indignant that the driver spoke to her rudely and canceled the order without reason. Suddenly something strange happened. It's not something you dream about very often. Out of nowhere, an indescribable beauty appeared. She jumped out of a box, and it really spooked the driver. Pretty lady says the host has been discovered. Now we need to connect to that host. If the cab driver allows this, he will be rewarded with a fabulous reward for a bad review. The poor man was confused and didn't believe at once that there could be a reward for bad reviews. He was too surprised and trembled with fright. The lovely nymph claimed that the lucky one would receive a certain reward for each bad review. It could be a luxurious villa, an expensive car, money, or some very valuable mental or physical abilities, skills. The boy thought the girl's words were a lie, but now he was ready to do anything to become rich. So he let the system connect as quickly as possible. It was a tremendously satisfying and uncommon connection, and it was very successful. Beauty said that the system recommends getting bad reviews from insolent, arrogant, inadequate passengers. Although it is possible to provide good service, so as not to tarnish your reputation, but then there will be no reward. Recently, the driver received a complaint, so the system gave him 28% of the shares of All Island Group. Now the lucky man has become the second largest shareholder of the hotel group. An incredible surprise just fell on my head. It means that the system of bad reviews is very cool, throwing away such gifts. A new order came in. We had to go to the All Island Hotel. There's no doubt that this order is for Yang Chen. He must go to the hotel immediately to get the stock purchase agreement. Here comes another customer. The cab driver seems dazzled by this girl's beauty. Good thing the guy has a car. Now he can drive the beauties around every day and make money too. There was no traffic congestion on the highway. It was therefore safe to carry out your order. The girl Wang Jiayi was a little embarrassed. She felt like the driver was constantly watching her through the mirror. But the lusty catcher said looking at the road behind him. He pretended not to be interested in the shapely beauty at all. The picky girl began to resent that the cab driver was inexperienced and too slow. She also thought he was very rude and cynical. The offended guy decided to teach the arrogant passenger a lesson. He hit the gas harder. The customer's wish is the law. Now an arrogant young lady will not dare to call a cab driver slow. The sly gambler flew faster than the wind. He was an energetic guy by life and liked to drive fast. The lush-breasted beauty thought the driver was crazy. She said she was wrong when she called him inexperienced, clumsy, and slow. The frightened girl started calling the cab driver a cute little brother and tearfully begged him to slow down. The girl's requests only encouraged the mischievous boy. 
he told her to call him daddy instead of brother. Maybe then he would slow down and they wouldn't have an accident. The stunned beauty began to call the cab driver daddy. She pleasured the wayward trader as best she could. The cat played with the mouse. The smug passerby got a decent portion of adrenaline and a lot of compliments. The goal is achieved. We can relax. The car pulled up to the All Island Hotel. The client was delivered to the appointed place on time. The angry lady shouted that she would definitely leave a negative review about the terrible service. She will also complain to the police that the cab driver's driving was extremely dangerous and violated all traffic rules. But the bad reviews were only to the benefit of the crook. He got another reward from the system. It's good to be the bad guy. Yang Chen used to work for Xing Lung's finance company. Now she'll work for him. The sultry beauty was extremely surprised when she saw the impudent shameless man in the hotel. She was very much annoyed by this arrogant rascal. The young mistress thought the insolent bastard was following her. She told the guy not to follow her everywhere she went. But the narcissistic new dad declared that he had a long-standing reservation here. He had an important meeting scheduled at the hotel. Mr. Yang Chen's table has been reserved. Apparently this place has been waiting for this important guest for a long time. The hotel waitress tried her best to please the young gentleman. She walked him to his table herself. Coffee was instantly on the table. Now there would be the most delicious dishes for the honored guest. The young lady tried to appear calm and unperturbed, but in fact, she was extremely annoyed by this handsome bastard. It turns out that Wang Jiayi came to the hotel on a blind date. The guy she first met was called Zhang Lun. The new co-owner of the hotel watched silently. He is now a very important person here. Suddenly, a bald rich man with an insolent smug face appeared in the hotel. Two obliging coquettes hovered around him like Tabaki's jackal around Shere Khan. The blonde decided to leave her pompous turkey for a moment. She wanted to say hello to someone. The silly twirler Chen Xin reminded Yang Chen that he had broken up with his girlfriend Zhao Fei Fei a long time ago. Therefore, she asked him not to pursue them anymore. The blonde was afraid that the guy would ruin their lucrative love affair. The imperturbable young man replied that he had no interest in fallen women who sold their bodies to old fat men. He had come here to deal with very important matters, not to chase after cheap harlots. The blonde was very indignant. She felt as if she'd been pelted with a bucket of slop in an instant. A self-centered bald man wondered why his kitty was taking so long to talk to a stranger. After all, she should always be at his feet and only serve him. The blonde turned into a kind, sweet fairy in no time. She said she was about to join her rich suitor. But Mr. Lee decided to unceremoniously interrupt the conversation. He asked what Yang Chen was doing here and who he was. The unperturbed daredevil replied that he was the boyfriend of the girl that the bald rich guy was now dating. He also added that he had absolutely no interest in Zhou Fei Fei right now. After all, it was today that they had broken up for good. Mr. Lee suddenly became serious. He wanted to know the truth about his new fling's relationship with this impertinent fellow. The sly Martin told a bunch of lies. Specifically, she said she broke up with her boyfriend a long time ago. But he was always stalking her and intimidating her. The bald Don Juan reassured his co-star. He said that he trusted his cute little cat completely. But he would teach the young, impudent man a lesson. Show him where the crayfish were. The self-righteous gentleman said that no one could touch his beauties. Only he can enjoy their attention, affection, and love. The haughty man ordered to summon Manager Chen without delay. He wanted to discuss an important matter with him. The annoying coquette asked the guy to leave the hotel immediately. Otherwise, he'd be in very serious trouble. The astonished Wang Jiayi thought that the cab driver was just a weirdo who was getting into trouble himself. Things were getting heated. The situation became more and more complicated and interesting. The slightly flustered girl informed me that the cocky guy at the next table had been her cab driver recently. And he was the one who brought her to the hotel. Miss Wang also added that she was a complete stranger to the impertinent man. The girl complained that the driver was very rude and ill-mannered. He made her call him daddy and almost killed her during the trip. An enraged womanizer decided to punish a cheeky cab driver. Perhaps after that his new lover will consider him a real superhero. The worried girl tried to stop Mr. Jang, but the rich guy wanted to prove to everyone that he was the real king here. A pompous major said that some inexperienced cab driver recently abused his girlfriend. That's why this cab driver should be punished as soon as possible. The imperturbable brave man did not deny that he had played on the girl's nerves a little. Then he calmly asked the stranger to introduce himself. The golden youth proudly announced that his name was Jang Lun. He told him to immediately fall on his knees in front of his new girlfriend, call her aunt, and sincerely apologize. Otherwise, the cab driver would be thrown out of the hotel like a naughty cat. But the steadfast daredevil continued to ask questions, ignoring the threats. In particular, he asked who was the father of this rich, yellow-haired chick. The arrogant boaster proudly said that his father is the chairman of Tianmu Investment, which is going to invest in the All Island Hotel Group. 
Therefore, the scandalous cab driver will be blacklisted and will never be allowed to come here again. The threats of the rich people did not frighten Yang Chen. He said that all their words were just baby talk. I think a terrible scandal was brewing. It was unacceptable for some poor cab driver to talk so brazenly to rich, honorable gentlemen. The manager was in a hurry to meet the honored guest. He was concerned that Mr. Lee had not announced his intention to dine at the hotel restaurant in advance. The manager was also incredibly happy to see Mr. Zhang, or at least pretended to be happy. He said that the most important guests had arrived at the hotel today. A bald rich man said he decided to celebrate his girlfriend's birthday today, but some homeless tramp decided to ruin the party. The angry major also complained about Yang Chen who had ruined his blind date. The rich gentleman demanded that the troublemaker be kicked out of the hotel now. The manager was gladly ready to fulfill the wishes of highly respected customers, and asked to show the one who had offended them. The bullies immediately pointed their fingers at the troublemaker, who was calmly enjoying his drink. The young ruffian seemed extremely pleased to be in the epicenter of the public's attention. The shocked manager immediately trembled like an aspen leaf and almost collapsed on his knees in front of Yang Chen. After all, the board of directors had earlier shown him the face of the new major shareholder. The manager ordered the guards to immediately kick Mr. Li and Mr. Zheng out of the hotel. He also ordered the two men to be blacklisted. Security should have kicked out a regular and important supplier of food to the hotel and the son of a man who planned to invest in the All Island Hotel Group. Could this be a mistake? The alert manager introduced Mr. Yang Chen to everyone present. He added that this esteemed gentleman was the second largest shareholder of All Island Hotel Group. The people present did not even believe that some ostentatious passerby could be an influential co-owner of this luxurious hotel. Everyone was shocked. The judicious Wang Jiayi now realized why Yang Chen was so snooty. After all, many rich people are too arrogant. However, the girl couldn't understand why this young rich man was working as a cab driver. The strict shareholder said that the hotel didn't need Mr. Li's products and Zhang Lun's father's investment. He ordered those bastards to be kicked out without delay. The silly minx regretted that she had lost a huge bag of money. She could have lived comfortably with a superb, young, handsome man. The cunning fox immediately began to play the role of the poor sheep. She claimed that she had no intimate relationship with the bald hog, and she belonged to Yang Chen only from top to toe. Suddenly, the blonde woman began to claim that Zhao Fei Fei was vile and dishonest. The egregious con artist was sure that the new shareholder should only date her. After all, she is beautiful and chaste. The shrewd fellow realized that a fight was brewing between two dumbass chickens, and he obviously didn't want to waste his precious time on such a pathetic, disgusting spectacle. The plump, servile boar began to beg for forgiveness at the young man. He was sorry for messing around with Yang Chen's girlfriend. There's a limit to everything. Stoic patience has finally broken down. This ball of hypocrisy was beginning to cause a gag reflex. The angry shareholder once again ordered that all the bastards be thrown out without delay. This time, no one must disobey his order. The manager was always an obedient and obliging watchdog. In no time at all, he started following his boss's orders. Security quickly cleared the hotel of some of the stinking garbage. It was much easier to breathe now. The obsequious watchdog whispered that Zhang Lun was standing in front of them right now. He's the son of the chairman of a large influential company called Qianmu Investment. Apparently the sycophantic lackey didn't really want to quarrel with the guy who was born with a golden spoon in his mouth. The new boss was as steady as a rock. He said he was not interested in the bastard's investments at all. The manager promptly ordered security to kick the arrogant young rich man out of their building. He also ordered the major to be put on their hotel group's blacklist. The young, scandalized man tried to protest. He argued that he should not listen to the words of the second shareholder. After all, there are more influential people. Zhang Lun realized that he was not welcome here, so he decided to go to another restaurant. But the sly one decided to finally humiliate the arrogant bastard. He planned to steal his girlfriend. The cunning rascal began to set snares to catch the lushly breasted bird, and he did it quite skillfully and quickly. The restless Don Juan did not shy away from any means to achieve his goals. He was firmly convinced that he would be a winner on the love front. The charming flatterer stated that he wanted to apologize to the girl. After all, he scared her a lot with inappropriate jokes in the car. Therefore, they need to sit down and talk so that there are no hard feelings between them. The cunning girl thought about it. She decided that it was better to be with someone who was more influential, strong, and attractive. The sly circlet was happy to let the young lover make it up to her. She offered to start their relationship with a clean slate. The enemy was finally humiliated and insulted. He cursed the windy temptress. She had offended him terribly by becoming an ally of his worst enemy. The girl said that Mr. Zhang Lun's behavior was extremely unreasonable. After all, she did not ask him to start a quarrel with the co-owner of the hotel. The narcissist boiled with anger. He started hurling threats. 
He said he would beat the cunning liar if she sat down to dinner with his enemy. There was a man next to her, near whom no monsters, inclement weather, storms, were scary. So the girl was not much frightened by the threats of the self-confident egoist. Miss Wong trusted Young Chung completely. She felt like she was behind his broad back like a stone wall, so she willingly sat down at the table. The humiliated young rich man tried to regain his reputation with his fists. The girl's face could have been hurt. The co-owner of the hotel was very quick and strong. He easily, lightning fast, cooled down the fervor of the mad rambler. The manager and his guards rushed to the rescue. They rushed to protect their new boss without a second thought. The selfish bastard shouted that he would take revenge on everyone. After all, his father is a very influential and respected man. But no one listened to the buzzing of the annoying fly. It was quickly removed from the restaurant. At last there is peace and quiet. Now we can relax and have a heart-to-heart -heart talk. The shining guy offered to formally introduce himself. He said his name was Yang Chen. He was delighted that such a beautiful girl would share a dinner with him. The girl said her name was Wang Jiayi. She decided to delete the bad review about the service of the strange rich cab driver. But the jolly man didn't care about such trivialities. He said that a bad review would be a good reminder of their special meeting. So the guy felt it was not worth deleting this review. It was an unexpected date. Looks like the couple started writing their love affair. The guests cast disapproving glances at the new couple. They envied the rich gentleman who had so quickly and easily won the heart of the beautiful woman. The young lady asked what the guy's parents do. She wanted to know everything about her potential husband. As it turned out, the boy was an orphan. His parents died years ago. He said he was now forced to work as a cab driver. The girl told me that her hometown is Sioux. Nowadays, she works in a very fancy store. Sometimes she goes on blind dates in the hope of finding her true love. The shrewd guy thought that Wang Jiayi was more sincere and not as self-serving as his previous girlfriend. He said that everyone had the right to strive for a better life, and a woman could unashamedly rely on a man. The words of the serpent tempter were sweeter than honey. The girl easily succumbed to his charms. The hops quickly hit his head. The tongue was loosened. The conversation became more frank. A teary-eyed girl confessed that she had two blind dates today. During the first date today, a very cute guy tried to kiss her in a movie theater. But the girl thought that kissing was inappropriate on a first date, and so she ran away from the annoying guy. Yang Chen was sure that if you don't like a person, you don't want to kiss him. But the girl argued that appearance was not the most important thing, and she was sure that one shouldn't kiss when meeting someone for the first time. However, the experienced catcher believed that at the first meeting you can give each other not only kisses, but also something else. The rules of behavior are sometimes dictated by our feelings, our heart. The blushing beauty stubbornly didn't believe it was possible to kiss on a first date, and even more so, to go to bed together. The young Don Juan had no time for long, tedious, naive conversations. It was too boring for him. The cunning seducer was approaching the girl. It was hard to foresee what he would do next. The serpent tempter was very close. The words were stuck somewhere in my throat. Turns out you can kiss on a first date, and a girl made sure of it today. The seducer said he had paid for dinner. He was very tired, so he went to room 1280. The confused Wang Jiai didn't recognize herself. After all, she had never let anyone kiss her on a first date before. Now she didn't stick to that rule. Probably the sly catcher had specifically mentioned his room number. It was like an explicit invitation to his room. Would the bewildered girl take advantage of this invitation? A young stockholder is staying in this room. Perhaps he's resting peacefully. Or is he waiting for a beautiful woman? A shower refreshes, washes away sweat and fatigue. It gives you a new energy boost and restores your vitality. There's a knock at the door. Who could it be? The shy bird thought long and hard but she decided to fly to the call of sweet temptation. Their feelings merged in an instant. They lost their sense of time and space and were completely immersed in their amorous affairs. The confused bird tried to chirp, but from the intense excitement she lost her voice and her sanity. The beauty's body was hot. Her heart was beating fast. Wang Jiayi drank too many heady drinks, but even they couldn't drown out her anxiety and embarrassment. The perfect torso was maddening. His hands were drawn to such a temptation. The imposing Don Juan turned out to be very hospitable. He immediately offered the desired guest a solid portion of love. No need for witnesses, no disturbance. Only the two of them should savor the taste of their love, drink it to the full. Sometimes feelings, emotions are very difficult to control. And it is not always necessary to do it. At certain moments you should give freedom to your unrestrained feelings. No one is immune to love. It often comes to us when we are not expecting it at all. It was a delightful morning. It was warm and sunny outside. Yang Chen was still half asleep. He couldn't understand where the beauty had disappeared to. The god of beauty Apollo has slept long in the arms of a lovely nymph. 
It's time to stretch his flawless body a little. Many guys were eager to date the girl. However, it seems that she wanted to give her chastity to Yang Chung. The surprised lanky man had not expected such a surprise. He only now realized that he had been in bed with a virgin. There was something on the table. It looked like another gift. It turns out that the girl left money for the fact that the guy was good in bed. She also wrote that soon she would receive another salary, and then she could again meet with the young lover. So she asked him to save his strength. Wang Jiayi was very unpredictable and willful. She left money to a young rich man. In this way, she hinted that she would always be a free bird that could not be kept in a cage. Love is a fascinating thing, but it's time to work hard and take what's rightfully yours. Yang Chen arrived at the main office of Xinglun Financial Building. He wanted to pick up some of his very important things. The office manager, Cheng Chu, was very helpful and friendly. He seemed incredibly happy to see his new boss. The employees were actively discussing their new young boss. What changes will he bring to the company? Another gift from the system. Yang Chen is getting richer by the day. The manager handed over important documents to his new boss. From now on, the fortune teller became a full-fledged owner of this huge building. The new boss said that the manager was a very decent and honest person. He suggested that all employees continue to work for him. No one refused the tempting offer. Everyone was happy that they would have a good job. The office staff liked the young, attractive boss. They greeted him cheerfully. Suddenly, the owner of the building became interested in the people who rented the 15th floor. He wanted to know everything about them. Chung Chu immediately began to carry out the task he had been given. He did everything with lightning speed. The tenant of the 15th floor is called Jing Yan. His lease expires at the end of this month. The boss decided to go to the 15th floor himself. He took his loyal manager with him just in case. The elevator stopped. Now the guy would have a chance to see his old office again, where he was paid a small salary for his hard work. A very familiar place. The young man knew every corner, everything here. A bewildered manager had to take a call from a client who wanted to rent space in their building, so the new boss decided to go to his old office himself. The sign on the door was the same. Apparently the lousy character of the chief of this company hadn't changed either. The employees of the company did not expect to see their former colleague here. How dare a daring rebel show up in this office? One of the employees begged the hot-tempered daredevil to go back to work. He even wanted to talk to the chief about it himself. However, the young troublemaker refused such a favor. The fierce fellow wanted Jing Yan to appear immediately. He shouted like an enraged emperor at the negligent courtiers. The cocky, arrogant chief quickly showed up. He said that no one had the right to break discipline in his office. The young man was surprised that the boss had arrived so hastily. He immediately demanded that the money he had honestly earned be returned to him. The bald-cheeked man said that Yang Chun could go back to work. At the same time, the guy must make at least one profitable deal every month and receive a very small salary for it. However, the restless rebel said that he no longer wanted to cooperate with the swindler. He demanded the return of his earned commissions. The brazen deceiver stated that he never promised to pay the former employee a commission. There is no evidence that he made any promises. The naive truth-teller claimed that all his colleagues had heard about the promised commissions, and they could confirm it. However, none of the employees dared to tell the truth. Everyone was afraid of the bald tyrant. The slavish toady claimed their favorite boss was always right, and he didn't promise to pay commissions. The boy looked at the despicable hypocrites with contempt. These puppets didn't even realize that they were digging their own grave. The foolish flatterer said that their boss was a very good and honest person. Therefore, Yang Chen should apologize to the boss and return to work. The tyrant recognized that the young man was talented, but he must also be humble. That's exactly the kind of employee the company needs. The duplicitous brat began to complain that it was very hard for him to take care of the company's employees, of whom there were too many. Besides, he had a lot of important issues to deal with. In particular, the renewal of the lease on the premises. Some flatterers pretended to sympathize with the caring boss. The shoeless brave declared that he had worked honestly and fruitfully. Therefore, he insisted that he should have received his deserved salary. But he was deceived. Suddenly, the maddened tyrant ordered the door to be closed immediately. A look of fright appeared on his face. The servile jackal quickly carried out his superior's orders. No one could leave the office without the tyrant's permission. The manager started to worry about why the door was shut tight. Is everything okay with the boss? The arrogant arrogant ordered him to immediately delete the recording the guy made during their altercation from his phone. Then he would let Yang Chung leave the office unharmed. A stubborn rebel was hard to change his mind, so he had to create an insidious trap for him. A crazy liar smashed a computer, claimed it was a former employee. That's why his paycheck was garnished. But the young lanky man recorded all of his boss's despicable deeds on his phone. Now he had irrefutable evidence. Even if the recording is deleted from the phone, it still remains in the cloud. 
so the brazen tyrant is trapped. The sycophantic jackal said we should beat up the stubborn one, and then destroy the tape. Someone knocked insistently on the door. Everyone fell silent. No one expected the general manager to show up in person. He rarely came to this office. The worried manager said he wanted to see Mr. Yang right away. He was very anxious that nothing bad should happen to his boss. The bald-faced coward could not understand which Mr. Yan was referring to. There was fright and surprise in his eyes. The manager reported that the new boss of the company was standing right in front of them. The cowardly hypocrite was even more surprised and frightened. Chang Chu apologized for being late. He couldn't understand what was going on here. The arrogant bastard didn't want to believe that Yang Chen was the new boss. Isn't this a prank? The manager said that the Honorable Mr. Yang paid $2 billion for the building they are in. He is now the owner of the company. No one could understand where an ordinary guy got such a huge amount of money. And why did he buy this building? Was it for revenge? The flattering jackal suggested that maybe it was a ridiculous mistake, and the real boss isn't really here. The manager was greatly annoyed by fools. He angrily began to shout that no one should doubt the truth of his words. The duplicitous scoundrel became courteous in no time. He immediately began to apologize. The terrified bastard claimed he acted recklessly. Now he's ready to make amends for his mistake. He even offered to double his former employee's salary. The manager was surprised that Mr. Yang had worked here before and didn't get the salary he deserved. He didn't expect the boss of this company to be so unfair. An angry Chang Chu said that Jing Yan had grossly violated the terms of the contract. Therefore, this contract can be terminated, and the company can be demanded to pay triple the rent. The smug funny man replayed a recording of a recent conversation. The truth came out. Now the liar was willing to do anything to get the guy to delete the tape. After all, it would finally ruin his reputation in business. The honest guy didn't want to take any bribes. He simply demanded to be paid back what they had promised to pay him earlier. The new boss was fed up with the idle chatter and bickering. He asked a conscientious manager to handle the matter. He was planning to leave. However, the owner could not leave unhindered. Jing Yang stood in his way and tried to detain him. The insolent sycophant admitted that he was wrong. He begged for forgiveness and to continue his cooperation with his new boss. The young man said that he never forgave lies and betrayal. So he asked the balding cheapskate to leave the rented premises without delay. The duplicitous scoundrel realized he couldn't persuade his new boss. So he decided to resort to trickery to get out of his predicament. The angry guy didn't want to discuss anything with the mean man. He was about to leave the office in a hurry. The lying tyrant called his employees to help him. He promised to pay them 50,000 yuan to help him get out of the swamp he had fallen into. The cunning man asked for help in taking away the phone from the new boss. However, no one believed him and did not want to help the greedy liar. Moreover, no one wanted to quarrel with the influential owner of the building. Yang Chen was sure that almost all the employees hated their boss. Therefore, they would not support him and help an autocrat. The bald hog could start a fight at any moment. He was trembling, filled with anger. The shrewd manager realized that the insolent scoundrel would fight to the end. So he immediately called security. The scandal was heating up. The 15th floor was hot with violent emotions and quarrels. Suddenly all the employees of the main office arrived. They could not understand what had happened. The guards had already come running. They were ready to seize the stubborn liar at any moment. The hypocritical coward realized that it was useless to resist. Panic and fear gripped him. The smug young boss asked the manager to deal with everything that happened in that ill-fated office. He thought that Chang Chu was a very prudent and diligent employee, so he would be able to solve any issues easily and quickly. The master stated emphatically that it was now necessary to return to the people all that they had honestly earned. After all, if Jing Yang went bankrupt, it would be impossible to do so. Suddenly the employees became brave. They said that the boss was forcing them to work overtime for free. He also forced them to sign dubious contracts that violated the law. Even the servile jackal Li Yuan started to sling mud at his boss, and at this moment he seemed even more hypocritical and despicable. The vile jackal was trying to finally destroy the reputation and career of her favorite chief. She hoped that in this way she would save herself. The company's activity was suspended. The office was sealed. The defeated opponent tried to threaten Mr. Yang and promised that he would soon take revenge on the young man. But his threats did not scare anyone. Big news! A young gentleman was going to open an advertising agency in this office soon. So he invited his colleagues to cooperate with him in the not-too-distant future. All the co-workers immediately said they wanted to work at the new agency. Everyone wants a job. The sneaky jackal also really wanted to be an employee of the new agency. But the young boss refused to cooperate with someone who had recently betrayed him. No one believed the tears of the hypocritical traitor, and he must be punished. The unwavering boss said that he wanted honest and conscientious employees. To him, 
Li Yuan will always be a despicable traitor. Evil was punished, and the truth has triumphed. The new owner of the company promised that everyone could return to work in half a month. From now on, Xu Xiaoli will be their manager. Right now, people can take some rest and replenish their strength. The embarrassed girl stated that she did not have much work experience. Therefore, she was not suitable for a managerial position. Mary tried to reassure the confused female employee. He said that experience can be gained while working, so you shouldn't worry too much. All the employees thanked their boss. They promised to work hard and fruitfully in the company. People were happy that they would have the opportunity to work and earn money. Besides, they were sure that the new owner was very honest and decent. Therefore, he would not offend them. Yang Chen walked down to the parking lot. This was where his favorite car was. Not long ago, the guy was a powerful boss. Now he's just a cab driver. Time to make some money. There was a new order. The customer was very close. Come on, let's go on an adventure. Time is of the essence. The conscientious cab driver arrived on time. The customers were already waiting for him. The boy was surprised. The girl looked like Wang Lixian, his friend from university. The guy had a good memory, so he couldn't be mistaken. It really is his ex-girlfriend. Madame Wang recognized her old friend in a flash. She was happy to see him again. The chatty girl told her boyfriend Zhang Jiankin that the cab driver was her former classmate. She also added that the driver was the best student at the university, smart and very handsome. The guy suggested that the cabbie was quite popular, probably broke more than one girl's heart. A former classmate confirmed that many girls liked Yang Chen, and she regretted that he already had a lover. Taratorka wouldn't stop talking. She was trying to find out whether her classmate was still seeing his lover. That was the question that worried her very much. The cab driver was a little annoyed. He said that he had broken up with his girlfriend and didn't want to think about her anymore. The restless slugger regretted that her classmate wasted his time on an unfaithful, bad-tempered minx. She still dreamed of dating such a smart, handsome man. The straightforward cab driver recalled that he once didn't want to date Wang Lixin. But now he doesn't want to remember the distant past. The embarrassed chatterbox pretended as if she were glad that Mr. Ian had rejected her once. After all, she would be living in poverty with him now. Miss Wang remembered that she was 19 years old when she confessed her love to this cab driver. But he didn't want to date her and humiliated her a lot. The driver apologized for having once offended the girl. Now he didn't even remember what he had said to her. Suddenly, an arrogant client suggested that the cab driver go to work for their company. He said the driver could be a great cleaner in their office. Zhang Jian Kun was a planning manager at Heyun Company. The girl said she would be happy to have a former classmate serve coffee to her boyfriend and clean his office. The young man replied that he liked to work as a cab driver, and he doesn't need an official job now at all. A finicky balladeer started complaining that it was very hot in the car. She demanded to immediately close the window and turn on the air conditioner. The angry driver said he was under no obligation to turn on the air conditioning. It was not stipulated in the order. The angry buffalo started shouting that the cab driver was quite insolent. He ordered the driver to turn on the air conditioner without delay. A frightened classmate tried to calm her boyfriend down. She said that they should not distract the driver because they might have an accident. The arrogant Miss Wang started threatening the cab driver. She said that if the air conditioner was not on, she would definitely leave a bad review about the service. Mr. Young stated that negative feedback does not scare him. He also added that customers can leave the car if they don't like the service. The arrogant buffalo ordered the car to stop right now. He did not wish to use the services of the impudent impudent any longer. The customer's wish is the law. The car has stopped. The fierce man ordered the cab driver to get out of the car now. Apparently he wanted to start a fight. The clever bugger said he would stay in his car and he wished his customers to enjoy the good weather, sunshine, and fresh air. The cunning trickster drove away quickly. The furious buffalo ran after the car and cursed the dodgy, impudent man. The confused girl couldn't figure out where they were. It was too hot and stuffy outside. They were on a bridge over the river. It's forbidden for cars to stop here. That's why it's impossible to call a cab. The ferocious buffalo was burning with anger. It was the first time he had ever encountered such an unceremonious, stubborn cab driver. The customer decided to urgently leave a complaint about the terrible service. He was ready to tear the young, insolent man apart. The lucky guy got a long-awaited bad review. The system also gave him two million yuan for it. The carefree adventurer was enjoying a successful trip. He was able to earn a huge amount of money quickly and easily. A lucky day indeed. Internet users actively discussed Wang Lixin's complaint. But strangely enough, many began to sympathize with Mr. Yang, who quit the company and now has to work part-time as a cab driver. Life goes on and one should move forward. You should not pay attention to negative reviews. The guy decided to send the recording from the car to the chat room. He also asked his acquaintances not to disturb him if they were ashamed to communicate with a simple cab driver. The tape was in the chat room, and now everyone started to condemn Miss Wang who was being too arrogant. 
The silly chatterbox resented that the tape had made its way into her classmate's chat room. Now she was the subject of ridicule from her acquaintances. Mr. Zhang decided to invite the cab driver to the Hing Hotel. There he planned to punish and humiliate the impolite guy. The girl supported her boyfriend's decision. She also wanted to take revenge on her classmate as soon as possible. Wang Lixin wants to invite me to dinner at the Hing Hotel and apologize. Yang Chen was surprised. It depends on whether I'm in a good mood that day, he answered. It's a beautiful sunny day. Van Lixen and that guy must still be having fun on the bridge. Hello, the car you called has arrived at your location, he called politely. How am I supposed to get there in this rain? Come here to pick me up, answered the customer. Then just wait there, I'll come and get you, added Jan. He grabbed an umbrella and despite the heavy downpour, went to help his client. Are you Miss Zhang? he asked, picking his way through the downpour. Sorry, there's so much water on the ground I can't walk on it, the customer snorted. Sorry, I don't have services for the disabled, Jan replied indignantly. He had just run here in the rain to hide a customer under his umbrella, and she was asking him to carry her to the car. Look at my new shoes. Do you know how expensive they are? There is so much water on the ground. What am I going to do if I don't get wet? Many people would love to carry me in their arms, but I haven't given them that chance. But you have that chance, she proudly declared. Let's forget about this point. I can only give you an umbrella, and you can walk yourself. Ian added calmly. You're so stupid, she was outraged, and snatched the umbrella out of his hands. She walked to the car on her own, while Jan walked in the rain the whole time. You've upset me. Do that again and you'll get a bad review, she added indignantly. Please fasten your seatbelt, answered the wet yawn. Some time passed and they arrived at their destination. We're here, Jan announced politely. I can't get out. There's too much water on the ground. I'll get my shoes dirty, declared the indignant customer. It's a car, not an airplane. How can I get any closer? Jan wondered. I don't care. You have to get me to the location or I will leave you a bad review. Believe me, I'm not messing with you. I will really complain about you. She added. Good, then get out of the car and complain about me all you want. Ian added. I'm not getting out of the car until you take me upstairs. She replied. It makes me wonder. I wonder where do you get such stupid customers? Yang Chen took the key out of the ignition and got out of the car. Okay, just stay here as long as you want, he said and slammed the car door shut. I'm off for a snack, goodbye, Jan replied. He was smarter this time and used his umbrella himself. The insolent customers had no choice but to get out of the car. Just wait, I'll sue you. She continued to be indignant. Large raindrops of rain greedily dug into her lush black hair. The raindrops fell greedily into her lush black hair. As soon as this cheeky customer left the car and started picking at her phone to leave a negative review, Yang Chen returned to the car. Ah, you bastard, she screamed as the car splashed her with water from the puddle. There are always people in this world who think they are entitled to special treatment, Yang said cheerfully. Ian checked his small thermos into which he poured hot tea. The thermos was completely empty. Shit, I'm completely out of tea, he said, taking the thermos out of the cup holder. Congratulations to the host for receiving a bad review and complaint. The system rewards the host with 50 grams of the Hongpao mother tree tea leaves. Please open the trunk and take out the reward. I specifically googled it. Turns out this tea is damn rare and expensive, so you could say this is a very expensive reward. It's a great system. Once again, Yang Chen remarked. He immediately pulled over to check the trunk. The reward is only 50 grams? Why so little? He asked in surprise. Master, you don't know, but this Da Hung Pao mother tree tea is more precious than gold, she replied. The original price at auction for 10 grams exceeded $200,000, and now it is a rarity that cannot buy even for money. So expensive. Surprised Yang, he still continued to feel intense astonishment. He chose an empty seat and went to check his trunk. Dear subscribers and favorite viewers, who of you have already determined what kind of car he has? Write in the comments. I am very interested to know your opinion. When he opened the trunk, he actually found a box of tea. $10,000 for each little one gram package. He marveled. It smells so good. I have 50 packs. Let's try one. He got excited. A new notice has arrived. The host has received another bad review. Bonus available. The host is getting a villa in Benjiang. Please stay at home. Courier will deliver the property documents, keys, and everything you need. Villa in Benjiang. It's coastal area. Its approximate value is about $500 million. I wonder who gave me a bad review. It's really delicious. He set down his small thermos and was about to leave. Suddenly a girl approached the car. The girl was dressed in a beautiful black dress, and she had luxurious hair of dark red color. What are you doing, beautiful? He asked the girl who got into the car with him. Driver, this money is yours. She took a wad of bills out of her purse and handed it to the driver. I am not a cab, but an online car rental service. 
You need to place an order on the platform. You can get out of the car and get into another one. He answered. What nonsense, just drive when you're told. The girl started to resent it. Today I want to ride in your car, she added. At that time a strange man approached the car. His outfit and ragged flip-flops did not inspire confidence. Hey, open the door! This guy started yelling out the driver's window. Don't open it! I warn you, if you dare to open the door, I will chew you to death, the girl declared. Do you know him? asked Jan. No, I don't know, immediately answered the girl. Do you know each other? Jan opened the window and asked if he was the obscure type. Of course, she's my girlfriend, the strange man shouted as if he were about to have his most precious possession stolen. I'm not your girlfriend. We met for the first time today on a blind date. When did I have time to be your girlfriend? She was outraged. Blind date? Wang Chiani, your father owes my family five million money, and your father used you to pay off the debt. Why are you pretending to be so stupid? I booked a hotel. Don't spoil my mood. We're going to have great sex tonight. Did you hear that? We're not in a relationship. If you hand me over to him, you're an accomplice to rape, she said. It has nothing to do with you, so open the door and come out nicely. The strange man continued to resent me. Bell, why don't you call the police? I'm just an online taxi driver and I don't want to get into a fight between you two, Jan added calmly. But the situation continued to escalate. Why are you so calm? You're just an asshole. You're no good at all. She continued to be indignant, feeling like she was going to get sparks out of her eyes. Ia, shouldn't your father be the most disgusting? I have nothing to do with you and I don't have to protect you. If you want, I can call the police for you, he added. The unidentified guy started hitting the car with his flabby flip-flop. Come out, bitch, I said. He kept insisting. Get out now, she yelled at the whole car. Brother, please do me a favor and save me, okay? She started begging for help. Seriously, just call the police. You're acting like a little girl. Ian was indignant. I'd like to call the police, but even if it goes to the police, my family doesn't have the money to pay him back. She said it more politely. Bitch, get out or I'll kill you in the car. The strange guy opened the car door and grabbed the girl by the hair. Brother, we'll open the door and let me get in the car. Let's go to the suburbs. I'll let you play with her after I'm done myself. The strange man offered. Ian was getting pretty fucked up listening to this. He put the key in the ignition and started the car. What are you doing? If you dare to take her, I'll find you and kill you. Even if I have to search the whole city, the strange man said. What do I care who you are? Ian added calmly and pressed the gas pedal. The car started to move. You bastard! Come back here! Catch up with the car kept shouting the strange type slapping his slippers in the middle of the evening city. Just wait. I'm gonna get you. He pulled out his ignition keys, ready to give chase. Thank you, you're a wonderful person, she replied politely. The car rolled quietly through the night city. It's no use complimenting me, I'm not interested in you. I'll drop you off nearby and you can take another cab home, replied Jan. At that moment, a black car cut them off. It was probably the same strange man. Stop! I'm warning you, I'll kill you. The threats against Yang Chen continued. Brother, he's catching up. You mustn't stop now, or we're both dead. The passenger suddenly realized. Yang Chung gripped the steering wheel tighter and stepped on the gas pedal. He began to get away from the pursuit of this strange man. Unclear like, failed to control, and his car was damaged. Ha 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 ha, what a sucker, he just wrecked his car. I'm glad the girls are happy. Get out of the car now, Jan said sternly, and demanded that his passenger get out at the nearest bus stop. Now I'm giving you a great chance. If you take me home, I'll give you my first time in sex. You're still better than that bastard. She said proudly. Why do I get the feeling you think you're living in a fairy tale? Get out of the car immediately. Jan asked sternly. You cowardly bastard! The girl opened the door and continued to resent him like an old hag. You bastard! She shouted after the car as it drove away. Dear viewers, write in the comments how you would act in this situation. I am very interested in your opinion. Yang Chen realized that he had more important things to do. He went to his new villa. When he arrived at the right address, he saw the luxurious Bunjiang Villa. Mr. Yang, you are now the owner of this luxurious villa. Here are the keys, and everything else is in this envelope. I'll take you to the villa after you park your car, said the guy in the black suit. They walked into the spacious living room, the walls decorated with marble slabs, the floor sparkling with its cleanliness. Great, I just need to get some clothes, Jan added. After a moment, his phone rang. Jan pulled it out of his pocket and answered the incoming call. Hello, is this Mr. Yang Chen? I'm the secretary of All Island Hotel Group. I want you to come to the All Island Hotel headquarters for a meeting at 3 p.m. Okay, I understand. See you then. Answer Yang. We are greeted by the luxurious building of the All Island Hotel. Sorry I'm late, said Yang Chen politely. Hello, my name is Yang Chen. It is an honor to meet you, dear shareholders. Hello, Mr. Yang. You can sit here. 
I didn't expect our new co-shareholder to be so young. I thought he was an old geezer. I'd like to introduce you. This is Lee Wan Hong, chairman of All Island Hotel Group. And this is Zhang Wu, the boss of Sky Curtain Investment. And the topic of our meeting is Sky Curtain's investment in All Island Hotel, added the guy in the black suit. Investments from the Sky Curtain? Yang Chen wondered what they are for. Maybe someone is going to make money on it. Now that we all know each other, let's get down to business, Mr. Yang. I know all about what happened between you and Mr. Zhang's son at the hotel. Mr. Zhang is here too. Why don't you have a drink? Mr. Li asked. I hope Mr. Yan won't be offended by our children's ignorance, Mr. Zhang said politely. You know that your son behaved quite violently that day. He insulted me so much and you want me to just forgive him. Yang Chen was indignant. Zhang, for the sake of our promising future, you should give in. You should call your son and ask him to sincerely apologize to Mr. Yang, Mr. Li added. But my son didn't do anything wrong. He stood up for his girlfriend when she was being bullied. Why should he apologize? Zhang was indignant. Mr. Li, are there any other issues that will be discussed at today's meeting other than from Sky Kirshen Investment? asked Yang. No, no further questions, replied Mr. Li. Then let me make my attitude clear to all of you. I don't agree with the Sky Kirshen Investment in the All Island Hotel, declared John. I have other things to do, so I'm off, he said goodbye politely. Mr. Yang Hao, are you already leaving? The others were surprised. He quietly walked out and slammed the door in farewell. He's too toxic! I'm here who wants to invest my money in your hotel. Why are you bothering me? Why don't you try to please me instead? Why do I have to put up with this? Mr. Zhang was indignant. Don't be angry, Mr. Zhang. The young men are all a little angry. I will talk to them later, and you should go back and discuss it with your son as well, Mr. Lee remarked. I mean, if you can solve the problem by apologizing, why not do it? He added. Okay, I'll go back and talk to my son, replied Zhang Sr. Yang Chen went down to the underground parking lot and was already approaching his car. I finally found you. Suddenly he heard a voice from behind him. Didn't expect to see you so soon, did you? As you can see, it was that strange guy. He had changed his clothes a bit and brought some girlfriends and metal baseball bats with him. How'd you get in here? This is a closed parking lot for company employees only. Yang Chen was surprised. I told you last time, if you take her, I'll find you anywhere. Did you think I was joking with you? Asked the strange man. So what are you planning to do? Do you really want to fight me? Yang asked immediately. Don't worry, I'll deal with you in time, but now, now I'm going to smash your car, the strange man said. The scumbag and his girlfriend started swinging baseball bats and wrecking the car. Yang Chen just took his phone out of his pocket and started videotaping it. You don't have to rent it, I can afford to pay for it. If you don't have a car, you can't make a living, added the strange man. At that moment, a red foreign car stopped near them. Dear viewers, we continue the quiz, write in the comments who recognized the brand of this car. A red foreign car stopped, the door opened, and a girl with long hair of a dark red color stepped out. The one we'd seen before. How small is this world? Zhang Henji, what are you doing? Are you crazy? She asked me sternly. Why did you wreck his car? I promised to stay with you tonight, didn't I? She kept talking sternly. Uh, uh, sure, I just wanted to do something, he added. I'm just gonna make the guy feel bad for breaking my heart. I'm sorry, but how does a scumbag like that have a heart? You fell for a cab driver. How can you be so cheap? I'm going to kill you tonight, he said with anger in his voice. Fucking shame, Jang Henji. My family only owes money to your family. Or do you think I would take another look at you if I had money? The pretty girl was indignant. At that moment, another guy came into the parking lot. What did you do to him? He asked. It's a long story what brought you here. Is the meeting over already? Asked Jan. My dad told me to apologize to you. Otherwise, you would not approve in Lebanon of our family as capital, said Jang Jr. Ha ha ha! This act clearly made Yang Chen laugh. Is your family very rich? Jan asked quietly. Of course, our family has a total asset of one billion dollars. Jang Jr. replied. So you know him then? Yang clarified. I know his family has several real estate companies that our family has invested in, replied Jang Jr. You want my forgiveness, don't you? Then do something for me, Yang Chen said politely. What do you want? Jang Jr. was surprised. Let's make a deal. You'll lend money to this girl Wang Chani to pay off her debts. And in return, I'll let you invest in the All Island Hotel Group, Yang offered. Why didn't you lend her the money? After all, you have a 28% stake in the All Island Hotel, worth more than $3 billion. Do you feel sorry for this $50 million? Zhang Jr. asked. I still work in a cab. Don't you know what that means? Yang Chen replied cheerfully. Are you from some secret family that won't let you go public? Just using that money, Zhang Jr. added. Shh! Keep your voice down, said Yang. I see. You can just ask her father to bring someone to our office by 9 a.m. tomorrow to discuss the details, said Zhang Jr. Miss Wang, 
Bring someone to Sky Kirshen tomorrow by 9 a.m. to discuss the details of the debt with him. And Mr. Zhang, the president of Sky Kirshen, has already agreed to it, said Yang Cheng. If you go there, it will help you a lot in this situation, said Yang Chen. I will. You finally realized it. I thought I couldn't attract you with my long legs. She threw herself into his arms and wrapped her legs around him. Why is your family lending money to her family? Are you kidding me? Asked the guy with the baseball bat. I have nothing against you, but he's the second largest shareholder in the All Island Hotel. We spent over a year investing in the All Island Hotel Group. We can't afford to lose him. Zhang Jr. waved his hands. What? It can't be? This taxi driver is actually the second shareholder of the All Island Hotel Group? He was surprised. Don T, you see what is going on? Zhang Jr. asked him in a whisper. Damn it! He must be the son of some rich family who wants to experience life. Surprised, his bat fell out of his hands at those words. What do we do? You messed with the young master of the big family? You asked us to crash his car. His deputies started drinking. He nervously pulled out a pack of cigarettes, his fingers shaking with fear. You're the second shareholder of the All Island Hotel Group. Why didn't you tell us this before? He asked. If you had told me before, would I have allowed a great misunderstanding? In a voice full of fear, he continued to speak. Do you think everything is so simple in this world? Yang Chen was surprised. What's going on here? Which one of you reported a crime? Two police officers came running into the parking lot. It's me, my friend's car was totaled. A girl with huge breasts declared. Comrade policeman, we wrecked the car, but he made us do it. Yeah, if you have any questions, you better ask him. The deputies immediately shit their pants. Tell me what's going on. Why are you smashing other people's cars? Asked the police officer. My name is Zhang. Or father is Zhang Yawu, chairman of Yawu Group Company. This guy stole my girlfriend. Shouldn't I teach him a lesson? This guy is right. Are you willing to offer him compensation? Asked the policeman. Compensation is possible, but only after a court decision. Borza replied with an incomprehensible type. Are you stupid? If after going to court, the court decides it's not something that can be fixed with money, what are you going to do? Willful damage to another person's property over $5,000 meets the criteria for a felony. Do you understand? The policeman was indignant. I don't care about that at all. My father's name is Zhang Yaowu, he added. I don't care who your father is. You committed the crime of intentionally damaging someone else's property. You're thinking about how you're going to fix it, said the policeman. Okay, I'll offer to pay him for the car. I'm not that bad. Tell me, how much do I owe you? Is 100,000 yuan enough? Did I say I would accept a private settlement of this matter? Let the court decide, said Yang Chen. If you don't think 100,000 is enough, how about 200,000? You had an old and broken car. The man continued to resent me. It's not about money, I just want justice, Yang Chen replied calmly, pointing to his damaged car. Are you trying to scare me? Are you going to prosecute me? So what if I have a criminal record? I don't need a job, I'll just get an inheritance, added this guy. Then you'll have to come with us. The cops rounded him up and took him with them. After a while, everyone gathered in the meeting room. This man is Zhang Yawu, the father of that strange man. He came to negotiate with you about the damaged car. Said his police officer boy, You want a lot, Zhang Yawu said indignantly. You two really are the same. I'm not going to settle this with him or you. I'm going to go to court, said Yang Chen. 500,000 yuan. Will that be enough? The elderly man asked. His face was beginning to contort with anger and rage. I told you it wasn't about money, Yang Chen replied calmly. One million? It can't be more than that. If it weren't for the critical times for the company, do you really think I'd be this good with you? Officer, can I leave now? Yang Chen asked politely. Yes, you don't agree to mediation. We will follow the legal process of this case, the police officer added. A police officer handed him a form to file a report. Wait, don't sign it. Be a man. Let's meet another time. You're still young. Don't spoil your future path, the older man added. Are you done talking nonsense? Yang Chen snatched the application form out of his hands. I've been threatened by a large number of creditors since I turned, and he signed the application with confidence. Do you think your threat will work on me? Yang Chen asked in surprise. See you in court, he added. You bastard, come back here right now, the older man said through clenched teeth. It wasn't long before, Yang Chen was in the real estate sales department. Mr. Yang, here are your keys. Do you have any idea about the price? The employee asked. No, I agree with the market value, Yang Chen replied cheerfully. I didn't quite understand what was going on here. He bought the house or sold it. Dear viewers, write in the comments how you understood this situation. We will figure it out together. The house will be handed over to you. Please call if you need anything, said Jan. I need to buy a car as soon as possible. I can't afford to put off being a cab driver. What kind of car should I buy? Yang Chen wondered. 
As soon as he thought about it, a new notification immediately came to his phone. I wonder what it is this time. The system detected that the host had received another complaint, triggering a bonus. Said a beautiful girl in an interesting outfit. Maybe there's no girl at all, maybe it's just his hallucination. That's great! Yang Chen was happy. What do you think? Write your opinion in the comments. This story just keeps going on and on and on. The owner wishes to purchase a limited edition luxury car that looks like a normal production car, which the owner can use for cab work. The owner is asked to pick up the car from an underground garage. The girl pressed her breasts against him and said this in his ear. System, you're so thoughtful, thank you. He was happy. And the nice girl handed him the car keys. Let's go home and get some rest, said Yang Chen. He returned to his villa. His villa was in a small cottage community with equally luxurious villas nearby. It's so cozy here. He settled down in the yard of his luxurious pitchfork, a comfortable rattan armchair standing on the bank of the pond. Neighbors from a nearby villa were scrutinizing him. He was being scrutinized by the owner of a neighboring villa, a girl with a glass of red wine or some other red-colored drink. Miss, dinner is ready, said her maid. I asked you to find out about the owner of that villa. Did you find out? She asked. I asked the guard to find out who the new owner of this villa was. He was young. He drove a very ordinary car and didn't look like a rich man at all, replied the maid. So secretive, could it be the son of one of the big families? The villa owner asked. Auntie Lan, take two bottles of wine and pay him a visit. Don't ask him about his life. Just let him know we're at villa number eight. After a while, the woman rang the intercom. Who are you? Yang Chen opened the door. Hello, I'm the manager of villa number eight, she answered politely. My hosts had prepared a small gift and decided to say hello to our new neighbor. She added politely, You are too kind. Could you tell me who your employer is? Yang Chen asked politely. Her name is Shui Nong. May I ask what your name is, young master? She asked. My name is Yang Chen. Very attentive. Come inside and have a seat. He added. There is no need for that. My miss just asked me to come visit. We are all neighbors. Just look out for each other in the future. She replied politely. The girl was eagerly awaiting her assistant's return. Aunt Lan, how did it go? Right from the doorstep, she asked. He's really young and he has a good character. He must be the son of some big family. I left right after I gave the gift, and I'm sure he'll surely come back in a short time with a return gift. Miss, you can wait and see him for yourself. Thank you, Aunt Lan. It's getting late. Go get some rest, the villa owner added politely. Yang Chen glanced at his watch. It was 10 p.m. on the clock. It's too early to go to bed to rest. We can go out for a walk with a glass of wine, Yang Chen thought. That's what a real cab driver means. He doesn't need a vacation in a luxury villa. He only needs the steering wheel of a car and the night city. Already in a moment, his new black car, all-known Lux brand, stopped near the movie theater. Dear viewers, write in the comments who recognize what kind of car. Hello, your car has arrived. Fasten your seatbelt when you get in, he said politely to his new passengers. Cheese, I am a student at the University of Finance. Could you please come to the entrance of the girls' dormitory building before 10.30 p.m.? The girl asked touchingly. Judging from the navigator, it is almost 15 kilometers. It will take about 20 minutes. It will be a bit difficult. Yang Chen replied calmly. Sir, please my girlfriend's hostel will close at 10.30. Can you please go faster? Asked her boyfriend. In fact, he was intentionally late because he wanted his girlfriend to stay with him tonight. Maybe then they could go to the hotel and have a little tumble. Okay, I'll do my best. Hold on tight. Yang Chen replied and pressed the gas pedal. Sir, thank you very much. The naive girl rejoiced. Sir, don't say too much, her boyfriend added. If you can't get to the dorm by 10.30, not only will we not pay you, but you'll have to drive, her boyfriend added, clearly hungry for sex. What do you mean by that? His companion was surprised. I scared him into going faster, he said quietly to his girlfriend. Don't worry! If I dare to make a promise, I'll do it. I'm also from this university. I know the way to it. I will take you there in 15 minutes and you will be there on time, Yang Chung added. What department are you from? What's your name? My name is Lin Xiaoyu. I'm an English major. Heh <laughs> heh. I never thought I'd bump into a high school driver by such a fall. The girl was happy. My name is Yang Chen, he added. You have deviated from the original route while taking a new route, at which point a notification from the voice assistant has arrived. Uh, where are you going? Why did you stray from your earlier route? Surprised by the guy with the freckles on his face. They may be tattoos, but they're more like freckles. If I take the main road, you won't make it back in time. You can save five minutes by taking the shortcut, and I guarantee that I will get to your dormitory door on time. Yang Chen calmed them down. Looks like Big Brother really knows all the roads around here. Then let me add my contacts to you. We will contact you directly when we need you in the future, she added. Her boyfriend clearly wasn't happy about this. A moment later, the car stopped outside the university dormitory building. Yang Cheng fulfilled his promise.
The happy girl got out of the car and waved her hand to the guard. Auntie, wait, don't close the door, I'm coming. Thank you, big brother, goodbye. She said goodbye politely. She went back to her dormitory. Where do I need to take you? He asked the guy who was sexless that night. I'll reorder and you take it and continue your trip. This prick's obviously up to something. I got a new notification on my phone. You have a new bad review. Weird. I've only taken one order tonight. Must have been the guy on the back row who sent this review. Thanks to the host for getting another bad review. Depending on your strength, the system rewards the host with a real combat technique that takes effect immediately. What's that combat technique? It has some kind of superpower. Yang Chen thought to himself in surprise. Man, what are you trying to say? Why did you give me a bad review when I delivered your girl on time? Did I do something wrong? You can tell me directly instead of leaving me a bad review. Yang Chen decided to clarify. In the form of a car and don't get distracted, I'll explain it to you later when we get there, answered the guy. Boy, we have arrived. Can you tell me why you left a bad review? Once again, asked Yang Chung. Guys, come on, we're here, he said into his cell phone. I told you this punk was up to something. Motherfucker, get out of the car now. Get out of the car, I said, shouted his acquaintances, waving baseball bats. Uh, uh, dude, what do you mean by that? Yang Chen asked him in surprise. I really got into it with her all fucking day, eating and drinking, and deliberately put it off until the last 15 minutes when I decided to go to the hotel with her. You said you wouldn't make it to the hostel, right? How dare you take a shortcut and send her back? Now I have to have sex with my hand. If you're dating, why do you care so much about the night? Besides, you got in the car and talked me into taking her back. Jan added, This brat got out of the car and started kicking it with his feet. Already broke the mirror. You ruined my day! Get out of the car! He kept yelling. I've just mastered the combat technique. I think I can handle a few bandits, Yang thought. If you dared to get out of the car, you've got some guts. Let's finish him off quickly, guys, said one of the bandits. That freckle-faced brat had a baseball bat swinging, trying to hit him. Wait a minute, said Yang Chen. What's the matter? He was surprised. Are you afraid? Fine. Then get on your knees and apologize to me and I'll spare you. We're still waiting for a chance to beat you up, added the guy with freckles, or freckle tattoos on his face. You know it's not going to end well for you if you do it under security camera, right? Let's just go where there's no light and fight. You won't leave any evidence if I go to the police afterwards. Yang Chen added. Ha ha ha, it looks like you've accepted your fate, the freckle-faced guy said cheerfully. And all the bandits followed Yang Chen into the deep and dark courtyard. After a couple of minutes, moans and screams echoed from this dark courtyard. Clearly someone was being beaten. Who do you think was beating who? Within minutes, there were already several battered men lying on the ground their baseball bats broken. Yang Chung calmly walked out of there. He knocked me down with one punch. You'll be responsible for this and you'll have to pay all our medical expenses. One of the thugs said, It really hurts. The blow was too strong. I, uh, it's... How was I supposed to know he was a martial artist? Wiping his snot, the boy added. Yang Chung forces his car and was about to drive away. But a man got in his way. Hey, come here. Yang Chen called that brat over to him. No, not again. I've already learned my lesson. You can't hit me anymore, what if you beat me to death? Idiot, I won't hit you, Yang Chen replied calmly. Okay, then what's the matter? The guy with freckles asked him. You owe me a new car, said Yang Chen. Yes, 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 I got it, the freckle-faced guy agreed. As soon as he left, he got a call from the same girl. Big brother, did you deliver my boyfriend? I'll pay you the fare, she added. Better help your boyfriend with his medical expenses. He called some thugs to beat me up, but I beat them back. Besides, I'll give you some good advice. Break up with your boyfriend, he's a good man to me. The freckle-faced guy had hoped this evening would end very differently, but his sneakiness and cunning had led to this result. At that moment his phone rang, surprised he was still in one piece. Why did you want to beat up our driver? It was his girlfriend. You just met me, and you're flirting in front of me. Have you thought about how I feel? He was outraged into the phone. I just hit him, that's all. You must be out of your mind? The girl was obviously angry at his words. She realized he was deceiving her. Oh, shit. I'll file a complaint against him. Then we'll see what you do. The freckle-faced guy continued to resent him. Just moments later, a new notification came in. The system has detected that the host has another complaint. Initiating system reward. The host is getting body strengthening. You need to tell me when you are ready for this process. Thanks to this complaint for another great gift for me, Yang Chen thought. He returned to his villa and settled down in his luxurious bed. System, start strengthening the body, he said. The master's body strengthening is starting. The whole process will last for 749 seconds. Please do not interrupt this process. So that you don't have to calculate on the calculator for a long time, it's about two hours. Starting the process of strengthening the body. Yang Cheng.
He felt his body enveloped by powerful streams of energy. He even got a little excited. 7,749 seconds later, he woke up. The reinforcement is complete and the host can move around freely. From now on, excluding the influence of external factors such as weapons, the host is the strongest person on Earth. Ha ha ha. From now on, the strongest person on Earth, Yang Chen rejoiced. Uh, uh, why does it stink so bad in here? Yang Chen wondered. Is this really the legendary meridian cleansing? Yang Chen was surprised. The next day greeted him with a beautiful sunny morning. The fresh coolness was calling him to go for a morning jog, which he decided to do. While jogging, he came face to face with the owner of the neighboring house. It turned out to be a pretty girl who also decided to go jogging in the morning. Hello, are you Miss Big Boobs? Oh, you are Miss Zhu, right? He asked. Yes, you must be Yang Chen from the neighboring villa, she replied. Yes, Miss Big Tits, thank you for your gift. I like it very much as well as your breasts, he replied. If you liked my gift, I'm very happy. Good luck with your morning workout. See you soon, he added politely. Not bad for a son and from a large family he has a good character, she thought. I wonder what I should get her in return, he thought. Ah yes, it would be that rare tea. Yang Chen remembered his gift. It was not long before he rang the doorbell of the intercom of the neighboring villas. Ah, Mr. Yang, come in. The door was opened by a woman I already know. I didn't want to come empty-handed, so I'm holding my big, fat package. Dear subscribers, what are you thinking? So, I brought it to share with you, he said politely. Is that tea? Of all the various gifts he's given, he's brought some kind of tea. Although maybe I'm wrong, and it's a very expensive tea. It's hard to tell from this opaque bag. Ah, uh, Mr. John, it is you, the mistress of the villa rejoiced. Auntie Lan, treat Mr. John to the wine I bought last week, and I have finished my morning routine and will join you. I don't mind getting drunk in the morning either, she added. Miss Xu, I apologize for the intrusion, Yang Chen added. I would like to share my tea with you, so why don't I make it? Asked the assistant. Good, then we need to boil some water. Genius answer from Miss Big Boobs. Or were they going to eat the tea dry? Auntie Lan, I won't drink. I need to hurry up and get my car. Chen politely thanked her. A car? What does Mr. Yang do for a living? Miss Big Tits asked. I work as a cab driver. Goodbye, baby. Didn't you know that all cab drivers are so rich? Is he just an ordinary cab driver? Could it be that Mr. Yang Chen is not a rich man at all? Miss Xu thought. Miss Xue, what do you think this tea is? The assistant looked into the bag and was a little surprised at what she saw. I wonder what kind of tea this is. I've never seen or smelled it. Take these tea leaves to the old Hong and let him see what kind of tea it is, whether it can be drunk at all. Okay, miss. Yes, I'll go to old Hong right away, her assistant replied. How can a cab driver afford a villa in such a luxurious village? He's such a demanding man. Miss has big tits. At this time, young Chen was already riding around the city somewhere and had arrived on a new order. A tall girl with very long legs and a short skirt was already waiting for him. Hi, did you call a cab? He asked cheerfully, flicking his left arm out of the driver's window. Why did you move to such an ordinary car? You should drive a sports car or something, asked a girl with long hair of a dark red color. I hope you remember this girl from the previous S. Are my legs longer and whiter now that I'm dressed up? She asked with a smile. At that moment, an idea occurred to him. It was like a little bird whispered in his ear. You can't talk? You can score 99 points if you don't talk, and only 59 points if you do. Fasten your seatbelt, he answered discreetly. The girl was very surprised by such a cold answer. I made reservations at Queen Mary's to take you out to dinner tonight, she added. Forget it. I still have to pick up my car tonight, he replied. Besides, don't you want to get me drunk and take me to a hotel and fuck me good like last time, he asked. Ha ha, why not? You're so handsome. I'd still like to buy you dinner to spend time with you, she added. I don't want to have dinner. With a short answer, he tried to end their conversation quickly. I'm such a sweet, beautiful, and long-legged girl with a great mind and thin waist, and you refuse when I ask you out to dinner. Are you a man or not? You don't have a sexual orientation problem, do you? We're here. He hit the brakes. Get out of the car if there's nothing else you want to say, he added. Aren't you interested in girls at all? You've really convinced me that you're gay, she replied indignantly. Time is running at breakneck speed. As soon as he dropped off the horny lady, a new order came to him. Hello, I'm here, he said calmly. Mr. Driver, I'm here. The frightened girl waved her hand to get his attention. You're not going anywhere until you pay, the guy in the sports jacket said sternly. I just passed by without even touching the bikes, the girl replied indignantly. I parked here for ten minutes, and while you were gone, they didn't fall. Who are you kidding? If you don't pay up right now, I'm going to spank you, says the guy in the sports jacket. It's not my fault that the bikes fell and hit your car the girl said with tears in her eyes. 
Would you like to go to the building next door and turn on the video surveillance system to make sure what really happened? Yang Chen asked, and pointed to the surveillance camera that was nearby. Right, we'll find out by looking at the CCTV footage. The girl was happy. Bro, I see your car still has a temporary license plate, so it must be a new car. Notice the guy in the sport coat. I advise you to mind your own business or I'll smash your car and your face. He continued his outrage. Hey, take it easy. Are you trying to forcefully extort money from her? Yang Chung immediately recognized him. Such a tall man shouldn't bully a little girl. Yang Chen added politely. What does that have to do with you? The guy in the sports jacket asked in surprise. She ordered my cab, so I'm in a hurry and you're just holding me up. Let's look at the security cameras and we'll figure it out, Yang Chen added. Are you that stupid? I already warned you, he added and pulled out a baseball bat. Don't you think I wouldn't dare crash your car, he asked. If you can pay for her repairs, she's all yours, Yang Chen replied calmly. Ha 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 ha, you have a regular cheap car, I can buy a lot of those, the type remarked. Then smash it, added Yang Chen. You think I wouldn't dare to do that? He asked with anger in his eyes and was about to roll up his sleeves. Without dragging others into our affairs, the girl added. Don't stop him, Yang Chen added, and affectionately held the girl's hand. Just let him do what he wants. I've dealt with bastards like this before, it's nothing new. I'm so sorry I got you into this, the girl said. Don't worry about it. Yang Chen gently hugged and comforted her. If I don't wreck your car today, I'll always be ashamed of myself, screamed the guy in the sports jacket, and started to break the car with his baseball bat. What the hell is this? He looked at the license plate of the car, indignant. Good thing I had time to notice it, or I might have had to pay more than I can afford in a lifetime. Why did you stop? Come on, keep going, Yang Chen added calmly. Brother, you misunderstood me, he said and let go of the baseball bat. The wind must have flipped the bikes over and they hit my car. It had nothing to do with that little girl. You can have her. The guy in the sports jacket started to put it in reverse. I thought you'd be eternally proud of yourself if you crashed my car, Yang Chen clarified. It's all my fault. Come on, you two, hurry up and leave. Don't waste your precious time. Have a seat, said Yang Chen. Thank you, the schoolgirl thanked him. Thank you very much. Without you, I would have been in a lot of trouble today, said the schoolgirl. I guess it's fate. If you hadn't ordered my car, I wouldn't have been able to help you, calmly replied the man. Why is this guy suddenly being so nice to you, she asked in surprise. I don't know. Maybe it was a sudden change of mood, Yang Chen replied cheerfully. We arrived. Within minutes, the car pulled up to a large building. Brother, my name is Zhao Yun. What's your name? My neighbor invited me to dinner. Would you like to join us? She added. No, thank you. Have a good time with her. Yang Chen replied politely and said goodbye to her. Then please give me your phone number. I'll call you next time I need a car. The schoolgirl added. Okay, I haven't exchanged my contacts. Now it happens. Just by leaning the two phones against each other, there is no need to dictate a lot of numbers. The schoolgirl glanced at the black car that was driving away from her. I'm a little hungry, Yang Chen thought. Just a few minutes later, his black car pulled up outside a cute cafe. Miss, would you please take my order? He asked politely. He sat down at a vacant table and was about to relax when his phone started ringing in his pocket. It was a message from that schoolgirl he dropped off earlier. Brother Yang, did you leave already? I'm in room 302. Something must have been spiked in my drink. Please help me. Did this girl really want to fool around? He thought after reading this message. Without waiting for his order to be fulfilled, he jumped into his car and drove straight to this building where he dropped off the schoolgirl. Miss, please go to room 302 and check the situation inside. He's talking to the receptionist. Yes, sir. I'll check it out. She replied, no sooner had the receptionist gone to room number 302 than Yang Chung noticed a familiar face. He saw two girls leading a schoolgirl he knew up the stairs. A strange man was walking in front of them. The request for help wasn't a joke, he thought. Let me go. I have to go back to the dormitory, said the schoolgirl. Okay, we'll take you to the dormitory, said the girls who were driving her. Yang Chen decided to intervene in this situation and overturned a square chair to block their way. Damn it, you again? I can't believe I'm meeting you here. The unidentifiable type was indignant. You got out pretty quickly, Yang Chen noticed. Shut up, don't bring it up. Get the hell out of here. I'm not gonna mess with you today. That's what he said. If you haven't figured it out yet, he's the guy who crashed his car in the parking lot with his buddies. The police took him away that time. Let's go. Girls, he said sternly. Stop! Yang Chen blocked their way to the exit again. Are you her roommates? What are you doing with her? Yang Chen asked. You're, don't be ridiculous. She's just had too much to drink and we're helping her to the dormitory. One of the girls was indignant. Then why did she send me this disturbing message? And Yang Chung showed the message on his phone. What? What is it? We all opened our mouths in surprise. I, uh, I'm actually her roommate, said one of the girls. And I'm her boyfriend and Zhao Yun is my girlfriend. It's all slander. 
The guy was indignant. Then I'll call the police and we'll find out, okay? Yang Chen had already dialed the police number. All that was left was to press the call button. You bastard! Do you intend to try to make things more complicated than they already are? The type continued to be indignant. Just wait, I'll make you regret it! He shouted and rushed out of the room. I had nothing to do with it. One of the girls left her and hurried out too. Zhao Yun, wake up, what's wrong with you? I wonder what they gave you to drink. Yang Chen tried to bring her to her senses. Brother Yang, please take me out of here, she said in a sleepy voice. Administrator, could you open a private room for me? He asked politely. Yes, of course, I'll open it right away, the administrator replied. He carried the girl to a vacant room and gently sat her down on the couch. Brother John, thank you, you saved me, she said. He gave her a glass of water to drink. What were you doing in there? He asked. My roommate said they wanted to take me out to dinner. But when I got to the room, I found that this man was there too. I was about to leave, but he said I should have a glass of juice before I left, and after that, I felt dizzy. Obviously your glass of juice was spiked with something. Why did you drink it in the first place? Yang Chen asked. This is outrageous. I'm calling the police right now, said the girl. Yes, we can't let the bad guys get away with it. Yang Chen supported her. Within minutes, the police car was outside the front door of the premises. This time, Zheng Hengzi wouldn't get off so easily. Yang Chun thought and helped the girl into the police car to come to the police station to make a report on this bandit. After a while, Yang Chen had already returned to his villa, but when he approached his house, he was slightly surprised as Aunt Lan was waiting for him. Aunt Lan, what are you doing here? He asked politely. Oh, Mr. Yang, you're finally back, she said. My hostess would like to invite you for a cup of tea. I wonder if you would accept such an offer, she asked. Thank you for inviting me, but I'm tired today. Let's do it another time. I will be free tomorrow night, so I hope you will come to my place for dinner, replied Jan. You see what he just did. His neighbor had just invited him for tea. He turned her down and instead invited her to his place for dinner the next day. He's a sly one. He's obviously up to something. Good. Then I'll prepare some dishes to come tomorrow. Auntie Lan, take care of yourself, he said goodbye politely. In the neighboring villa there was a little tiff. Aunt Lan, didn't I ask you to invite him over? asked the landlady miss. I'm sorry but he said he was very tired today and wanted to go to bed early, answered the assistant. He invited us to his house for dinner tomorrow night, added the assistant. Many people in the neighborhood want to have dinner with me, but he's the only one who refuses my invitation, surprised Miss Big Tits. All right, let's pay him a visit tomorrow, added Miss Big Tits. She did say yes to his invitation. The phone rang. The Zhao Yun girl from the police station called. Brother Yang, the police said my roommate did it, but she was obviously put up to it by that bastard. It could have been due to lack of evidence. Be more careful in the future. I'll find a way to deal with that bastard, replied Jan. The next day, he arrived at the designated location to pick up his new passengers. Hello, passengers, please fasten your seatbelts, he habitually said to his passengers. Instead, the guy with purple hair who sat in the front seat decided to do something very horrible. Namely, he took off his shoes. And the luxurious interior of the luxury car was filled with the aroma of stinky garbage. Cheese, please put on your shoes, sit properly, and remember safety. Yang Chen was very surprised at this behavior of his passenger. I'm feeling very tired and want to take a nap. Why does the average cab driver have so many rules? Asked a passenger with stinky feet. Sir, if you don't put your shoes on, I'll have to ask you to get out of the car. Yang Chen's patience as the fresh air in the car was coming to an end. If you continue to behave like this, you'll get a negative review, said the passenger with smelly feet. Do you intend to look for trouble? The girl asked him indignantly. It is inappropriate for a man working in the service industry to complain about the smell of his passenger's feet. She added, You called the driver, not the masseurs. I'm not going to stand for the smell of your feet. Either give me your shoes and I will continue to take you to your destination or you can get out now and call another car, answered Yang Chen. I'm not going out, and there's nothing you can do about it, replied the insolent man with the stinky feet. He still had the nerve to put his foot on his leg. Yang Chen didn't intend to take it any further. He got out of the car and opened the stinky passenger door. With a slight movement of his hand, he grabbed him by the elbow and threw him out of the car right in the street. What the hell are you doing? The passenger with the stinky feet wondered. Help! Somebody please call for help! The passenger's girlfriend started screaming. Help! This driver is verbally abusing us. He even hit my boyfriend. Can someone get justice? She continued her outrage. A few onlookers had already gathered around the car. This is slander. This man took off his shoes as soon as he got into my car. I told him to put them on, but he refused. I had to ask them to leave my car. Yang Chen calmly added, What is it that stinks so badly? Surprised were the people who came to the cries for help. 
This passenger has no manners to act like this in such a luxury car. This guy is too brazen. Discussions began among the people who came to the rescue. What kind of luxury car are you talking about? It's just an ordinary car, said the guy with the stinky feet. Holy shit, that's a really expensive car. The guy with the stinky feet noticed the cab car that came on his order. What's wrong, honey? Is this car really expensive? The girl asked him. This luxury car cost her one million dollars. This guy must be a wealthy man. We're in trouble, Stinky added. What? What? What are you saying? It can't be. She was surprised. Handsome, we're really sorry. Can you forgive us? How about as a token of apology, I buy you a meal, she said. Red-headed girl, what do you mean by that? Stinky asked loudly. I want to buy him a meal and apologize. You can go back without me, she added. What? What the hell are you talking about? What the hell are you talking about? The stinker continued to resent me. Didn't you hear me? I told you to leave. You've never listened to me since we were kids. It's so annoying. Now get away from me, she added. Miss, since you know each other, would you mind putting his shoes away? He asked politely. Okay. Hold on, handsome. I'll get them now, she replied. Yang Chen opened the car door, and the red-haired girl threw the stinky shoe out of the car. It's done. Let's go. I'll buy you dinner. She got into the front seat right away. She was ready to go. Thank you for your kind words, wonderful lady, he added, and carefully closed the door. Excuse me, but my car's rearview camera is a little dusty. Could you come out and wipe it down? Yang Chung asked politely. I think you can guess why he asked that. Let me know in the comments what you think. Sure. Wait. I'll be right out of the car to wipe it down. The girl with red hair replied cheerfully. As soon as she got out and walked over to the rearview camera, the car immediately drove forward, leaving the girl in the street. Wait. I haven't gotten in the car yet. My purse is still in there, the girl screamed. But Yang Chen was a real gentleman. He wouldn't stop the car for such a trivial matter. With a slight movement of his hand, he threw the purse out the window. Ha ha ha. You wanted to be with a rich guy, and he dumped you. The guy with the stinky feet was happy. You asshole. Get a twisting and juicy right punch. And the girl with red hair did it instantly. Don't you see why I did it? She asked in surprise. What are you talking about? Stinky was surprised. You insulted him in the car. If I had succeeded, he would have forgiven us. How can you not understand that? The girl told me indignantly. Sorry, it's all my fault. I misunderstood you. Stinky has decided to make things right. If you really want to cheer me up, leave him a bad review and file a complaint, she suggested. Okay, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'll give him a bad review and file a complaint. Stinky agreed. Immediately after this order, Yang Chen had to go to have his car dry cleaned. It was impossible to drive the car with such an odor. A new notice has arrived. You have received a new bad review and complaint. Seen by Yang Cheng. Congratulations to the host for getting a bad review. The system rewards the host with a 32% stake in the Boson Hotel and $5 million dollars in cash for making you the second largest shareholder in the company. Please remember that you need to go to the main office of the hotel to get all the necessary documents. System, how wonderful you are. Can your rewards make up for the stinky feet I got? Yang Chen asked me right away. At this moment, a message came in from a girl named Wang Lixin. Yang Cheng, tomorrow at noon you must come to Baoqing Hotel Room. What a coincidence. I'm lucky again. Yang Chen was happy. Immediately after dry cleaning the car, he returned to his villa. When he arrived at his house, he met two cooks who were waiting for him. What are you doing here? He wondered as he got out of his car. You're Mr. Yang, right? We're here on Miss Xu's orders, and we're waiting for your return. Tonight, we will prepare a sumptuous dinner for you and Miss Xu. The head chef replied. Okay, uh, then we should probably get the dishes and kitchen ready, Yang Chen added. Wow, these plates and saucers are so exquisite. Are these all antiques? Oh my god, these knives are used by the best chefs. They got excited. Be careful not to damage any of these items. These plates and saucers look fragile. If anything breaks off or breaks, it would be a disaster, noted the chef. All cooks, uh, please stay focused and attentive. The chef has given orders. Yes, sir, they responded with glee. Someone who is held in such high esteem by Miss Zhu must be an unusual person. I don't even dare to use this gold faucet. If even a speck of gold dust wipes off will, the boss blame me. Chief, do you need anything else? I can go and buy it right now, Yang Chen added. Mr. Yang, don't worry, we have enough food. All you have to do is wait for us to prepare it. The chef replied politely. Thank you for your hard work. Thanked him. You're welcome, Mr. Jan, added the cook. Yang Chen finished all the preparations for the long-awaited dinner and went to greet his guests. Someone knocked on his door. Miss Big Tits, Auntie Lan, welcome to my humble abode. Your presence makes my home look magnificent. He greeted me politely. 
I am honored to be a guest in Mr. Yang Chen's house, Miss Big Boobs replied happily. I thought it was Aunt Lan who came to cook something, but I didn't expect Miss Xu to be so serious and invite the cooks, added Yang Cheng. They are the chefs at our hotel and I have been using their services for some time. Mr. Yang, don't pay attention to them, added Miss Shui. If these paintings were authentic, each one could be worth several million. To own such paintings, it must be an unimaginable fortune, Miss Shui thought to herself. Yang Chen opened a bottle of red wine and immediately filled the girls' glasses. Please sit down, let's have a drink. He politely invited the girls to the table. I wonder, what kind of food do you like? Miss Shu asked. I'm afraid Miss Shu will laugh at me. But when I was young, I never had the chance to eat such exquisite food. Yang Chen replied modestly. Honestly, this is one of the best meals I've had since I graduated from university, Yang Chen added. Looks like he is really a rich guy from a mysterious family who used to live well at home and then left to experience the poor life, thought Miss Big Boobs. What kind of cars do you like? Miss Big Boobs decided to keep the conversation going. I'm a big fan of sports cars, Yang Chen answered right away. But now I've had this delicious wine, and I'm a little drunk, so I'm not in any condition to drive right now, he added. It's like the plot of a novel, at the end of which he will return to his ancestral home to inherit the family fortune, thought Miss Big Boobs. Mr. Yang, try this dish, it's so delicious, she offered it. Yang Chen carefully cut off a piece, crispy on the outside and tender on the inside. The perfect degree of frying. This dish is really delicious. After one hour, all the guests were very full. Well, I'm full, someone said. And now, uh, when you've had your fill, let's take a walk, suggested Miss Big Boobs. Okay, I don't mind, let's go. Yang Chen agreed. The heat of the day had passed a little, and the weather outside was pleasantly sunny. There was a slight breeze in the park where they were walking. Hey, you bastard, you're really unlucky, a male voice shouted from beside them. I thought after that day I'd never see you again added the guy with the baseball bat. Who are you and how did you get in here? Get out now. Miss Zhu was indignant. This girl's pretty cute. I'm having a personal conflict with this guy. I don't want you involved, he said. You'd better step aside and stay out of my way, added he. Does this guy really not know that Mr. Yang is from a powerful family? Miss Zhu was surprised. Damn it, get out of here, yes, and don't stop me from going out with Mr. Yang. She resented the situation. Miss, I think you're beautiful and I don't want to hurt you. But if you get in the way, you could get hurt. He added, threatening me with a baseball bat. You damaged my car. I was going to find you anyway. You're counting on your father's company. But if everything goes wrong, you have nothing to fall back on, right? Yang Chen asked. You're right that I rely on my father. And there's nothing you can do about it. The bandit laughed. Brothers, kill him! He shouted to his aides. And they came at him from all sides with baseball bats. After a moment, Yang Chen used his signature punch. A juicy and twisting right-hand punch. The bandits started flying apart like skittles in a bowling alley. Oh my god, he's so strong. And his martial arts skills. Miss Big Tits was surprised when she saw the bandits start to fall to the ground. Stay away from me. You dare not hit me, or my father will destroy you, he said fearfully. How dare you still threaten me? Yang Chen was outraged and threw his signature punch, a juicy and twisting right-hand punch. How dare you hit me, you bastard. Even my father never hit me. It's all over for you. You're already dead. With tears in his eyes, he continued to scream. Ha ha ha, I'm not done with you yet. What are you scared of? Did you wet your pants? Yang Chen added, and delivered his signature punch again, a juicy and twisting punch, only this time with his left hand. Please stop, these blows could kill me. He begged for mercy. Please, I've realized my mistake, I'm sorry. Got up to ask him, get out of here. I don't want to see you anymore, Yang Chen replied sternly. The battered bandits picked up this scoundrel and ran away away from Yang Cheng. Mister, your martial arts skills are excellent. Could you tell me who you learned from? Miss Big Tits asked. I can't tell her I'm getting them from the system. We have to figure something out. Oh, it's been so long since I last saw my teacher, he added. Oh, that's really unfortunate. If fate permits, I'm sure you'll have a chance to meet again in the future. Mr. Yang, what will you do with this guy and his father's company? Miss Shue asked. At this point, I'm not sure what to do with them, but it won't be long before I have a way, he replied. It must be because he's still gaining experience, so he can't use the power in the family to destroy Yao Wu's company, she thought. Mr. Yang, I can help you with this problem as a token of our friendship and for protecting me from those thugs. What do you think of my offer? She asked. I will be grateful to you and will definitely pay you in the future, Yang Chen added cheerfully. Ha ha ha, Mr. Yang. You don't have to be so polite since we are friends helping each other naturally. I will make sure that you will see the fall of the Yao Wu company very soon, Miss Shui said joyfully. Recently, I managed to acquire 32% of the shares of Baking Restaurant. When you are free, I would like to invite you to try their dishes, suggested Yang Cheng. 
I'd love to. Tomorrow, I will accompany you to dine at the luxurious Bocking restaurant, she said. Welcome back, miss. And the assistant carefully set down her house shoes. How was your walk with Mr. Young Chung? She asked. It's quite obvious to me now that Mr. Young, the son of some secret family, is a martial arts practitioner. He single-handedly took down twelve people in one minute, Miss Shui told. Ah, uh, yes. Immediately start an investigation into Yao Wu's company. Find all the information on all the other companies that invest in them. I want this company to go bankrupt as soon as possible, she added. Understood. I will get to work on this issue immediately, her assistant replied. The next day, everyone had already gathered at Bao King Restaurant. The classmates have already gathered. Why hasn't Young Chung shown up yet? Man, asked rudely. I sent him a few messages, but he hasn't replied to them, she replied. If Yang Cheng does not show up, I will not pay for this dinner. Let your classmates split the bill among themselves, added the rude man. You can't do that, said the girl. Lixen, what's going on here? Her friend asked her. Did you two have a fight? Asked the guy with glasses. He said he wouldn't pay for us if Yang Chen didn't show up. Why don't we reschedule? She said. Wait, Van Lixen. What do you mean? You're the one who invited us here and now you want us to leave? The guy with the glasses was surprised. No one forced you to treat us, but since you suggested it, you should definitely follow through. Or do you think we can't pay for ourselves? Her friend asked. It's all because of you. Now they think I'm a bad person. And she attacked this man with her fists. Zhang Jiangkun, pulling his girlfriend Wang Lishin away from him irritably, said, They are your classmates, not mine. Why should I be the one to treat them? Suddenly, Wang Lixin, a classmate, intervened in the conversation with the words, Stop arguing! Yes, you are not our classmate, so you can get out of here. He looked at Zhang Jiankong without showing any signs of anger and quipped, If you don't have the money to pay the bill, then we'll just split it between us. Angry at these words, Zhang took out some money from his pocket and waved it around. It's not that I don't have any money. It's just that you're not my classmates, so why should I treat everyone? Wang Lixin tearfully points a finger at Zhang Jiankun and shouts, Zhang Jiankun, we have to part ways. I don't want to see you anymore. You can see from her face that she is disappointed in her boyfriend. Zhang Jiankun, heading towards the exit with an annoyed face, muttered, All right, so be it. But you will regret it in the future. Tao, clearly hiding his anger as Zhang Jiankun left, said to the others, All right, guys, let's not let this situation ruin our mood. Everyone's faces showed mixed feelings of anger and frustration at losing their source of free food. To ease the tension, Tao said, Even if we split the bill in half, I can assure you that no one will regret it. The food at Bao King restaurant is really good. A red-haired classmate replied, It may be good, but it's too expensive. Another classmate was curious and asked, Wan Lixin, how much did the dishes you ordered cost? She replied, About 8,000 or a little more with a slightly annoyed look. The classmate sipped his water and said with a disgruntled face, God, it's too expensive. After this, I won't have enough money to pay the phone bill. Wang Lixin, you should borrow money, because this whole situation is because of you. To which Wang Lixin replied, I don't have any money either. I'm unemployed, ashamed of her position. Tao smilingly asked everyone, Are you having difficulties? He smirked and continued, I can lend you the money, but don't forget to pay it back. To which their classmate happily replied, Brother Tao, you are the best. And looking at Wang Lixin, he continued, Wang Lixin, don't you think that a person like Tao is more reliable than this Zhang Jiankun? Suddenly the door opened and Yang Chen appeared, saying, Sorry I'm late, I got stuck in traffic. Tao and the teacher immediately got up from their seats, and Tao greeted Yang Chen with the words, Yang Chen, you finally arrived. Because of your tardiness, Wang Lixin had a fight and broke up with her boyfriend. After he said that, the teacher continued, Yang Chen, there is a seat next to me. Have a seat. Yang Chen thanked the teacher and sat down in his seat, and the teacher replied, No need to thank me. Please sit down. The food has been served and everyone is gathered. So let's start eating. Wang Lixin irritatedly said, Yang Chen, how did you have the nerve to leave me on the bridge? With his arms crossed over his chest. To which Yang Chen disdainfully replied, After everyone has listened to the recording, do you think any more explanations are needed? Tao intervened in the conversation. Yan Chen, don't be angry. She was just venting her frustration after feeling offended. I have already taken care of this dinner. However, you should apologize to everyone for being late and buy a few bottles of wine as a gesture of goodwill. If you want a drink, you can buy the wine yourself. Don't bother him. Tao, not taking the teacher's words at face value, said, Waiter, bring me a few bottles of good wine. And the waitress immediately ran after her, 
A classmate with glasses marveled at the quality of the wine and said, Brother Tao, you are amazing. Such an exquisite bottle of wine costs tens of thousands. But how do you think Yang Chen can afford such an expensive drink? To which a red-haired classmate said, Is this wine really expensive? And the waitress didn't hesitate to reply, This bottle costs only 128. Tao immediately became alarmed and said, Beautiful, we didn't order this wine. Why are you serving it to us? He was clearly nervous as he waited for an answer. The waitress looked at Wang Lixin and said, Miss Wang Lixin, your boyfriend ordered this wine for you. Wang Lixin replied clearly annoyed by the situation. I broke up with him. Can you cancel the order? Tao immediately started to calculate in his mind that these two bottles cost almost 260,000 and added Wang Lixin is not worth it, while Wang Lixin looked at the waitress with hopeful eyes. The waitress indignantly replied, Your parting has nothing to do with the food you ordered. It's inappropriate that you just want to cancel your order when you've already ordered it. Suddenly, Yang Chen intervened in the argument. Don't argue. I'll pay the bill for the drink. Holding a glass of wine in his hands and with an expression of dissatisfaction over the argument, the teacher leaned towards Yang Chen and asked in a whisper, Yang Chen, can't we just cancel the order? I'm worried you won't have enough money. But Yang Chen ignored these words and continued to sip his wine with a nonchalant look. But the teacher still insisted and turned to the waitress. Waitress, we don't want this wine anymore. Could you please talk to the manager and return it? To which the waitress replied with a clearly disgruntled tone, This wine is not returnable. Even if you talk to the manager, it won't change anything. Asterisk, asterisk, asterisk. Two minutes later, asterisk, 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 the waitress brought in the manager, a very large middle-aged man with the name Xu Chao, and he walked in from the doorstep shouting, What's going on? Who wants their wine back? But upon entering the room, his gaze stopped on Yang Chen, and he became nervous, after all. This was their new auctioneer that the company had informed him about this morning. He immediately changed his attitude, afraid of the new auctioneer's influence, and asked him, Mr. Yan, are you satisfied with our chef's culinary skills? Everyone was immediately surprised, especially Tao and Wang Lixin thinking, What's going on? Why is the manager so polite to Yang Chen? Yang Chen pointed his finger and said, this dish is a bit cold and not very flavorful. The man in the black suit ordered the uniform girl with black hair. Go and tell the kitchen to prepare a fresh batch immediately. Also bring two more bottles of this wine. Make sure Mr. Yang likes it. The girl got nervous and said, Yes, sir. The blonde woman with long hair exclaimed, I'm sorry, but we can't afford to pay for so many bottles of wine. The man said, Miss, you must be joking. How can we ask for money when Mr. Yang comes to dine and got embarrassed? Mr. Yang coming to our hotel is a big celebration. In a raised tone, Yang Chen said, There's no need for that. Didn't Wu Tao say he would treat us? As for the wine, I'll pay for it. You can go mind your own business. Jung Kun sighed nervously. Jung Kun approved. All right, Mr. Yang, I wish you a pleasant time. He walked out and the door slammed shut. Jan said cheerfully to the others, Let's not get distracted anymore and get to eating. One of the classmates asked, Yang Cheng, why is the manager of the Baoking Hotel so polite to you? Her friend with red hair tied back in a ponytail confirmed, That's right, he acted like your subordinate. Yang Chan replied, I saw a lot of promise in the future of the Baoking Hotel, so I bought some shares. No wonder Cao Chao is polite to me. After which he brought a glass of wine to his mouth. An agitated classmate covered in sweat said, Yang Chang, how do you have so much money to buy shares in the Baoking Hotel if you work as a cab driver? He only furrowed his eyebrows in response and exclaimed, My father left me some money. A classmate asked, doesn't that mean you're rich? And he fixed his glasses. Why do you keep working as a cab driver when you can buy an apartment and rent it out? Lixin said, Yang Chen, I am truly sorry for what happened earlier. He sipped his wine in response and continued with a confident speech. I still remember how you and Zhang Zhang Kun bullied me, he said with a smirk on his face. Her eyes glazed over and with sincere revelation she exclaimed, I apologize. Please don't hold it against me, okay? KGHA. Suddenly the door opened and the manager walked in with more news. He said, Mr. Yun, he came with a group of thugs to find you. The manager held the battered, swollen cheek guy completely at a loss. The perp said, what's your connection to the Bautzen Hotel? What was I confused about? Why the hell did you bring people to attack our second largest shareholder? The manager exclaimed, slapped the perpetrator on the cheek, and the man choked on blood and fell down. How could you do such an idiotic thing? Said the man. Already with two large cheeks, the man said in confusion, The second largest action, no. All of course, this time I really got into trouble, he thought. The criminal said with tears in his eyes, Wang Lexin, please help me, otherwise they will beat me to death. She was indignant and said, Stay away from me. It's only your fault that you are in such a miserable situation. 
Yang Chen looked at his phone and thought, It's almost time for my date with Xue Inong. Manager, handle this situation, I'm late for my date. He nervously said, Okay, Mr. Yang, I'll take care of everything. Enjoy your meal, everyone. With the exception of Wu Tao, who will pay for his own portion, I'll take care of the rest. He smiled and left proudly. In addition, he said after the date, I'll try to join you. Twenty-six, the manager exclaimed, Since you are all Mr. Yang's classmates, we will treat you as honored guests. Enjoy your meal. I won't bother you again. With a wave of his hand, he left and slammed the door shut. In complete silence, they continued to eat, everyone sitting in confusion. A classmate said, Okay, let's go in while she's hot. Good thing one of your classmates got rich. You should be happy about that. I didn't expect Yang Chen to become so rich. She whispered with the other one covering her mouth. Lixi thought, If I had known the family was so rich, I wouldn't have given up even after he insulted me years ago. She screwed up her face, and again her thoughts flashed. I must try to make him like me. My destiny is to become a rich wife, and no one can stop me. At this time at the hotel, number 318 Miss Xue came to see Yang. Jan opened the door and said, Miss Sweet, you look fabulous. She replied, this is my first date with Mr. Jan. Of course I have to pay special attention to how I look. His eyes sparkled and he confirmed after you said that I was rather embarrassed. I didn't have time to go home and change into a suit. Shua said Mr. Yang has a great physique and good looks. I did not even dress up. You are really beautiful. Her eyes were also sparkling. Chef asked, Mestra, can we start selling the dish? He put his hands in his pocket and said yes. The food was brought to the table. Everything looked gorgeous and sparkled like diamonds. Three bottles of wine lobster steak crab dessert and sushi. Shui in my mind. He thought so highly of me. There's no way I would have been able to order this dish for 300,000 yuan. Yang Chun continued to eat at this moment. The phone next to the glass vibrated, and it seemed to have a message. He picked up his phone and read. The message was from Wang Lexin. It said, Thanks for treating us today. Let me take you out. Yang Chen, let's watch a movie tonight. Why aren't you answering? Just say something. Otherwise, I'll start to worry. Lixi seemed to be obsessed with Yang Chen. I think she's up to something. If I start answering messages, I have a chance? I'll tell him it's my destiny to be a good wife. Hey he. Night passed and morning came the next day at Yang Chen's house. The phone rings. Yang Chen wakes up. On the phone, he was informed. Boss, we successfully purchased office equipment and got a new business license. He said, great. He picked up the phone again and called Zhao Lei. Hello, Zhao Li. The company is all set. Let everyone know that they have started work. By the way, our company has been renamed Arcane. Meanwhile, back at the office. Okay, I'll alert everyone to get back to the office and get to work right away. Yang Chen got up from the bed. He looked out the window, scratched the back of his head, and said, What nice weather. Time for a ride. An hour later, Yang Chen arrived late to order. The customer asked, Hey, why are you so late? I'm sorry, when I took the order, there was one coma five kilometers away. I had to make a detour around the island exit for it to take more time. He smiled. The girl started yelling, You know I'm in a hurry? My train leaves in half an hour. If I don't make the train, will you refund the money for the ticket? Yang Chen is shocked. Half an hour. There's no way I can make it in time. The train station is pretty big. Even if I get back on time, you'll have to run really fast to make it. The client was very angry. She was literally aflame. The neighbor told me that my husband had brought a woman home and I had to hurry. She said, Please don't worry, I will go faster. Yang Chen was madly surprised. Why don't you call the train station and ask them to wait a little while? She took the phone out of the yellow bag and said, That makes sense. If I don't come, they can't leave. She called the dispatcher and said two tokas. Hello, is this the train station? My train is scheduled to leave in 30 minutes. Could you please tell the driver to delay the departure a little and wait for me? I'll try to get there as soon as possible. Yang Chen covered himself in cold sweat and his mind flashed. Is she really going to call? Does she have a problem with her head? She just started yelling in a rage. He hung up on me. Won't even answer me. What kind of relationship is that? While they were driving all the way, she was screaming. I paid for the ticket and they don't want to wait for me. It's not fair. Yang Chen. Miss, please don't be upset. Where should I drop you off? He stopped the car abruptly. In a gentle voice, he said, Please don't forget your things. I hope you will use our services in the future. Still in displeasure, she said, I will never use this cab service again. Yang Chen thought, In this world, one could meet all sorts of people. And she's gone. Yang Chen received a message. Chan Yun, can you pick me up? I need to discuss something with you and ask for your help. Without thinking quickly, rushed to her and wrote, Send me your location, I'll be there soon. A few minutes passed and he arrived at the university. Yang Chen got out of the car, closed the door. 
He got a message. You got a new bad review. He got nervous. Did she seriously leave me a bad review? Once again, the gorgeous, long-haired, sexy girl showed up. Congratulations to the owner for getting a bad review. The system rewards you with a brand new sports car. With its help, others will no longer find the host slow. He was just thrilled, his eyes sparkling and a smile appearing on the outside. Amazing. I'm going to be one of the fastest people in the cab industry. He tucked his hands in his pockets. Holding the keys to a brand new sports car in his hands, Jan said, It's strange that last time the theme indicated where the car was parked. Why this time there is no information about its whereabouts? The girls were excitedly discussing the blue sports car. Wow, what a great car. If I were more attractive, I would definitely follow its owner. There's no point in thinking about it. We don't even know who owns it, her friend added. There she is, thought Young Chen, looking at the blue sports car gleaming in the sunlight. Boy, does my car look great, the owner of the blue beauty asked him with a smile. It's really not bad, Chen replied, looking at the brand new Bugatti. So it's not my car at all, it flashed through his mind. Young master, get ready, she's coming, shouted the car owner's man. Hey bro, how about I give you a hundred dollars and you hold the banner for me, suggested the owner of the blue car. We need another one. Hey, you there, come here, shouted Lin Nan. The young man in green uniform happily agreed. A valise containing money suddenly flew out of Nan's hands. It opened and with a muttered, Oops! The car owner began to gather it back up. Wow, so much money. Cheers came from all directions. Only Yang Chen seemed a little sad. Maybe because it wasn't his car. Smiling, Lin took out a wad of banknotes from his valise with two fingers and handed it to Chen. Here, take it. Brother, it's a little inappropriate to hand over money without asking my opinion first. Ah, oh, that's not enough. Then I'll give you more. Nian shrieked, waving the money in front of his face. Brother, go for it. It's easy money. The man with whom they were unfurling the banner urged him. Okay, Chen agreed glumly. The unfurled scarlet banner was about four meters long. The inscription on it read, Zhao Yun, I like you, be my girlfriend. Lin Nan stood smiling with a huge bouquet of roses. There were at least thirty of them. The girls talked among themselves. See, I told you not to go out, but you didn't listen. Now Lin Nan and his gang are here again. Why don't we go back and ask the driver you called to pick us up from the back entrance? Hey, why do you keep going that way? Lin Nan will make a fuss again, said her friend. Lin Nan thought Zhang Hongji used dirty methods to pursue her. If he had more money, he wouldn't be in this situation. Do you think she likes you? Chen asked. Don't you understand? There is no girl in this world who can resist a man who can drive a sports car, replied Lin Nan proudly. Zhao ran up to the banner, read the inscription and looked at Chen with surprise, while completely ignoring the guy with the bouquet of roses. He gave me a few hundred bucks to help him with the banner. Answer him quickly so we can get out of here, said Yan. Do you two know each other? Lin asked in surprise. Yes, she hailed a cab in which I was the driver. That's how we met, replied Young Chen calmly. You're just an ordinary cab driver, aren't you? Nan asked in surprise. He was clearly starting to suspect something. Zhao Yun, I've liked you for a long time. Be my girlfriend. Kneeling down, he presented a bouquet of red roses to the girl. Stop it. We met last week and you're already saying you like me. You expect me to believe you. Don't waste your time on me, Yun replied angrily. You're denying me, he shouted. Lin now looked confused. Yes, I don't like people like you, she said. You don't like me? Are you mocking me? Lin was indignant. Am I not attractive enough? Not rich enough? Not good enough for you? I can see that you're too embarrassed by the crowd. Lin started to get angry. I told you I don't like you. Leave me alone, she said loudly. Yang Chen, why are you helping him? Zhao asked and jumped up and kissed him. The voices of all the spectators merged into one thunderous wow. Stop it at once! Lin turned red with anger. The kissing and laughing couple was really starting to annoy him. Embarrassed Zhao, hugging Chen, confessed to him. Sorry, this is my first kiss. I accidentally got saliva on your face. Zhao felt her soul fly. She wanted to do it again and again. Suddenly, she noticed a lipstick mark on Chen's cheek. Let me wipe you off, she said, and took out some wet wipes. Your lipstick has such a sweet peach flavor, Chen noted with pleasure. He clearly didn't mind this kind of tasting. Excuse me, Zhao said. Someone called out to her from outside. Zhao Yun, what's going on? You're acting too bold, aren't you? Ha <laughs> ha. The atmosphere was so pleasant that I couldn't control myself. I'm the one who created this whole atmosphere, Lin said angrily. Why are you kissing him? He's just a poor cab driver. Can you not bother us anymore? Chen inquired. I'm going to take her out to dinner. You're just a cab driver. Stay away from Zhao Yun. Don't you dare touch what belongs to me. Are you threatening me? Chen clarified. Yes, that's right. I'm threatening you. Do you think the poor driver can compete with me for the girl? I forgot to tell the owner the license plate number. 
Your license plate number is AYC, and why didn't the system tell me this before? Hmm. Why does this license plate seem so familiar to me? Chen approached the car. I knew it was my car, he exclaimed, noticing that the license plates in his clipboard and on his car were identical. Haha, <laughs> yours? This car costs over 40 million. Even if you work as a driver all your life, you still can't afford it. Lin Nian, is this your car? Asked Chen for reassurance. He needed to know that the system had not made a mistake. Lin fearfully began to think. This isn't my car, but the owner isn't here, so I can use it. Of course she's mine! How can she not be mine? He yelled aloud. Stay away from her, Chen advised. Suddenly, someone unlocked the alarm on the blue sports car, and the engine rumbled contentedly. Virum, virum. Ling Nian, how did the car start? I didn't see you take out the keys. What's going on? Thought Lin warily. Is the owner of the car nearby? So it's not your car? Chen continued to interrogate. So what? What do you care? Yan calmly walked to the car, pulled the door towards himself, and calmly sat in the driver's seat as if it was his personal transportation. Why the hell did you get into someone else's car? shouted Lin. Yang Chen, come out quickly! This car is very expensive! Zhao exclaimed worriedly and ran to the car. Zhao Yun, don't go there! What will you do if he asks you to borrow money? Yang Chen, come out quickly! We'll be in trouble if the owner shows up. Zhao Yun, let's go for a ride and then have a bite to eat. I know a good restaurant nearby. You won't regret it, I promise you. Who's the owner of the car, by the way? Why did he start the car but never showed up? Isn't he the least bit concerned about the potential theft of a luxury car? Don't you get it yet? Chen asked, nonchalantly showing his keychain. He made it clear that this was his car, and Lin could only dream of such a car. This can't be, thought Lin. He's just a cab driver. How can he afford a sports car worth over 40 million? If you don't get in the car, I'll leave without you. Chen winked at the girl. She couldn't believe her happiness. So this is really your car? Zhao asked admiringly, still pondering over the events that had happened. Take a look at the license plate, and you'll understand everything, Chen said modestly. So those are your initials, the girl gasped. Does this car have an individual license plate? Yang Chen, YC, author's note. Just get in the car. I want to get out of here. I'm starting to get annoyed with this place, and I'm hungry. Good. Yun agreed happily and ran to the car. She couldn't wait to get into the passenger seat and see if the leather was really that exclusive. I planned everything carefully, but I turned out to be a minor character, Lin lamented. Zhao Yun, are you really sitting in a sports car worth several tens of millions? I'm so jealous. I didn't know being a cab driver could make someone so rich. Do you want to sit in the car? If so, get in. I'll call a cab and I'll come get you. Thank you. But maybe that's not such a good idea. Her friend tried to object. She felt uncomfortable, because Zhao was the one who should go with Chen. Yang Chen is my friend. He won't mind if you take a ride with him. Zhao persuaded her. After that, I'll buy you dinner. I could have taken a cab myself, she said, fastening her seatbelt. She made it clear that she had no claim on Chen or his car. Yes, this girl is really naive. Just a few days ago, she was set up by her roommate, and now she treats the conniving woman like her best friend, thought Chen. Out loud, he said, then you two can call a cab. You obviously have a lot to talk about and brighten the ride. I'll wait for you at the Balking Hotel. Good, she agreed, leaving the car not without regret. The car sped away, leaving behind puffs of smoke and the pungent smell of burning rubber. Zhao Yun, I'm sorry. I didn't expect it to turn out like this. I really don't understand why he did this to us. The girl justified herself. You see that now? He doesn't even consider you an important person. Lin cheered joyfully. What do you care? Mind your own business. You don't even have a car like that, Zhao said to him. You, you're just a lowlife. You can only throw money around. It doesn't matter. Let's take a cab and leave. The friends dialogued. Fortunately, they didn't have to wait long, and soon a yellow car pulled up on the sidewalk. Lin Nian kept pondering. This car might not be his. I think he knows its owner. Sis, can you help me check if there is a guy named Yang Chen who drives a sports car? He dialed the phone number. I checked the repurchases, and there's no mention of anyone named Chen. There are only three such sports cars in the entire Haicheng city. One car is owned by Qin Feng, another belongs to Song Siming, and the third belongs to Yu Cheng. Who is Yang Cheng? I've never heard of him. Are you sure? So the initials on the license plate are not Yang Chen's abbreviation. Are you at the Bao King Hotel? I'll come to see you soon. Who is he? Did he bully you? I'm discussing business at the Baoqing Hotel right now. Where are you? Great. He also went to eat at the Baoqing Hotel. Wait for me there. I'll find you right away. Your cab isn't faster than my car anyway, mocked Lin to the arriving girls. Look, he's nowhere to be seen. He definitely lied and took the chance to escape. Yang Chen, we've arrived. Where are you? Zhao asked the caller. Didn't he tell you the room number? Do you want me to help you find it? Lin continued to tease. 
Are you stupid or something? I already rejected you in front of so many people. Leave me alone. Even if you're a rich man, it won't change anything. Such a bold statement. A voice came from outside. The voice belonged to a tall, long-legged, spectacular brunette. I'd like to see what kind of girl dares to disrespect my little brother like that. Sister, there you are, shouted Lin happily. Where did you get the confidence to say such a thing? Lin's close relative asked angrily. Do you think he has any other brilliant qualities besides relying on his family's wealth? Would you choose someone like him as your partner? Zhao asked. Honestly, I despise him with all my heart. But after all, he's my own brother. We're obligated to help each other and all that. Shrugging her shoulders, the girl answered her. Sis, you don't need to waste time talking to her. Let's find that cab driver first. His car is parked over there. But I don't see anyone around, the girl said as she approached the car first. Lin and Zhao looked through the windows and confirmed that Chen was not there. Zhao Yun, it looks like he's completely lost his mind. What should we do? Could it be that we've really been tricked? The girl began to have doubts. As far as I know him, there's no way he could be a liar. Zhao justified him fervently. <sighs> You're a pretty naive and silly girl. It won't be a surprise if someone deceives you one day, Sister Lin said admonishingly. I can choose who I want to be deceived by. But rest assured, no one will let your little brother deceive me, Zhao angrily replied to her. How dare you insult me to my face! I'll beat you up right now and then see if he comes to your rescue! Lin exclaimed. A black car slowly pulled up to the hotel. Lin and the girls stared at it expectantly. I told you he wouldn't cheat! Joyfully, Zhao shrieked, holding the phone in her hand and easily recognizing the driver. It was Yang Chen. Ha ha, it turns out his real car is just a Passat. Yeah, this guy sure knows how to put on a show, Lin said with a sneer. Chen opened the car door and asked, Why didn't you go inside? We agreed that I would arrive later, and we would meet at the hotel. Where have you been? They were bullying me, Zhao rebuked him. My work car was left outside the university, so I went back to get it, Chen explained. Lin Nan, you're pretty persistent, aren't you? Why don't you stop following us? He asked. Are you still pretending? Lin asked, annoyed. My sister has already checked. This sports car belongs to Yu Chung, not you. You're pretty brazen, pretending to own it while working as a cab driver, he said. I don't understand. Say it again. Yu Cheng, who is it? Cheng asked, tweaking his ear so he could hear his interlocutor better. Young man, you don't seem to have any money working as a cab driver. If you confess everything, I'll help you get a good job, Sister Lin offered. Forget it. I don't want to work for someone with such a dirty heart. You are deliberately making your brother look like a loser so that your family's business will definitely go to you in the future, Chung objected. Stop trying to sow discord between me and my brother. Teach him a lesson, the girl shouted, signaling to the guys standing nearby. They instantly pounced on Chung. At that moment, a man in a suit came out of the hotel and said, Let's see who dares to raise a hand against him. Mr. Yang, are you okay? Do you need any help? He asked. Yes, I'm fine. May I ask who you are? Chung asked the question, shaking himself off. I am Wang Yunhui, the manager of Bao King Hotel. I was told that you made a reservation for dinner, so I came out to greet you, said the man. Why was the manager of the prestigious Bao King Hotel so polite to Yang Chen? The brother and sister thought at the same time. It's good that you didn't get hurt, the manager remarked. Manager, may I ask who he is? Why are you being so polite to him? Sister Lin asked in the hotel representative's ear. This is Mr. Yang, the new second largest shareholder of our company. Were you planning to do something with him right now? The manager asked threateningly. Yang Chen, are you the second largest shareholder of Baoqing Hotel? Zhao asked, wiping away her tears. She couldn't believe that Chen was so rich. And that sports car is yours too, right? She asked. Of course it is. How can I even drive someone else's car? Chen convinced her. YC is really an abbreviation for Yang Cheng, not Yu Cheng. You are so good at coming up with tricks too, Zhao said. Manager, are you sure you haven't mistaken him for someone else? He's just a cab driver, Lin's sister exclaimed. Do you think everyone is as blind as you are? replied Wang. Do you think the real heirs of rich families are like your brother, who does nothing all day long? he asked. Apparently, that wasn't enough for the manager, so he said, Leave the Baoqing Hotel. We will not allow you to successfully conclude the contract for the renovation of the university library. Shit! The girl's fingers clenched into fists. It's all your fault, she shouted, hitting him in the head with her knuckles. Sister, why are you hitting me? Lin groaned, rubbing the bruised area. His back was also starting to ache. Apologize to Mr. Chen immediately, the girl shouted, pinning him to the ground with one hand and pushing him to his knees. Why are you treating me like this? I don't deserve to be treated like this, Lin shouted indignantly. Ling Nian, cool down a bit. 
What the hell are you talking about? His sister asked him. Without paying the slightest attention to her words, Lin picked up a cobblestone lying nearby and headed towards the blue car. Stop! Don't act impulsively! Stop him, for God's sake! She shouted to the bodyguards waiting for orders. Yang Chen! He's going to crash your car! Zhao was scared. Don't worry, he will pay for it, Chen replied in a calm voice. But against all expectations, Lin swept past the shiny blue car and launched a brick at his yellow sports car. Lin Nian, why are you crashing your car? His sister asked him. Dodging the guards, he shouted, Leave me alone! Stepping aside, he quickly dialed a phone number. I am the legal heir of the Lin family. From now on, I will say goodbye to my free life and fully focus on the family business. Big sister, thank you for your contribution to the Lin family all these years. I promise that I will never mistreat you in the future. Lin solemnly proclaimed. Lin Nan, that's just great! Looks like you've come to your senses quickly, Chen said happily. Yang Chen, I hate the hell out of you, but I still have to thank you. If you need anything in the future, just let me know. I'm indebted to you. Lin bowed. Let's talk about it later if the need arises. Yang Chen made a conciliatory gesture with his hand. Yang Chen, you ruined my plan. You're so cruel, Sister Nan shouted. Her face twisted with anger made it impossible to doubt the girl's intentions. What are you talking about? It doesn't make the slightest bit of sense, Chen replied. He couldn't understand what he had done to her. Come on, let's forget about all that. Let's go upstairs and have dinner, Chen declared. Zhao readily agreed. Great, I'm a little hungry too. Zhao finally received her long-awaited dinner. A huge round oak table was set up for the three of them, filled with all kinds of dishes and viands. Lin Nan crashed his own car, perhaps he will crash yours as well, remarked Zhao's girlfriend while tasting the red wine. Chen laughed back, holding the chopsticks in his hand. I don't think so. He could have broken it, but he didn't. Yang asked Zhao, so why aren't you eating? Order whatever you want, it's my treat. Eat as much as you like. That's not what this is about. I called you here to talk about something else, Zhao replied indignantly. She looked displeased. What happened? asked Chen. During the previous incident, two of my roommates were detained. Their families and teachers are hoping that I will give them another chance. Brother Yang, I think this matter should definitely be dealt with. We discussed it for a long time, but we didn't come to a public opinion, girlfriend Zhao stated. They should confess that Zhang Hengji encouraged them to do it. If you don't bring Zhang Hengji to justice, he may continue to persecute you in the future, Chen said. Of course, I want Zhang Hengji to go to jail. However, my two roommates refuse to testify against him. His father is the boss of Yao Wu Company. They dare not insult him, Zhao confessed. Chen replied, refilling the wine in his glass. It makes absolutely no difference. Just do as I say. Explain your condition to them. That in itself would be considered a show of kindness to them. As for the Yao Wu Company, you need not worry too much about them. Zhao, taking a sip of wine, exclaimed, Good, then I will do whatever you say. Now that we're done eating, let's go to the movies. Stroking his stuffed belly, Chen suggested. Zhao's girlfriend didn't have to be persuaded for long. She was happy to have any kind of fun. Okay, let's go. Chen thought, this person is so clingy. I obviously only asked Zhao Yun out, and she still follows me around so shamelessly. She furtively caught his glances. Yang Chen just furtively glanced at me. Oh my god, he must have liked me. Manager, ask the driver to bring my first car to Binjiang and wait for me to come back for it. Asked Chen Wang Yunhui after leaving the hotel. Mr. Yang, rest assured, I will personally drive her there and make sure everything is secure. Well, Manager Wang, I really like the way you're doing your job. When I meet your boss, I will definitely recommend you to him. Thank you, Mr. Yang. It's my pleasure to help you, said the flattered manager. There was a conversation going on in Villainum 8. Isn't it too hasty to assume that he's from some powerful secret family just because he lives in Villainum 1? asked Mr. Zhue. I think he must be trying to hide his identity replied his wife. We own 9% of Yao Wu's shares. We only have to wait for them to come to the market to cash them in. At this point, it is unwise to break off the relationship with Yao Wu because of an unknown young man. At least until we confirm his identity, the man continued. At that moment, there was a timid knock at the door. Come in, said the lady. Sir, miss, Yang Chen has returned in a new sports car. What brand was the sports car? Mrs. Zhu asked. I was too far away, so I couldn't see clearly said the daughter who came in. He spends money as if there were no limits. Even I can't spend that much money. The woman waved her hands in the air. Well, I'll bring him a present to look at the sports car. If it's really worth millions, he's definitely a super rich man, Miss Zhu declared. The father agreed. Okay, young Chen, sitting at his villa in the evening, rummaged through his phone and found something strange. What? Isn't that my morning passenger? I bought a train ticket and you took my money, so you have to do me a favor. You can't leave without me. 
yelled his client. She was held tightly by the hands of the police officers. Chen said, God, she's such a bitch, no wonder her husband cheated on her. The system has detected that the host has received another bad review. The system presents the host with proof of all crimes committed by Yao Wu. Man, that's cool. The system is so powerful that it has evidence of Yao Wu Company's criminal activities, rejoiced Yang Chen. The system kept broadcasting, and this passenger also added a complaint, which triggered an extra bonus. Congratulations to the host for gaining the magic driver skill. What is this skill? Isn't it a hint that I can't drive? Chen asked, tweaking his ear to better hear the information. The host can drive any car or boat after gaining the magic driver skill. 100%. Zero skill in driving any vehicle that can be driven. Oh my, if that's really true, then the skill magic driver I got quite deservedly. Chen shrieked happily. Someone rang the doorbell. Who could have come at this late hour? Chen asked perplexed. Opening the doorknob, he saw his neighbor in a fancy evening dress. Mr. Yang, you're back. I hope I didn't disturb your peace by coming here so late, said the guest. No, you didn't bother me at all, Chen answered. He was just wondering what he owed to a visit at such a late hour. And I brought you a watermelon that we bought especially for you, the neighbor said coquettishly, holding out a gift bag to Chen. Thank you very much, Miss Xu. You are too kind. Please come in and have a seat. Invited the host to invite the guest. You're welcome. I'd like you to take a look at the night view of my city from the lakeside, asked Miss Zhu, glancing at a car parked nearby. Chen happily agreed. Sure, why not? I'll go and cut the watermelon. Let's enjoy the night view while we eat it. Taking advantage of Chen's departure, Miss Zhu thought, we should go closer and see what brand this sports car is. My goodness, it's worth almost 50 million. And this is a customized license plate. It's really unusual, Miss Zhu continued to ponder. Chen came and brought the food. The watermelon was completely sliced and ready to be served. The neighbor stood with her back to him and seemed to be admiring nature. Let's enjoy the night view while we eat watermelon, suggested the host. Mr. Yang, you are too kind. Miss Shue was pleased by the coincidence of circumstances. Mr. Jan's new sports car is really beautiful, she declared, pointing with her hand to a blue car parked around the corner. If you want, you can take her for a ride, suggested Chen. My driving skills are terrible, ha ha joked Miss Xu. You're so rich, but why do you keep working as a cab driver? If you don't want to tell me, you don't have to tell me. She continued to intrigue Chen. Being a cab driver allows me to meet different types of people, and for me it is a way to grow personally and gain experience. I need to improve my thinking before I start running a company, said John. By the way, Miss Xu, could you take a look at these documents? Chen asked, handing her a rather puffy brown folder. What's this? She asked, carelessly opening the folder and beginning to familiarize herself with its contents. Humph. He had managed to gather so much evidence of Yao Wu Company's illegal activities. This is definitely not something an ordinary person can achieve, thought Miss Xu. Mr. Yang is truly impressive. You managed to study them so thoroughly in a short period of time. I have my own ways, but I'm not at liberty to reveal them, confessed Chen. Sending a slice of watermelon into his mouth, Yan reported. Now that I have all the evidence in hand, I won't give the Yao Wu Company a single chance to survive. I had already started collecting dirt on the Yao Wu Company, but you were quicker. Now that we have proof, I will expose them immediately and make Yao Wu collapse. Chen confessed, Actually, I just want Zhang Yao Wu and Zhang Hengji to feel humiliated. Whether the Yao Wu Company collapses or not, I don't care. Taking the file folder in her hands, the guest said, I will take care of it as soon as possible. I have to go back now. Thank you for your help, Miss Zhu. Thanked Chen. The girl came home and immediately began to report. Daddy, luckily Mr. Jan let me in. Look at this. She showed her father a bag of documents. Where did you get all this? Mr. Xu was clearly surprised at how easy it was for his daughter to get the necessary data. Mr. Yang gave them to me. He asked me to help him deal with the Yao Wu company. And today he managed to gather all the evidence. There must be a very powerful family backing him. By the way, I saw his new sports car that cost 50 million. 50 million? A surprised Mr. Xu couldn't handle his emotions and broke out into a bit of a sweat. Yes, and he also said that as long as Zhang Yao Wu and Zhang Hengji are not punished, it doesn't matter if Yao Wu Company collapses or not. Do you think he knows that we own 9% of Yao Wu Company? The girl asked. I will find someone to sell our stake in the company to Yao Wu. Since he wants to keep a low profile, you should also avoid intentionally getting close to him in the future and keep an appropriate distance, advised Shui. Understood. The next day in the morning, Chen's cell phone rang. Hello, who is it? asked Yang. Yang Chen, I need to buy some clothes for my job interview in the morning. Can I order your car to pick me up? Sure, why not? I'll give you a discount of 500 yuan, Chen mumbled. Thank you. I'll send you the address, come and pick me up. It was his classmate. 
In the morning, Yang Chen arrived at the designated address in a black car with tinted windows. Yang Chen, we're here, the girl called out to him, waving her hands and trying to attract attention. Yang Chen, this is my cousin Fang Huihu. We'll go shopping together, said the girl. Hello, Mr. Yang, said Fang. Hello, Miss Fan. Nice to meet you, Chen said and started the car. Soon they came to a large building with a signboard gleaming gold. Chen asked, Is this the store? Yes, the cousins answered him. Then you go and buy what you want. I'd rather wait for you outside, Chen said. He wasn't going to get out of the car and was still wearing his seatbelt. Why wait outside in this heat? Come with us. The girl gently touched him by the shoulder, urging him to keep the company. Good, but I still don't understand why you need me, said Chen perplexedly. Don't ask unnecessary questions. Just join us. Miss Fan, welcome, said the female assistant. Hmm, that voice sounded so familiar, Chen tried to remember. He finally remembered. Is it Wang Jiayi? The girl counselor's thoughts were somewhat different. Young Chen? Did he come here for me? Miss Fan asked, seeing Wang looking at Chung, she asked, Do you two know each other? No, but it has been a long time since I have seen such a handsome man. Is he your boyfriend? Jiayi asked, almost in tears with resentment. He's an acquaintance of my cousin and works as a cab driver. I left my car for maintenance and ordered his car, Ms. Fan told me. Ya Li and her boyfriend held hands and rushed into the back of the store, telling the girl, We'll call you if we need help. Okay, the counselor replied. Wang Jiayi, come over here, Ya Li shouted angrily. In her hand, she carelessly held her shirt. The figure made it clear that she was in a position. I'm Li, did you pick anything out? The girl asked obligingly. Li threw the shirt right in her face, smiling mockingly. The counselor couldn't understand what had happened. Oh, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean it, said Li with an expression of genuine regret in her eyes. Jiayi instantly mastered herself, took the green shirt in her hands and said while smiling politely, Don't worry, it's fine. Did you choose this shirt? No, I'm pregnant and I prefer something looser. But loose clothes make me look too fat, said Li. Bring me the dress I tried on first, commanded Yali. God, she's tried almost twenty outfits, and now she wants to try on the one she tried on first again. This is so annoying, Jai thought. The free female counselors were talking about what was going on. Why all the showboating? She's just dating a rich guy. Her boyfriend took a look at Wang Jiayi, and because of that she's making a circus out of it. After rummaging through the closet for a bit, Jai approached the customer. This is the first dress you chose. By the way, find a set of clothes for my boyfriend to try on too, asked Yali. Does he want to buy something too? Wang Jiayi asked in surprise. The boyfriend was standing beside her at the time, smoothing his hair. We'll decide whether to buy or not after he tries it on. It's my day off, and we'll do whatever we want, said Li. All right, I'll take him to the men's section so he can pick something for himself, Jai said and choked up. Excuse me. She dashed past Yali and ran straight to the trash can in the center of the department. Li looked at her in surprise. Everything inside Li's body clenched, and her emotions drove her to coughing and crying. Ka, ka, what's wrong? Are you okay? Miss Fan asked. Yes, I'm fine. It's just a little dry in my throat. Have you picked out the clothes you like yet? Jai asked. Miss Fan, holding the rolled-up clothes in her hands, said, I like this outfit. I'll go and try it on. Okay, replied Jai. Walking into the fitting room, Wang Jai saw Chen and thought, Couldn't you at least worry about me a little? You scoundrel, despicable person. Yang Chen, how do I look? Ya Li abruptly interrupted her musings, bursting into the fitting room wearing a new dress and smiling brightly. You look great, though that's just my personal opinion, Chen replied, smiling and raising a thumbs up. Okay. Then I'll take this outfit. Help me pack it, Ye Li asked. Looks like you and this young man are more than acquaintances, Jia Yi remarked. You misunderstood us completely. I don't have any male friends, so I asked for his opinion, said Li, as if justifying herself. Mr. Yang, what do you think of this suit? Miss Fan seemed to have decided to get involved in the game as well, and walked into the fitting room wearing a new pantsuit. You look good, but I don't like this style of dressing at all, replied Chen thinking a bit and scratching the back of his head for reassurance. Since you're here, why don't you buy something? Miss Fan asked. Okay, then wait here while I pick out my clothes, agreed Chen. All right. Come with me to the men's clothing department on the second floor. Wang Jiayi invited him. Why did you throw up? Are you sick? Chen asked thoughtfully as he and Jiayi walked along the row of mannequins in the department. Jiayi turned around abruptly. I'm pregnant, and it's your baby. What? Chen couldn't believe what he was hearing. Here, this should fit you best, Jiayi told him, holding out the box. At that moment, Chen abruptly hugged her from behind, surprising her. Oh my god, what are you doing? There are security cameras in the store. Be cool. Jiayi decided to cool it down a bit. Repeat what you just said, 
Chen demanded, pressing the girl against the counter. You should take responsibility, Jiayi said. Chen put her hand in his and pulled her with him. Where are you taking me? The girl shrieked fearfully. She wasn't glad she'd imposed this game. If it's really true, then let's get married, Chen suggested. He wanted to be a decent father, since what had happened had happened. Ha ha ha. Did you really believe me? I was just messing with you. I'm having a little stomach trouble. Did you really believe that I'm pregnant? Laughed Jiayi. Damn it, you can't be serious. How could you joke around like that? Poor Chen was sweating with worry and visions of what was going to happen next. Who would have thought that you would believe it? Wang Jiayi snuggled against his shoulder. If you keep joking like this, I won't be able to stand it. Pick up some clothes for me, Chen asked. Ha ha, it looks like I've really succeeded in playing a trick on you. If I really get pregnant, I will definitely let you know. She couldn't calm down. When I saw you today, I felt much better. That couple tried on about 20 outfits, but still haven't made up their minds, said Jai. Who are they, and why do they behave like that? Asked Chen. This woman was my colleague, but somehow she married a rich guy, answered the girl. But this guy's too annoying, and she wanted me to accompany this guy. But that only makes me disgusted, Jai continued. Is she even crazy? I'm going to teach her a lesson, Chen shouted angrily. He was clearly unhappy with his classmate's behavior. Why do you want to stand up for me? Jai asked. The subject of their conversation walked into the dressing room, cutting the conversation short. What's wrong with you? We're not done yet, and you're already serving someone else? I made it clear that I would take care of your business, and you treat me like this? Ye Li asked. If you can't afford the clothes, then don't waste the salesman's time. You try on clothes, but you don't buy anything. Go to another store and don't waste her time, Chen said sharply. Look at your clothes. How dare you come into this store? Li's friend shrieked. What about you? You tried on more than twenty outfits, but you never bought anything, replied Yan. Miss Wang, pick up the most expensive outfit for me, asked Chen. Wang Jai only gasped in surprise. The free sales girls continued to whisper. What's going on? A consultant asked perplexed. It looks like they had a serious fight, her colleague answered her. Wang Jiayi presented Chen with a package with outlandish ornaments. The box shimmered with mother of pearl in the sunlight. Is it definitely the most expensive outfit? Chen interrogated. Yes, Jiayi replied confidently. Who is the manager of this store? Jan asked. The girls' consultants looked at each other in bewilderment. They were waiting with interest for the development of events. Hello, how can I help you? A woman in a green pantsuit walked into the hall, her name tag clearly visible on her chest. I want to buy the most expensive clothes, but your salesman has to accompany me through the whole process. Do you mind? Chen asked. Of course not. It's a very great honor for us, replied the manager. Wang Jiayi, you must accompany this handsome gentleman. Don't worry about anything else, she mumbled. I will, Jiayi agreed. But we got here first. Why does she have to help only him? Li shouted angrily. Are you deliberately ignoring us? Li's boyfriend asked. You've tried on over twenty outfits, but you haven't bought anything. Admit that you don't have any money. If you don't buy anything, why waste time on you? Chen answered him. You've got to be kidding me. These clothes only cost a few tens of thousands. You don't think I can afford it? We just couldn't find anything suitable. The boyfriend objected. Wang Jai, gather all the clothes I've tried on. If we don't buy anything, people might actually think that I can't afford these clothes. Ya Li shouted. What? All the clothes will cost 160. I said it for nothing, but she took it seriously. Pale, the young man thought. Wait! We have enough clothes at home. Why buy more? He asked Li. What, you won't buy them from me? She got angry. I'm pregnant, and you don't want to take care of me. When I have a baby, then you'll leave me, right? Ya Li asked, sobbing. The young man said conciliatory. Calm down. I'll buy it for you. Wang Jai, bring all the clothes we measured. What the hell are you talking about? She's my personal counselor. Chen angrily shrieked, hiding Jia Yi behind his back. So? You won't be able to buy anything here anyway. Li's boyfriend argued angrily, pointing his index finger in his direction. Miss Wang, choose the most expensive clothes, shoes, bag, jewelry, and create a matching set for yourself. Now you'll see it all for yourself. Chen now pointed at him with his hand. This guy is so bossy, smart, and handsome. Jai thought admiringly, secretly wiping away her tears. She was amazed by his demeanor. The cousins, meanwhile, were talking among themselves, and one asked, I wonder why there are so many people on the second floor. So let's go and have a look, suggested Miss Fan. Yes, I'm going to buy her things. Are you in some kind of trouble? Chen asked. Jiayi was standing behind him. The young couple were talking to each other in a high-pitched tone. Yang Chen, these things are very expensive. You can't buy them for strangers. 
his classmate tried to reason with him. Do you still think they don't know each other? Miss Fan asked. How could an ordinary cab driver afford such an expensive bag? Wang Jiayi, bring that zero zero bag that we looked at last time. Li's boyfriend went wild. I'm Li. You're lucky he's willing to spend money on you, said Jiayi. Of course, I'm never short of money, replied Li condescendingly. Hey, boy, can you afford a 328,000 bag? She asked Chen. Oh, I'm just a cab driver. How can I have that kind of money? Yan scratched the back of his head. But since you have money, Miss Wang should help you with your shopping, he said, exchanging a glance with Jia Yi. She winked at him. Are you trying to provoke me into buying expensive things? Ya Li's boyfriend turned pale. He couldn't find a dignified way out. How can you slander me? If you don't have enough money, that's your problem. Smiling, Chen spread his hands apart. Ai Li was whispering to my boyfriend at the time. Do you really think it's too expensive and you won't buy it for me? It's not about what I think. He's provoking me on purpose, don't you see? He excused himself. You always say that you are very rich, so you should treat Ya Li better. She's carrying your child now and you don't want to spend your money on her? Jia Yi rebuked him. Don't try to sow discord between us. Do you think I won't hit you because you're a woman? The young man shouted angrily and swung around. But Chen reacted instantly, intercepting his hand and grabbing his throat. What kind of man are you to raise your hand on a woman? If you want to fight, I'll be your opponent. With these words, Chen took him by the neck and pulled him off the floor with one hand. Let me go, or you'll regret it, his opponent wheezed in pain. It was only a matter of time before he stopped breathing altogether. You don't need to stoop to his level at all, Wang Jiayi whispered, putting her arm around Chen's shoulder. She didn't want to become the root cause of the bloodshed. Chen let go of his throat and the young man coughed and muttered, Ahem, we're leaving. And you just walk away after he insulted you? Why don't you hit him? Ai Li just got mad with impotence. The young man clenched his teeth in anger. I won't be able to defeat him, he thought. Young Chen kept looking at him expectantly. Shut up, we're leaving! The young man shouted at Li. But we can't just leave! She was frustrated and couldn't find a place to go. You have to buy me that bag. If you don't, I'll have an abortion. Let's see you justify yourself to your parents, screamed Li. Do whatever you want. Maybe it's not my child at all. If you're sleeping with me for money, you can sleep with whoever you want. Seeing him turn around and go down the stairs, Ya Li shouted, Bastard, don't do this! Stop! Unfortunately, she ran after her boyfriend too fast, and her foot slipped down the step with a crack of her heel. I'm Li, are you okay? The young man asked concernedly, immediately coming back to help. I'm in a lot of pain, whispered Li, holding her stomach. You should take her to the hospital soon, Wang Jiayi said, worried about the future fate of Li and her baby. The called cab arrived instantly, and the anxious father-to-be in his arms carefully carried his companion into the yellow carriage. Ai Li relied on my child to get on top of the world. She deserved it, the store manager coldly remarked. Young man, do you want to buy anything else? She asked Chen. Yes, I'm looking for a formal suit. Miss Wang said she would help me. Wang Jiayi, make sure he finds something he likes, asked the manager. I will! The consultant responded happily. Let's go pick out some more clothes, said Miss Fan. Okay, that's not a bad idea, agreed her cousin. How expensive are you looking for? Jiayi asked. About 3,000 yuan. But why 3,000 yuan? She asked in surprise. Because last time you said you'd come back as soon as you got your paycheck. I give you 3,000 yuan right now, said Chen. But why are you talking about it now? Jiayi asked. By the way, is it possible to make clothes to order here? Asked Yan. Of course, I need to measure your measurements. Jiayi said, and took out all the necessary marking materials and tools. Is it just me, or has he gotten stronger? Or did I get something wrong that night? Jiayi pondered while measuring Chen. What's wrong? Are you not feeling well? Chen decided to tease the girl when she kneeled down and started to measure his waist. Did you go to the gym? Jiayi asked him. She was confused by such a sudden change in the young man's physique, so she decided to make sure. I think my body has been improved by the system, thought Chen. Yeah, I didn't want to disappoint you, so I went to the gym, he said out loud. My body is stronger now, he winked at Jai. You're just a pervert, no one will want to touch you, said the girl. Nevertheless, pushing the young man away, she ran her hand across his chest. Chen couldn't help but notice this fact. You can say you don't want to, but you still touch, he thought. Miss Fan watched Chen and Jai as they walked down the stairs. They seem to be very close, she thought. I have to ruin the relationship between him and my cousin so she stops liking you, she continued to ponder. Wang Jiayi, have you picked out clothes for Mr. Yang yet? The manager asked. She wanted to make sure that the customer would receive first-class service. 
Mr. Yang wants a custom-made suit of the finest quality. I've already taken his measurements. Contact the manufacturers and pass on the measurements, Jia Yi reported. The satisfied manager was just full of gratitude. Mr. Yan, thank you for your support. The order will be ready in half a month. Wang Jiayi will contact you. Goodbye, Mr. Yang. The store manager bent down in a half bow as Chen said goodbye and left the premises. Jiayi continued to stand straight. Where are we going now? Chen asked the girls while starting the car. To the All Island Hotel, said Miss Fan. But why do you buy such expensive clothes when you work as a cab driver? She asked. I saw clothes I liked, so why not buy them? Chen joked. Miss Fan watched his behavior and thought, flirting with my cousin and fooling other women. You bastard. Why don't you introduce him to my co-workers? Let's see what happens. Pulling the car up to the hotel entrance, Chen said, I'll go upstairs and get something to eat. Call me when you're done with your business. Why don't you eat with us? Fang started to persuade him. Yes, Yang Chen, join us. Her cousin was not far behind. All right, let's go. Chen locked the car door and went along with the girls. Fang continued to look at him with suspicion. We're here. Let me introduce everyone, Ms. Fan said. There were six people sitting around a round table in the room. This is Zhao Qin, the manager of the Human Resources Department, and Yang Jiaqiang, the manager of the Investment Department. Fang began the introduction. And this is my cousin and her acquaintance Chen. She introduced her companions, standing at the entrance of the room. Yang Chen is unlucky. There are only eight seats. The manager laughed. Ha, huh, Yang Chen, being a cab driver is exhausting. Find a free chair and join us. But Yang Chen didn't. Chen's classmate started to protest. Forget it. Ask the waiter for an extra chair. The girl waiter brought in a chair, glanced at Chen in passing and thought, This man looks familiar. Where have I seen him before? Meanwhile, the manager asked Chen, Mr. Yang, what is your income from being a cab driver? I heard that they can earn more than 10000 a month. Is that true? Wow, that's a lot of money. We work hard trading stocks and barely make more than 10000 in a month. If I ever get tired of investing, I'll join you, Zhao added. And why do I have the feeling that they are up to something? Chen couldn't figure out their secret plan, sipping his cocktail a little at a time. By the way, Manager John is very good at investing. If you ever want to start, you can go to him. You don't have to worry about anything. He will do everything for you, Ms. Fan assured Chen. For ordinary people like you, buying stocks is fine, but you shouldn't buy them thoughtlessly the manager advised, taking a sip of red wine. Miss Fan persuaded her cousin. You see how much he knows. When you join the company, you'll know even more. Let's raise a toast to Manager Yang and Zhao. Mr. Yang and Mr. Zhao, I'm not strong with words, but... Cheers. Standing up to her full height, Chen's acquaintance raised her wine glass. You are new and don't understand a lot of things, but that's okay. I will train you gradually, the manager continued. Manager Jan goes on to talk about investments. I have some spare money and I want to invest it. Which investment company do you work for? Chen asked. Have you heard of Tianmu Investment? If you have money, you can rest assured that we will bring you great profits, assured the manager. Here's your premium white wine. The waitress came in with a tray. But we didn't order anything, Fan said in surprise. Our manager instructed us to bring this wine to Mr. Yang. He will come downstairs soon to greet Mr. Yan personally, the waitress smiled politely. They must be referring to Yang Jiaqian thought Fang, looking at the bottle and figuring out how much it might be worth. Manager Yang, I didn't expect you to have such a great reputation. The manager of Baoking Hotel is sending you drinks. Your network must be really extensive, Fang congratulated him. I believe the hotel manager used my services. I made him a lot of money and now he wants to thank me, explained the manager. Sorry I'm late. Mr. Yang, did you get the wine? asked the panting manager as he entered the room. Yes, thank you. I'm very grateful to you, replied the satisfied manager. His ego was getting bigger by the minute. But who are you? The hotel manager suddenly asked. I am Yang Jiaqian, manager of the investment department of Tianmu Investment. I don't care at all. I asked you to deliver the wine to Mr. Yang, not you, said the hotel employee, pointing his hand at Chen, sitting modestly in the corner. What? Both cousins and Jiaqian shrieked in unison. A grimace of envy contorted their faces. The best service to the common man? Yang Chen is just an ordinary cab driver. Why send him wine? asked Fang angrily. Mr. Yang is taxiing for the soul, smiled the hotel manager. Actually, he mumbled. Manager Chung, Chen asked him. Mr. Yang, I remembered that I have some unfinished business. If you need anything, call me, said the hotel manager. Let's sit down, Chen proposed to the audience. Everyone froze in amazement and continued to stare at him as if they had never seen him before. Manager Yang, please keep talking about the investment. If you explain it well, I will trust you with a few million, said Chen. Mr. Yan, I apologize for my bad behavior, tried to justify herself to Fan. 
There's no need for that. We have nothing more to discuss. He closed the topic. Manager Yang, continue to talk about your investment knowledge, asked Chen. Okay, agreed the manager. Excuse me, Mr. Yang. I have to take this call. It must be something urgent. The son of the CEO of our company is calling me. The manager excused himself. Mr. Yang, my boss's son wants me to return to the company, he informed after receiving the information over the phone. Why doesn't he come here himself? Chen asked. He asked the manager after draining the glass to the bottom. Call Zhang Lun and tell him not to bother us. Sir, do you know a man named Yang Chen? The manager spoke in a low voice on the phone. Put it on speaker, I want to talk to him, Chen asked. Okay. Zhang Lung, don't interrupt our meal. I want to hear him talk about his investment knowledge. By the way, an acquaintance of mine wants to work in your company. Could you arrange it? Chen asked. Since Mr. Yang says so, I can't refuse. I will take care of your acquaintance too, Zhang Lun replied. Manager Yang, take care of Mr. Yang and don't give him any trouble. Came from the phone. Okay, the manager replied. He pondered. Even Zhang Lun listens to Yang Chen. He is a very unusual person. Zhang Lun spoke on the phone. I agreed to lend money to the Wang Jai family and help your acquaintance get a job in our company. You must vote for our company at the shareholders' meeting of Bio King Hotel. Of course I will do so. Thank you, Yang Chen exclaimed as he sat at the table and continued tasting the excellent red wine. Manager Yang, be sure to explain everything to Mr. Yang, came from the phone. Yes, yes, the manager immediately agreed. Why are you standing there? Sit down and start eating, Chen invited Manager Yang, who came in and stood at the door hesitantly to join the meal. Mr. Yang is the second largest shareholder of Baoqing Hotel, right? asked the manager. They're just nominal shares. Until they are realized, they are just pieces of paper. Am I right, Manager Yang? Chen asked. Yes, you're right. Let me explain to you what futures investments are, said Manager Yang, refilling the wine in his glass. A blue and clear sky shone over the city. Yang Chen went down to the basement to his car. There was a girl waiting for Yang Chen in the car. He said to his escorts, Go back. There's no need to see me off. Yang Chen asked his girlfriend, Where are we going now? The joyful girl replied to Yang Chen, How about we go for a swim? I'll treat you to dinner tonight. Yang Chen said, Okay, let us go, and they traveled on the road by car. They drove through the whole town. Yang Chen and his girlfriend came to the water park. There were many people in the water park Yang Chen was walking with his girlfriend. Yang Chen's girlfriend told him, I'll go to the restroom, and you can go swimming. Yang Chen said, Okay. Yang Chen put on his goggles. Yang Chen professionally dived into the pool. The girls at the water park noticed Yang Chen. They liked him. They said he's so handsome. He has a beautiful body. Is he a professional swimmer? Yang Chen floated out of the water. The girl standing beside him continued to admire him. Yang Chen went to the side of the pool. The girls approached Yang Chen and started talking to him. Hey, handsome. Will you add us to your messenger contacts? Yang Chen was drying himself with a towel. Yang Chen was embarrassed by the girl's proposal. He answered them, Sorry, I... Just then, one of the girls approached Yang Chen. She hugged him from behind. What? Yang Chen was surprised. Yang Chen recognized the girl who approached as his old acquaintance. He thought Wang Qiani. Why is she here? A girl named Wang Qiani shouted to the other girls, This is my boyfriend. Get out of here. The girls were not satisfied and stepped aside with the words, Let's go. Yang Chen was happy to see his old friend named Wang Qiani. He told her, your swimsuit looks great. Wang Chani replied, Yang Chen. Of course I possess a cute face and fair skin. I am called the flower of our city. Then Wang Chiani asked Yang Chen, what are you doing here? Yang Chen replied, I came here with an acquaintance who is coming up soon. Wang Chiani said, you are so handsome with a great physique. You're busy working in a cab. How do you have time to exercise? Yang Chen replied, Wang Chiani, this is none of your business. The girl told him, Don T, go away. I haven't had enough to admire yet. Yang Chen said, enough is enough. My acquaintance is coming soon. Wang Chiani asked, Who is she? Yang Chen replied, She is my former teacher. Wang Chiani asked, I am curious about what kind of woman made you go swimming with her. Is she prettier than me? Yang Chen was starting to get annoyed. He asked Wang Chiani, Why are you picking on me? She's more innocent than you. Can you pretend you don't know me and leave? Wang Chiani started to leave. She said, Okay, I won't bother you. That's when Yang Chen was approached by his girlfriend, with whom they had come to the water park. Yang Chen was already in the water. He shouted to his girlfriend, I'm here. The girl replied, I can't swim very well. Yang Chen began to move toward the girl. I'm going to swim over to you now. The girls at the water park were discussing Wang Chiani Ha. Just look at that swimsuit. She's clearly a conniving girl pretending to be innocent. Wang Chiani thought, if Yang Chen likes innocent girls, then I need to change. Yang Chen was at the edge of the pool. He was talking to his girlfriend. Yang Chen asked, are you a bad swimmer? She replied, yes, I'm not very good at it. The guy said, Come on, I'll teach you. Get in the water. Yang Chen's girlfriend dared to enter the pool. She said, Okay, and entered the water. 
Suddenly, the girl shouted, Yang Chen, help me, I'm scared. Yang Chen picked up a girl in the pool. He told her, it is okay, hold on to me. The rest of the water park guests were interested in what was going on. What happened there? There was screaming. Yang Chen said to the girl, lie on my back. She replied, okay. Yang Chen with his girlfriend on his back swam to the edge of the pool. There was a group of girls standing near the edge of the pool. Yang Chen turned to them. Ladies, what's going on? It's such a hot day today. Why are you arguing instead of swimming? The water park guests began to ask Yang Chen, Are you here to help her? How many girls do you have? The guy had just gotten out of the water with droplets dripping off his body. What do you care? asked Yang Chen. Can you stop arguing? One of the female customers said it depends on whether you're willing to go clubbing with us tonight. The guy raised his hand and said, I don't agree. One of the girls said, Okay then, let us go to the hotel and have fun. This made Wang Qiani very angry. Wang Qiani was in a great rage. She grabbed the girl by the hair and shouted, You despicable woman! Wang Qiani threw the girl into the pool with the words, Get lost! The girl only had time to shout, Ah! Yang Chen turned to Wang Qiani. He said to her, Couldn't you be more calm? She replied, If I am calm, they will take you away. The guy decided to leave the water park. He took his girlfriend and Wang Qiani by the hand. Suddenly they were blocked by two girls who shouted, Stop! None of you will leave until we settle this matter. Yang Chen spread his hands to the side, as if to protect his companions. The guy said, hold your fervor. If you touch them, I will not be responsible for myself. Wang Qiani thought, I'm glad you have a shred of conscience. A guy came up, he was wearing shorts and a baseball cap, and he said, calm down, let's talk peacefully. The girl Wang Qiani threw in the pool came out of the pool. The girl angrily said, what's there to discuss? She threw me into the water. It won't end until that girl drinks water. Yang Chen asked, do you want her to drink water? The girl said, yes. Yang Chen went to the water refrigerator, but he took one water bottle from there. The guy threw the water bottle to Wang Chiani. Wang Chiani didn't expect it, but she caught the bottle. She opened the bottle and began to drink. At the same time, she said, Look how I drink. These words were meant for the girl she had earlier thrown into the pool. Wang Chiani said, Now that I drank water, this matter is solved, right? The girl was very angry. She could only say, You. Wang Chiani walked over to Yang Chen. She said, Look at his muscles. He can easily handle you. The guy was not happy with these words. He said, Didn't I tell you? When you are silent, you can score 99 points, but as soon as you open your mouth, the score immediately drops too. The girl who climbed out of the pool was already dry. She shouted angrily, Stop right there! The girl turned around and stepped aside. She said, I'll be right there. Yan Cheng's girlfriend said to him, Yang Chen let S just leave. Wang Chani said, What are you afraid of? Yang Chen can handle anything. Here Yang Chen confidently said, Right, I will deal with it. Let's ignore them and continue to have fun. Yang Chen and his girlfriends decided to stay. He said to his girlfriend, Come on, I will continue to teach you. She replied, Okay. Wang Chiani was already splashing in the pool at this time. After a couple minutes, an offended girl and her boyfriend came over. She pointed at Wang Chiani and said, This is her. You have to help me get revenge. She threw me into the water and I could have drowned. Wang Chiani unexpectedly saved the situation. She recognized the guy who came over. Wang Chiani asked him, Your taste is spoiled after my refusal. The guy good-naturedly asked her, Wang Chiani, I didn't recognize you. Tell me how we can solve this situation. Wang Chiani told the guy to side. She wanted to cheat on you and I stepped in to stop her. The guy was astonished and asked, What? His girlfriend started making excuses. Don't listen to her, she's lying. The girl pointed her finger at Yang Chen. She started to tell it was him who came up and started flirting with me. I told him I had a boyfriend, but he wouldn't leave. The guy got really angry. He started yelling at his girlfriend. Do you think I'm stupid? Wang Tianyi may be temperamental, but she never lies. The guy shoved his girlfriend aside with his hand. He said, stand aside. I'll deal with you later. The guy walked up to Yan Chen and said, let's deal with this man to man. Yang Chen replied, okay. Wang Tianyi intervened. She said, I was the one who threw her into the water. Don't bother other people. Then the boyfriend of the offended girl said, I'll give you a chance. See that obstacle course. If you can pass it faster than me, I'll apologize. But if you can't, you can crawl under my feet. Yang Chen replied, okay, I agree. He was determined. The water park created a specially challenging obstacle course for the guests. That's where the guys went. As they walked there, the girls shouted, Yang Chen, go! Suddenly, a girl with a microphone came up. She asked him, dear participant, may I ask what you do for a living? Yang Chen replied, I work as a cab driver. The girl with the microphone was to give the start of the obstacle course. She asked, okay, are you ready? Yang Chen replied, yes. The girl started counting. Three, two, one start. The boys pushed off the tiles on the ground and ran. First, Yang Chen overcame an obstacle course of cylinders on the water. 
The girl with the microphone exclaimed in surprise, Wow, he's really fast. Yan Cheng rushed forward with all his might. The girl was amazed, she exclaimed in surprise. How can a cab driver make such a move? Yang Chen's girlfriends cheered for him. They shouted Yang Chen. Yang Chen confidently passed the obstacle course in the form of rings hanging over the water. Next was a difficult test for the participants. They had to accelerate and pole vault over a high hurdle. Finally, Yang Chen ran to the finish line. There he was greeted with applause. A guy with a microphone asked, Yang Chen, you are the fastest participant. You were able to overcome all the tests in 1 minute and 21 seconds. That was amazing. Then Yang Chen cheerfully said, let us see if the second contestant can pass the test. Yang Chen was already standing with a medal on his chest. The guy with the microphone shouted, Okay, let's take a look at the next contestant. At this time, another participant was still just running. Everyone shouted to him, Go! Suddenly he tripped and fell. It was on an obstacle course of cylinders on the water. Wang Qian laughed at the guy's fall. She said, Ha 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 ha, this is so funny and ridiculous. The fallen guy was given a life preserver. In the pool, someone nearby wanted to help him. But the guy replied, Don't touch me. Yang Chen said to the fallen guy, You are so fast. Here, Yang Chen finished his sentence. You passed the test in one second. Congratulations. Yang Chen was approached by his girlfriend and said, Yang Chen, you are amazing. I didn't expect you to be so strong. The guy gave the girl his medal and said, Take this medal. You can exchange it for a prize. Thank you, said the girl. She kissed him. Just then, an angry Wang Qian walked over. She asked sharply, Why did you kiss him? The girl replied, this is my way of thanking him. Why are you so flustered? The loser guy was talking to Yang Chen. This test is no good. You are too fast. Do you dare to compete with me in the race? Yang Chen cheerfully replied, All right, but if I win, you will do whatever I say. Agreed? Wang Chiani came up. She said, He is a great rider. You will definitely lose. Yang Chen said, Don T. Worry. I am a professional race car driver. Car races were held outside the city. There was a special track there. The boyfriend of the offended girl had already come to the racetrack. Wang Chiani was also there. Yang Chen was not there yet. The guy asked Wang Chiani, That guy was scared. Why don't you call him? Wang Chiani replied, He is not a coward. It takes him a long time to get here. The guy hugged Wang Chiani and told her, I don't understand how you could fall in love with a cab driver. She said, Shut up. You can't compare with him. Just then a car pulled up. Yang Chen was in it. The offended girl's boyfriend said, Why the hell did you come in such a beat-up car? He clarified, Did you come after the end of your shift? Yang Chen replied, Stop talking nonsense. Let's get started. I want to go to bed early. Yang Chen Ye's opponent said, Let S make something clear. The one who wins does whatever he wants to the loser. Right? Yang Chen confirmed. Right. He thought to himself, I will use my magic driver skill. The guy offended by the girl said, Let's get started. There were cars and racers all around him. Wang Qiani got into the car with Yang Chen. He asked her, What are you doing here? The girl answered him, That's the rules. A woman must sit in the passenger seat. Yang Chen said, what meaningless rules? Okay, buckle up. The girl at the start realized the flag. She asked, ready? The girl lowered the flag and shouted, start! The cars sped off at breakneck speed. Wang Qiani asked excitedly to Yang Chen, why are we going so slowly? Yang Chen replied, where do we have to hurry? It's the turns that are important, not the speed on the road. He pressed the gas pedal. It's time to accelerate. Hold on tight. The cars were almost level with each other. Wang Qiani shouted to Yang Chen, we are almost at the finish line. Hurry up! He was annoyed by her shouting. Yang Chen asked, why are you shouting so loudly? Wang Qiani answered him, it's more fun that way. The guy said to her, I'm really bored with you. They pulled up to the turn sign. Yang Chen warned, get ready for the turn. The boyfriend of the offended girl was surprised by Yang Chen's riding style. He said, this guy is crazy. He speeds up on the corners. Yang Chen added gas and turned the steering wheel sharply. He was able to get around his opponent on the turn. Yang Chen's opponent was surprised. He said, no, how did he overtake me? Wang Qiani held onto the handle on the ceiling of the car. She said, Yan Chen, and you are good at drifting. Yang Chen was ahead of his opponent. Wang Qiani shouted to him, Yang Chen, you're amazing. Faster, even faster. Here he replied to Wang Qiani, didn't I tell you not to shout? The cars were running at almost even speed. An offended girl in the afternoon told her boyfriend, he's catching up with us. Hurry up. Her boyfriend said, don't worry, he won't catch up to us. I can win it with my eyes closed. The race continued. At one of the corners, Yang Chen's rival Yang Chen was able to pass him. Wang Qiani quacked angrily. Yang Chen, what the hell are you doing? Resorting to such a cheap ploy because you can't win. The cars were gradually approaching the finish line. Yang Chengla gripped the steering wheel tightly. He said to his companion, I'm going to overtake him at the last corner. Hold on tight. The girl asked him, how will you do it? He blocked the traffic lane. Yang Chen pressed the gas pedal sharply. 
His opponent would be surprised by such maneuvers, he shouted. Crazy. He came so close on the turn. This guy is definitely looking for trouble. Yang Chen was able to overtake his opponent on the turn. Wang Qiani felt bad due to the heavy overload and shouted, Ah, help! Rival Yang Chen was surprised at how he managed to fit into the corner and accelerate. Yang Chen won the race. His car came first to the finish line. After stopping, Yang Chen and his companion got out of the car. Wang Qiani was very tired after the race. The competition had worn her out. The losing guy's girlfriend consoled him. It's just an amateur race. Losing doesn't mean anything. He was just lucky to win. You're still very important to me. The losing guy was very annoyed by the defeat he shouted at the girl. It's all because of you. He slapped his companion across the face with his hand. If I hadn't stood up for you, I wouldn't have lost face in this race. Get out of the car, he commanded. The guy grabbed his date and pushed her out of the car. She was scared. What are you doing? I'm scared. They walked up to Yang Chen together. The guy shoved his girlfriend towards him. Get lost. Wang Chani was surprised by this behavior of her acquaintance. She asked, Why did you push her towards Yang Chen? Yang Chen told the losing opponent about his girlfriend, I don't like her. You can keep her. Then Yang Chen said to his opponent, Come on, it's not too late to kneel down and apologize. The other guy got angry. You want me to admit defeat? Here Yang Chen reminded, We agreed that if you lose, you will do whatever I want. Or are you afraid of losing your face in front of the people who hang out with you? His rival was annoyed. Who do you think you are, asking me to kneel down? Yang Chen asked him, Do you want to hit me? You're right, replied the man. Suddenly, Yang Chen took off his seat and ran towards his opponent. Yang Chen kicked him with all his might. Yang Chen's opponent could only kneel down after being hit. Yang Chen told him, It would be better if you stop this circus before I get angry. Suddenly, Yang Chen grabbed his opponent by the throat and warned him otherwise, You will die a horrible death. A crowd gathered around, people started shouting, Yang Chen, you let him go. Yang Chen was still very annoyed. He was surprised by the shouts of the crowd. He replied, What, do you want to fight with me? This is when Wang Qiani came over. She said to Yang Chen Dan to need to smear your hands from someone like him. Yang Chen let go of his opponent. The latter began to frantically recover his breath. Yang Chen's opponent rose to his feet. You're crazy, he shouted. But Yang Chen calmly replied, If you don't admit defeat, I'll show you what crazy means. Suddenly, the defeated opponent suddenly said, Do you even know who my father is? Wang Chiani intervened in the conversation. She said, Why are you acting like a three-year-old child? The guy said, I didn't say I'd call him. I'm just reminding you that this case isn't over. I will avenge this humiliation. Yang Chen asked, I even wonder who your father is. Then the guy said, My father is Chen Zaichen, the CEO of Dakin Company. Yang Chen added, This doesn't change anything. You just chickened out. The son of the company director said, Think what you want. I warned you, in three days you will face the consequences. Then the guy got into the car and drove away. What a coward you are, said Yang Chen after him. When Yang Chen wanted to get into the car, a girl approached him. Why are you looking at me? He asked her. She answered him, Now I belong to you, and I want to go with you. Yang Chen rudely replied to her, I'm not interested in you. The girl pleaded, Listen to me. Wang Qiani intervened in the conversation. She turned to the girl. Didn't you have any self-respect? The girl replied with tears in her eyes. But my ex-boyfriend said that according to the rules, I belong to Yang Chen. Wang Qiani rudely replied to her, He can say anything, do you really believe him? Get out of here. Wang Qiani opened the car door and got in. Yang Chen asked her, Why are you getting in again? She told him, I have to keep an eye on you so that no one steals you. Wang Qiani added, Let us go, didn't you say you wanted to rest today? Yang Chen asked her, Do you want to come to my house? She asked him, If you want to. Yang Chen said, No, I don't mind it. Wang Qiani asked him, Then why did you ask? All right, just take me home. The car with Yang Chen and his girlfriend sped off. They were on their way home. Half an hour later, they pulled up to a big house. The guy told her, we're here, get out. Wang Qiani got out of the car. The guy said to Wang Qiani, you look great, but it would be better if you dressed more modestly. The girl standing on the night street waved after the car with Yang Chen. Yang Chen said to himself, can take a couple more orders. We got an order for a cab from the big hotel. Yang Chen drove up to the ordering place. There he saw a young man. Yang Chen asked him, hello. Are you the one who ordered the cab? He said yes. The customer got into the car. Yang Chen thought he left the hotel upset. He probably had something wrong. After a while, they arrived at the place the customer said. It was a high-rise bridge. Yang Chen said, we have arrived at the bridge you pointed out. Where should I stop? Yang Chen and said, in the middle of the bridge? The stopping place surprised him. When the customer got out of the car, Yang Chen said, Dante, forget your things. Order our cab next time. The client said, next time, ha, huh? maybe in another life. Yang Chen said to himself, in another life, he's kind of not thinking about suicide. Just then, Yang Chen decided to get out of the car. His client had already stepped aside a little. 
Yang Chen shouted to the customer. Are you here to enjoy the Riverview? The client said quietly. Riverview and I'm not in the mood to enjoy anything. What's the point of living when life seems meaningless? Yang Chen asked the guy. Did you have a fight with your partner? He replied, it's not just a fight. He cheated on me. Yang Chen decided to cheer up his passenger. He said, if you have been cheated on, it is not your fault. Why blame yourself? I was cheated on too, but I didn't give up, but still young. Don't give up so easily. Then suddenly the client turned to Yang Cheng and said, your boyfriend cheated too. Yang Chen started to say yes, but look at me, I'm still. 31. Here Yang Chen thought and shrieked, what, guy? The guy standing at the railing of the bridge suddenly said, you're right, I suddenly feel enlightened. You can take me home. Yang Chen replied, I'm sorry, but my shift is over. You can call another car. The guy approached Yang Chen and said, Who will pick me up at this late hour? The guy started begging, Do me a favor, take me home. If I want to commit suicide again, it will be on your conscience. Yang Chen Yanchen replied, Where do you live? If it's on my way, I will take you. The unsuccessful suicide victim said, I live in Hailan. Yang Chen answered him, Good, it's not far. They both walked up to the car. Yang Chen said, get in the car. The drive went by very quickly. When they arrived at the right address, Yang Chen said, we have arrived. Then the guy said, handsome, let's go to my house and have some tea. Yang Chen replied, thank you, thank you, but I'm not thirsty. It's already late. I want to go home. The guy suggested let's exchange contacts then. Yang Chen told him no, get out of the car. The customer got out of the car dissatisfied. 12. Here Yang Chen heard a message from the system congratulations to the host for receiving a bad review. The system rewards you with 100 million virtual currency. Note: Virtual currency can only be spent to buy virtual goods, game skins, rewards, and the like. Yang Chen thought 100 million virtual currency. Only donations on streamers come to mind. The working day was over. Yang Chen returned to his villa. He went to his lounge where he had a large television set. To watch, he thought. Yang Chen turned on his smartphone. There he saw a beautiful girl who was streaming. Hello everyone, who likes my stream? Could you please send some gifts to support me? Yang Chen thought this girl is pretty cute. He sent her a gift in the form of a virtual rocket. The girl replied, Thanks for the rocket, secret star. Is this your first time here? You can order a song and I'll sing it for you. Yang Chen said, How about the lone swimmer? The girl answered him, Sure. No problem, wait a minute. The girl told all the viewers of the stream, don't swear. I have a new fan. I'm going to sing Lone Swimmer. Yang Chen told one of the stream viewers, I like this song. If you have something against it, you can leave. The girl thanked an audience member named Secret Star and said, I'm starting to sing a song. The viewers of the stream were amazed at how Yang Chen could donate 100,000 points. One of them said, I can't make that much money in a year. And he spent it in a second. Another user turned to Yang Chen and said, Big Brother, take me to work. I will work for 100,000 a year. A user named Smoking Alone said to Yan Chen, I admit that you are richer than others, but to me, 100,000 is nothing. I have already given her 500,000 worth of gifts. If I tell her not to sing, she won tea. Stream girl got 100 super rockets from user Smoking Alone. She told him, thank you, I love you. A girl saw that a user named Secret Star had sent her 1,000 super rockets. Yang Chen said, I need to step back. A girl said to user Secret Star, we can meet tomorrow. I'll buy you something. He told her, no. I'm just spending money for fun. It has nothing to do with you. The girl thought he's a big shot, sent a thousand super missiles and says it has something to do with me. Yang Chen turned to user Smoking Alone. How about we continue this round? A user named Smoking Alone nervously put out his cigarette. He said it's only 200, let's continue tomorrow night. Yang Chen asked him, why did you decide to continue tomorrow? Here, Yang Chen saw that he had a lot of messages on the app. A user named Sweetie wrote, bro, come to my stream, we can organize a live meetup. A user named Maturity Path wrote, Bro, I sing better than her. Come to my house, I can treat you to a meal or watch a movie together. Yang Chen also received tempting offers from other users. Yang Chen got up from the couch and said, <laughs> Oh, these streamers. Morning came, the sun illuminated Yang Chen's villa. He lay on the bed for a long time and did not want to get up. The sun shone through the window and fell on him. Then his phone rang. Hello, he said. He heard Yang Chen. It's your aunt. Your cousin's entrance exam results have arrived. Aunt told him she scored 610 points. Do you want to come with Zhao Fei Fei and help her cousin choose a university? Yang Chen was already sitting on the bed. He said, of course I will come today. By the way, I broke up with Zhao Fei Fei. She found a rich guy and left me. Auntie was surprised. What? How could she do that after all you've done for her family? Don't feel bad. I'll make your favorite sweet and sour ribs. The guy said, fine. I'll be right over. Yang Chen quickly arrived at his aunt's house. 
He knocked on the door. He was opened by his cousin. She immediately began to question him. Hello, Yang Chen. Mom said you broke up with Zhao Fei Fei. Is that true? Yang Chen confirmed. Yes, we broke up. Yang Chen walked into the room with his cousin. She said, This is great. I've never liked her before. I told you that Zhao Fei Fei is a terrible girl, but you didn't believe me. Then Auntie asked Su Fei, What are you talking about? Cousin continued to say, I have long said that Zhao Fei Fei is terrible. Now you see that I was right. Yang Chen said, Forget about her. I was told you scored 610 points. Is that true? He patted his cousin's cheek. The girl replied, Yes, but it's nothing special. Yang Chen said, This is excellent. You beat my entrance exam results. So, which university do you want to go to? The cousin at this time was pouring water from a pitcher into a glass. She said, I don't know yet. Could you give me some advice? The cousin held out a glass of water to Yang Chen. He asked her, What do you want to do in the future? She replied, I want to become a white-collar specialist. The guy told her many professions from this field will lead to office work. What industry do you want to work in? Cousin sat down on the couch and said, I haven't decided yet. Then suddenly the aunt walked into the room. She said to Yang Chen, I found a girl for you. She's 23 years old and a very talented presenter. I can set up a meeting if you want. The guy was annoyed. He said, Auntie, you are really picking up my bride fast. An aunt came up to her nephew with a smartphone. She said, You're already 25, and soon you'll be add her as a friend. Yang Chen replied to his aunt, I don't want to date anyone right now. The cousin whispered to Yang Chen Yu, You better agree or she will bother you every day. The aunt put her smartphone near her nephew's smartphone. The guy agreed. Okay, I'll add her. His aunt reminded him, don't forget to talk to her and I'll go cook. The cousin said to Yang Chen, open her picture and I'll tell you if she's a good girl or not. If she's a bad girl, I will tell you. The guy opened the picture and saw his familiar girl in it. He thought seriously, is that her? How small our world is. When cousin saw the picture, she said, she is definitely a conniving girl. What made you decide that? Asked the boy. The cousin started explaining, look at her pictures. She is showing off her bags or is in tourist spots. Trust me, she's definitely conniving. Just then the aunt came into the room and sternly said to Li Su Fei, Don't talk nonsense. The girl said to her aunt, I've only been home a few days and you're already starting to get annoying. The cousin turned to the guy. Yang Chen, I want to go to your place. Auntie continued angrily saying, How are you talking to me? Just wait. When I'm done talking, I will deal with you. The cousin replied to her, If I leave, I won't come back. The cousin said to Yang Chen, Take me to stay with you. He replied, you haven't made up your mind about the university. Just then, my aunt came into the room. She turned to Yang Chen. Don't listen to her. You better invite that girl to dinner. The aunt turned to her nephew. If you don't do it, I will get angry. Yang Chen answered her, All right, I will invite her to dinner. The guy said, But she's a talented presenter. Would I be able to ask her out? The aunt said cheerfully, Don't worry, I talked to her mom. She'll definitely come. The cousin took the smartphone in her hand and said to Yang Chen, Let me ask her out. I know a good way. The aunt came over and said sternly, Su Fei, if you mess up, I'll kill you. The girl replied to her aunt, You're busy cooking, better not get distracted. Three. Then suddenly the cousin said, looking at her smartphone, I sent her so many messages, but I only got heh. <sighs> Yang Chen laughed. Didn't you say you were good at this? Cousin replied, judging from these messages, I'm more convinced that she's a bad person. Be careful with her, got it? An aunt came into the room with a pot. She said, It's time to eat. Yang Chen walked over to the table together with his cousin. He said, wow, it smells so good. Auntie replied, I prepared an extra portion of ribs. When you leave, you can take them. The smartphone signaled that a message had arrived. The cousin picked up the phone and read Yang Chen. She said that she agreed to have dinner with you at the Bogale Hotel. It is too luxurious a place for a first date. My aunt intervened in the conversation. She said, it's not a big deal. You don't have to go. It's too expensive. Yang Chen said confidently, I have a good income. Don't worry, let us eat. Otherwise, the food is getting cold. Yang Chen was sitting in a restaurant. He was waiting for a girl. He looked at his smartphone and said, She said she would arrive at 7 p.m. I have been waiting for her for an hour. He waited a little longer and said, If you weren't going to come, you could have just said no. That's too rude. He texted a girl I've been waiting for you for an hour. Where are you? She texted him back. Sorry, my phone ran out of battery. I'm on my way over. You haven't left yet? The guy said irritably, Yes, I'm gone. You don't have to come back. He thought to himself, Why did I spend so much money on her last night? He looked at the dish on the table and said, What a pity. The food in this restaurant is not as good as auntie's. Yang Chen shouted, Waiter. A girl came over. She said, Sir, how can I help you? The guy said, Could you please warm up my food for me? The waitress was surprised and asked, What? Yang Chen's request was heard by the people at the next table, and they started to say, 
Did he really think he had entered a diner? If they don't agree, I won't come here again. Yang Chen explained his request to the waitress. This is the food that my aunt prepared, so I would like to ask you to heat it up. The waitress politely turned him down. Sir, I'm sorry we don't provide that service. Yang Chen said, Then I will take two bottles of the most expensive wine. Do you agree? The people at the middle table were surprised and started talking amongst themselves. I didn't realize he was so rich. This wine is worth tens of thousands. The waitress brought wine, took the food from Yang Chen and said, No problem, I'll cook everything for you. The guy was happy and said, Great. The girl Yang Chen was waiting for finally came in. She was with some man. It was the girl from yesterday's stream. Yang Chen thought, Why is she here? The guy was drinking wine and decided it's a good thing I didn't send her a picture of me. The girl noticed Yang Chen. She thought he still hasn't left. Yang Chen realized looks like my aunt sent her a photo. A man who was with a girl asked her, Is he your ex-boyfriend? She answered him, Remember the blind date I told you about? That's the guy. Such an answer interested the man. He said, Really? Then I should get to know him better. His companion said, Wait. A man walked over to the table where Yang Chen was sitting. He asked, Can I sit down? The guy said no. A man said to his girlfriend, You're here for a blind date, right? Right. I'll just observe from the side without disturbing you, Sun Shu. Don't put off such an important event. The girl replied to her companion, smoking alone. Don't tea joke like that. Let's go eat. Then the girl picked up her smartphone and saw that the time was 19 hours and 58 minutes. She told her companion it's already 8 p.m. Don't you have to go to the competition with Secret Star? Yang Chen heard this and rejoiced to himself. He thought, so this is him. He he, interesting. The guy recognized the man as yesterday's stream viewer. The man pointed his finger at the girl and asked, Yang Chen, you still want to go on a blind date with her? The guy replied, no, I don't see the point. The man and the girl rejoiced. He said, haha, good decision. A man was sitting at a table with his date. He asked her, so your blind date is canceled? She answered him, stop joking. I only agreed because his aunt and my mom are acquaintances. She insisted on it. Don't worry, I'll never fall in love with a guy like that, even if I've been single all my life. The man said, order whatever you want, I'll pay for it. The girl reminded him. By the way, do you really want to challenge the secret star? The man said with confidence. Don't worry, I've got 10 million on standby, I'll win for sure. The girl was amazed, wow. You're amazing. The waitress came over. She said to Yang Chen Yu, Sir, your food is ready. He told her thank you. Suddenly two girls walked into the restaurant. They were streaming. One of them was holding a smartphone. She walked over to the table where Yang Chen was sitting and asked, Brother, is this seat free? The guy thought another streamer. The girl asked, Can I sit down and talk to you? Yang Chen sharply replied, No. The streamer girl walked right up to Yang Chen. She said to him, Brother, you look very young. How old are you? Then she took his ear. Wow, your ears are so big. I want to touch them. They're so soft. Then the guy sharply threw the girl's hand away. He told her roughly, Don't touch me. If you continue, I will report you for sexual harassment. The girl was offended. She thought, what an arrogant guy. If it wasn't for the script of my stream, I wouldn't even approach you. The second girl started to whimper. Uh, brother, you're pretty rude. Yang Chen was surprised. He asked seriously, are you crying because of this? The girl told him, brother, we're just little streamers. Give us a break. Yang Chen calmed down and said, stop crying. What's your name and what platform do you stream on? The girl said, I am Zhou Jenyi. I'm a streamer on the Teasing Fish platform. Yang Chen took the wine glass and asked, do you need donations? The girl replied, sure, it's one of my sources of income. Yang Chen turned around and pointed his finger at yesterday S star streamer and said to the past girl, then fight her in the streamer battle, and I will help you. The girl stopped crying and began to say, brother, if you send me a donation, I will be grateful to you, but yesterday she had two big donators, it will be a failure. Yang Chen said confidently, if you want to earn donuts and win, start the battle and I will help you win. If you don't need them, then forget about it. Yang Chen said to the waitress, the bill please. She came over and said, Sir, the total amount is 259. The streamer girls who came in were surprised at the amount of the bill. They said 259,000. What did he order to get a bill like that? The waitress cheerfully explained. He ordered almost nothing. This amount is basically for two bottles of wine. One bottle costs 128. The weeping girl thought to herself, Someone who can afford such expensive wine will help me get rich. I can't miss such an opportunity. I will challenge her, she decided. The girl confidently approached the star of yesterday's stream. She asked her, Hello, your son Shu, right? She happily replied, Yes, are you my fan? Amateur streamer replied, No, I stream too and I'd like to challenge you. How would you like to fight in a battle of the streamers? Sun Shui said, Ha ha, do you want to challenge me? 
Then she pointed her hand at her companion and asked, Do you even know who this person is? Streamer Amateur asked, No, who is that? Then Sun Shu said he's my best donator smoking alone. A man asked an amateur streamer, What's your nickname? If I have time, I'll come over and make a donation. She replied embarrassed, No need, thank you. The amateur streamer walked up to Sun Shu and told her stop talking. Are you in or not? The latter laughed and said, Are you trying to poach my audience? Sun Shu turned to her companion elder brother. Will you help me? I can't lose in this battle. The man was flattered. He thought it's good that she knows who to turn to. The amateur streamer looked at Yang Chen. She was thinking, can we trust him? The guy was eating dinner at the same time. Sun Shu pointed at Yang Chen and asked the amateur streamer, Just don't it tell me that he asked you to challenge me. The man turned to the amateur streamer. He did not take Yang Chen seriously. The man said he looks like a normal office worker. Did you seriously believe him? You look pretty, but I didn't expect you to be so stupid. Streamer Sha Amateur said, Why get personal? Just say do you agree or disagree. The man turned to his companion son. Let's let her fight us. I can easily bankrupt this guy if I want to. Sun Shu said, Okay, I accept your challenge. The amateur streamer said, Then I expect you at 10 p.m. An amateur streamer approached her companion who was holding a smartphone. She asked her, Where's that handsome guy? She said he left. The lover became agitated. She said, I have already started the battle, but why did he leave? He didn't deceive us, right? Smartphone girl said, I don't think so. Let's go, we've collected enough material for today. The amateur streamer said, Okay, but I'm so nervous. Evening descended upon the city. Yang Chen slept in his villa. The guy was lying on the bed in a restless sleep. He was holding a smartphone in his hands. Suddenly he woke up and shouted, I overslept. He looked at his smartphone and saw that the streamer contest had already started. They've already started the battle, he thought. Sun Shui hosted your stream. She greeted the guests with the words, Welcome to my stream. She turned to the user Arcane Star and told him, Finally, you're here. The girl was sure that if Arcane Star was here, the opponent would definitely lose. This user started donating to an amateur streamer. The amateur streamer was very happy. She said, Wow, thank you. Sun Shu was surprised, brother. Why are you giving gifts to her and not to me? Sun Shu pleaded with her patron smoking alone. Help me, I can't lose. Amateur streamer said, Thank you, Arcane Star. May I ask why you started giving gifts to me? Yang Chen, who was hiding under the nickname Arcane Star, started writing a reply, It doesn't matter. Start singing the Lone Warrior song. As long as you sing it, I'll send gifts. The girl got excited and said, Sure, I'll sing it right now. She began to sing Brave Lonely Warrior. An amateur streamer asked Arcane Star, What song would you still like to hear? Yang Chen answered her, In Baogale Hotel, you flirted with many people. Demonstrate how you do it. The streamer was amazed, so it was you? She asked. Viewers of the stream began to wonder, Did she meet someone at the Baogel Hotel? Are you seeing someone? The streamer replied, Don't be silly. I accidentally met him at the Baogel Hotel. The amateur streamer continued to explain. He asked me to fight her. By the way, he is very handsome and charismatic. Sun Shu suddenly guessed that it was Yang Chen. Didn't Mom say he was just an ordinary employee of the company? How could he be so rich? Yang Chen, sitting at the smartphone, said, Smoking alone, keep sending gifts. I will give you a little head start. Smoking alone wrote a post I won't be giving her any more gifts. An amateur streamer said to the viewers of the stream, User Arcane Star sent me a photo. I'm going to show it to you now. Smoking alone wrote, Brother, we don't need to go that far for a woman. Let's stop together, I will deliberately lose to you. Come to room 1206 of the Baogheil Hotel. I'll make sure Sun Shui meets you there. Agreed? Sun Shu abruptly told the stream viewers, Don't believe her? It's definitely a fake. They're so evil. They're trying to destroy me. Sun Shu looked at her smartphone and said, This photo is definitely fake. Standing behind was her man with the nickname Smoking Alone. The man walked right up to the streamer. He told her, Why assert yourself with explanations to these losers? I can win over beautiful women while you guys can only fantasize about it. He asked, Why do you underestimate me? Sun Shu shouted, You're crazy. Let me go. The man grabbed her and said, I have given you many gifts, shouldn't I have privileges? Streamer yelled, let go of me and turn off the broadcast. The man replied, no way, I want everyone to know. Secret star, see this, your blind date girl is in my arms. I can do whatever I want with her. Then suddenly the door of the room opened. A group of people entered the room. They were wearing suits and dark dreams. A man asked them rudely, what is going on? The men in black grabbed the man. What are you doing? asked the girl. The law enforcers replied, we received a message that this man is embezzling public money. We need to send him for questioning and you must help. One of the men in black said, turn off the stream and follow us. 
Late at night, Yang Chen's phone rang. He said, Auntie, why are you calling so late? Aunt excited said, Yang Chen, what's going on? My friend said her daughter was arrested by the police. What's really going on? Yang Chen began to explain. The thing is that her main fan was embezzling government money and that she, why they were arrested, don't worry about me. The aunt replied, okay, then rest. I won't bother you anymore. The next day, Yang Chen returned to his job as a cab driver. He received a call and arrived. On the phone, he said to the client, hello, I am waiting for you near the apartment complex. Then he gets a call and the girl says, hello, driver, I'll be right over. Could you please wait a moment? Yang Chen replied, sure, I will wait for you. Ten minutes later, Yang Chen called her back. Hello, where are you now? The client answered, I don't know where I am. Yang Chen got out of the car. He asked on the phone, Miss, where exactly are you right now? She answered him, I don't know. I've been walking for more than ten minutes, but I can't find the exit. What should I do? Yang Chen clarified, Miss, could you tell me which building you are next to? She replied, I am next to building number and my house is number I have a seminar today. I can't be late. Yang Chen saw a girl sitting on the ground with a backpack beside her. He asked her, Miss, were you the one who called the cab? The girl timidly replied, Yes, that's me. Yang Chen walked up to her and said, Don't cry. Since you are in a hurry, I will help you. She replied, Thank you. Yang Chen got into the car with his client. The guy said to the customer, Put your seatbelt on. We are now going to Minhai Hotel. The girl said, Thank you for your help. A customer said previously, Drivers would wait no more than three minutes and then cancel the order. The guy replied, don't blame the other drivers, who knew you'd get lost in an apartment complex? The girl introduced herself. My name is Yuan Zhao, an author of web novels. I am terrible at navigating the terrain. Yang Chen asked her, what is your pen name? I will sign and support you when I have time. The girl cheerfully replied, my pen name is Zhao Lan. I write love novels that you as a guy probably won't like. The guy thought to himself, good thing I have 80 million more virtual currency left. Gradually, they arrived at their destination. The girl said to Yang Chen Yu brother, Thank you for your help. The client said I will contact you in chat when I need help. If you are free, please pick me up on your way back. Yang Chen said, sure, goodbye. The girl got out of the car and said goodbye. Yang Chen subscribed to her. Her page had 50,000 subscribers and 36 million views. The girl was on time for the seminar. There were a lot of people there. The hostess said thank you for coming. Then she introduced Sil Jian, the pseudonym of Gongzi Zhuan, a guru in web novels. The young writer heard a beep from her smartphone. Looking at the smartphone, the girl was surprised. She shouted, ah! She received a message. Congratulations on the gift of Golden Master 100,000 Yuan. The writer guessed who had sent her a present. She said, are you Brother Yang? But how can an ordinary cab driver be so rich? Two, she messengered a question, Brother Yang, were you the one who sent me the donation? He replied, yes, I just read your novel and it's pretty good. Yang Chen clarified it's a pretty popular drama about idols. The girl cheered, ha 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 ha. The people sitting next to her in the seminar turned around to her, Yuan Zhao. Why are you so happy? The writer replied to them, I got the golden master. The girl sitting next to me looked at their smartphones and said, Wow, this is really a gold master. The workshop host said, Since you got such a big donation, it means your work is very good. Why not share your writing experience, Yuan Zhao? The girl replied, I'm just a little author. That support was from the driver who brought me here. He must have liked my work and decided to support me. The presenter said I've read your work and it's not worth spending 100,000 on it. You'll collude with that driver. The writer replied, No, if you don't believe me, I can call him. The girl dialed Yang Chen's number on her phone. The guy picked up the phone and said, Hello. The writer asked him, Brother Yang, can you explain why you supported me? He quickly answered her, Why do I have to explain to you? Someone doesn't believe you? I'll donate 10 times more to you. Let's see what they say. The girl only had time to shout, Hello. The female participants were surprised have cab drivers become so rich. Look, a notice came that Yuan Zhao donated 10 million. There was a message on the smartphone that the writer had received a gift of 10 million. The girls asked the writer Yuan Zhao, Who was that man? She replied, It was an ordinary cab driver who brought me here. The writer's imagination is running wild. Maybe he's the son of a rich family who's hiding it. There are plenty of novels with that kind of plot. When a certain amount of time passes, he comes back to inherit the property. Yuan Zhao, the seminar presenter, came over. This is bad. The presenter added, relying on some rich guy to increase his popularity. The writer replied, I already said I don't know why he did it. Then the girl added, and you don't believe me. I'm leaving. The girls present at the seminar were repeating Yuan Zhao. The presenter said, let's continue. Speaking of which, your popularity will not grow in one day with this kind of manipulation. The girl ran outside and called Brother Yang. Where are you? Yang Chen picked up the phone. What's going on? 
Why are you crying again? The writer complained to him. They say I'm trying to increase my popularity in an unfair way. The girl tearfully listened to the cab driver. It seems that my support has caused you trouble. Where are you? The writer replied, I am standing at the entrance of Minhai Hotel. Yang Chen jumped into the car and said, Okay, I will come over now. When he pulled up to the building, he saw the writer there crying. She got in his car and said they don't believe me and think it's all a setup. No one wants to hear us explain. The guy reassured her, Don't cry. Let them think whatever they want. You have my support, and that's what counts. The girl rejoiced. Right, you're right. Why bother with their opinion? <laughs> Thanks for the advice. Yang Chen said, let me take you home. The car sped off. While sitting in the car, Yuan's girlfriend asked the protagonist a question. She asked if he was the son of a rich family that was hiding it. Yang Chen calmly replied that he was an ordinary cab driver. The guy also added that he had a lot of money to spend recklessly. Yuan clarified with the guy whether he is just a rich man with a lot of money. The protagonist replied that he was. After the car ride, Yang Cheng drove the writer Yuan to her home. The girl thanked the guy and said goodbye to him. The main character left. Yang Chen's cell phone rang. He saw that it was his friend calling. The guy asked his friend where he was and if he had already arrived at Heiqing Restaurant. A friend invited the protagonist to a restaurant and said he had a surprise for him. Yang Chen arrived at the right restaurant very quickly in his car. Without wasting a second of time, the protagonist ran with all speed to the entrance of the restaurant. A guy ran in and said hello to the cashier at the restaurant. He said she was even more beautiful. The girl replied that the main character was heartless. The cashier told the guy that there were three of his classmates upstairs. She said she would take him there. The protagonist realized why his friend Zhou Wen said he had a surprise for him. Yang Chen told the cashier that she was busy and he could go himself. He asked which room the guests were in. The cashier said the guests were in room 203. The protagonist thanked her. Yang Chen quickly went up to the second floor and found the door of the right room he knocked. A guy named Zhou Wen opened the door. He greeted the protagonist. Yang Chen told his friend that he could meet him upon his return. Zhou said he had an unscheduled interview. The main character asked his friend what the other two guys in the room were. The guys ran up to Yang Chen and shouted that they had a surprise for him. The main character told the fun guys that the two of them must have been dumped by girls or they wouldn't have come back. The guests were very surprised they couldn't understand how the main character knew that they had been dumped by the girls. One guest said he had bad memories. Another guy indicated that there would be no talk of women tonight. A girl came in with a crate and told the guys she'd brought them food and drinks. The protagonist turned to his friends and suggested that they all have a friendly drink. Yang Chen raised a toast and told his friends that they were drinking to their health. They raised their glasses with him. Zhou Wen said sadly that his girlfriend broke up with him because he didn't earn enough. Another guy said she broke up with her girlfriend because of her mother. The third guy said his girlfriend wants him to buy a house and marry her or they'll break up. Yang Chen said that even though he had money, his girlfriend was cheating on him. Zhou asked the protagonist why he works as a cab driver since he invested in the Baoqing Hotel. Yang Chen replied simply that he loved his job. The main character asked his friends if they had found jobs. One guy said he was the only one looking for one so far. Yang Chen asked with interest to his friend if he wanted to work in an advertising campaign. The guy said yes. He said that he used to plan a lot of different events and holidays. The protagonist poured beer into a friend's glass and said he was taking it to his ad campaign tomorrow. Yang Chen told the guy that if he came in for an interview, they would work together. Zhou Wen asked the protagonist if he too could apply to his company for a job. Another guy told Yang Chen not to forget about him as well. At that time, a streamer girl was reporting from the streets of the city. She said that this street sells the best food. The streamer holding a smartphone said she often comes here for a snack. A girl was filming a report. She approached the restaurant where the main character was. The streamer asked her followers for more likes. She said she'd come over and show the car up close. The girl said that although the car looks ordinary, it has very impressive performance. The car goes to 100 kilometers per h in two and a half seconds. At this time, the main character told his friends this time he would pay the bill at the restaurant, but next time they would pay. One of the friends thanked Yang Chen and told him he was the best. Friends of the main character went outside. They noticed that near the restaurant is a luxury car. Yang Chen wanted to tell his buddies that it was his car, but he didn't have time. The streamer asked the guy if he knew which was the biggest flaw in the car. The protagonist was very surprised. He asked the girl excitedly what could be the disadvantage. The streamer lady said that this car, like other similar cars, has a big problem. Zhou Wen intervened in the conversation. He said that perhaps the problem was the high fuel consumption. The girl replied that people who bought a rich car would not worry about fuel consumption. Yang Chen asked the streamer what the car's flaw was. The girl replied that the car has poor air conditioning. The passenger in the front seat would start to undress to be cooler because of the heat. Such seductive words from the girl amused the protagonist very much. The streamer asked the guy if they were also graduates. Yang Chen told her that they had graduated last year. 
The girl was very surprised. She suggested to the guys that she add them to a separate chat room to hang out together later. The main character told his friends to order a car. The friend asked him what about his car. Zhou Wen interrogated Yang Chen where his car was now. The main character said they needed another driver, he pointed to his car. The main character's friends and the streamer girl were very much surprised. Yang Chen told friends that he was speaking in complete earnest with the key fob he used to open the door in the car. The friends encircled the guy and told him cheerfully that he was very rich. Yang Chen told his friends that he had sent another car for maintenance in the afternoon. He also added that he was not bragging. The guys got very excited they shouted to the main character that they were very happy for him. One of his friends told the protagonist that he would be joining his company tomorrow. At that time a cab pulled up then the main character said goodbye to his friends. The streamer asked Yang Chen to add her to the chat room. The guy replied that he would call a driver and go home. Immediately the girl cheerfully suggested to the guy that she should drive him. The protagonist asked with a chuckle to the girl if it would be hot inside the car. She asked him to let her broadcast from the car. The guy agreed he opened the car door and told the girl to get in. The girl behind the wheel told subscribers that she was inviting them to experience the sensation of driving a luxury car. The protagonist was startled to ask the girl if she was a good auto driver. The streamer girl told the guy he could trust her, she's a great driver. Yang Chen said thoughtfully to the girl to take him to Bingjian District. The girl told her followers that the guy lives in the Bingjian District. The villas there cost over a hundred million. Very soon they reached the right neighborhood. There was a huge archway near the entrance. The guy under the arch indicated with his hand to the girl where they should go next. The streamer asked the protagonist where exactly to go. Yang Chen said that they should go to villa number one, where there would be a bridge and they should stop there. A girl drove up in a car to a luxurious building. She asked if it was his villa. The guy answered in the affirmative. The streamer told the main character that she was thirsty. She asked him for some water. Yang Chen got out of the car and said that he lives alone so he doesn't invite other people over. The main character thanked the girl for giving him a ride. He told her to go home. But the streamer couldn't understand why the guy didn't pay attention to her. After that, the girl decided to stretch the front of the dress to expose her breasts. The girl looked at the guy and asked if he really believed he didn't want to ask her out. The main character told the streamer to come back as he wanted to rest. The girl looked after the guy and thought that he was really ignorant. The streamer reached out to her subscribers. She said she would show them the neighborhood. From the viewers she asked for likes and support. The security guy came over. He asked the girl which villa she was staying in. The streamer said she was giving the owner of villa number one a ride. The security guard told the girl to leave and that no trespassers were allowed on their property. The girl left. The girl went outside the gates of the elite neighborhood and she didn't like that the guard thought he was the boss there. The streamer complained to subscribers that because of the security guard they couldn't take a walk in the elite neighborhood. At that time, the girl got a call from her employer. He called her Li Qingning and said he was giving her one last chance. If the streamer beats her competitor today, she will have her contract renewed. If Li Qingning loses, then they will break her contract. The girl replied that she understood everything. The main character was sitting in his villa. Suddenly a message arrived on his smartphone. Li Qingning said that she has a battle with Mei Xiaona today at 11 o'clock. She asked her followers to help her. Users began to write that defeating Meng Xiaona will not be easy since she has more than 10 million subscribers. Yang Chun decided to start his own company with streamers since they are now at the top of the income. He decided to contact the girl after she loses. Mei Xiaonai said that a normal battle would be very boring. She said that if she loses, Li Qingning can ask her for anything if Mei loses, Li Qingning will jump 10 times. Afterward, Mei Xiaonai told her followers to support her. Users started texting Li Qingning that if she made 10 jumps they would send her a rocket. The streamer shouted out her rival for not thinking she was cool for humiliating someone. At this time Li Qingning received a message from her boss he told her that she must win. The streamer couldn't understand why her subscribers were acting this way and what she had done wrong. At this time a user named Secret Star sent a girl a reward called Carnival. She asked him not to send gifts. The main character texted the streamer that she couldn't bear to watch her being bullied. Li Qingning almost cried and asked why users were insulting her. She can't stand it anymore. Streamer Li told a user named Secret Star that she could sing for him. She also added that 70% of her gifts go to her boss. The main character wrote to the streamer that he just wanted to support her. Let her rival Mei lose and jump. Thanks to the main character's help, streamer girl Li won the contest. After that, streamer Li turned to Mei Xiaona and told her to jump if she lost. Mei said that she would do as she promised. Mei started jumping and was watched live by users. As the girl bounced, the camera was turned to her slightly bare breasts. Mei received a message that her stream contained sexual content. Her account was permanently blocked. The main character had a lot of fun for him. Everything that happened was amazing. The next day, the protagonist stopped by to pick up his friend. He heard on the news that it rains heavily every century in Yuzhou City. 
causing many people to suffer. A friend of the protagonist spotted his car and told him to pull up in front of it. The guy asked Yang Chen if he really works on this car. The protagonist replied that this car was not just for his job. He invited a friend to get in. The guy told Yang Chen that he had a luxury car and was very successful. After that, the protagonist, along with a passenger, drove up to the company's building. The company manager ran up to the car and said that Yang Cheng could have called him and not come in person. The protagonist told the manager that his classmate wants a job with the company. The manager said hello to the guy and told him to come to him if he needed anything. The guy gave his name as Li Zhenyuan. After they all entered the building, the manager called the elevator for the guests. The manager then invited the protagonist and Li Zhenyuan into the elevator. A friend asked Yang Chen why the manager was so polite to him. The protagonist replied cheerfully to his friend that he had recently bought the building. Li Zhenyuan was very much surprised by this answer. He couldn't believe that his friend owned this building. The guy asked the protagonist how he could buy a building worth several billion. Yang Chen just said it was his building. Yang Chen told his friend that if anyone bullies him, he should go to him or the manager. The secretary in the office greeted the protagonist when he came in. Yang Chen introduced all his employees to their new colleague, Li Zhengyuan. The protagonist demanded that his subordinates organize a workspace for his friend. Yang Chen told his friend that he had to go and he was going to work. Li Zhenyuan thanked him. When the protagonist left the building, he received a call. It was Yuan Zhao. A girl asked her boyfriend to pick her up at 7 p.m. She planned to go to a classmate's birthday party. She also asked the guy to dress well. The protagonist asked Yuan why he should dress well since he is not her boyfriend but only a driver. Yuan insistently asked the protagonist to pretend to be her boyfriend. The guy agreed with her. He told the girl to think of it as compensation for the trouble he had caused her. The protagonist drove as fast as possible to the apartment complex where Yuan's girlfriend was waiting for him. The girl asked him on the phone how he was able to earn money for an expensive car at his job as a cab driver. Yang Chen drove up to the girl and said that he picked the best car since he had to pretend to be her boyfriend. Yuan told the guy that his car was awesome. The protagonist assured the girl that no one would bully her at her classmate's reunion. The girl happily agreed. She decided that everyone would respect her when they saw her in such a car. After that, the protagonist, accompanied by a girl, arrived at the restaurant. Yang Chen, together with the girl, approached the table. The former classmates greeted Yuan Zhao. A classmate asked Yuan Zhao what kind of guy came with her now. The girl introduced the main character to everyone. A classmate said to Yuan that her boyfriend looked amazing. Afterward, a classmate asked Yuan why she didn't say she had found a boyfriend. Yuan told her girlfriend that she only recently started dating Yang Chen and didn't have time to tell her. Yang Chen told the Yuan girl that he had worked very hard to win her for a long time and they would never break up. Girlfriends were surprised by such behavior of the protagonist. They said that he put them in an uncomfortable position. At this time, the door to the restaurant room opened and another customer came in. One of the girls greeted the guy who entered very cheerfully. The girl introduced her boyfriend named Wang Tianyi. She said that they will get married at the end of the year. All the other girls clapped and said they were congratulating their girlfriend. Afterward, everyone poured wine into glasses and got ready to celebrate. The girl called her friend Xiao Li and asked what her boyfriend does for a living. Xiao replied that Wang Tianyi's family was a seafood wholesaler. The girl said surprised to Xiao Li that her boyfriend was quite impressive. After that, the girl asked Yuan Zhao what her boyfriend was doing. Wang's boyfriend said to the main character that he looked very good. He said that Yang Chen's outfit was expensive. Yang Chen replied that he bought his clothes secondhand, usually dressed simpler since he works as a cab driver. The Xiao girl asked the protagonist how he was able to win over Yuan since she has high standards. Another girl recalled that Yuan Zhao endorsed her book and got a million views. Xiao was very surprised. She asked Yuan how she could spend so much money on a book. The protagonist said that it was he who supported the writer's book, not she herself. He sent Yuan many gifts so that she would notice his sincerity. Writer Yuan Zhao said that it's impossible to resist someone who is so generous to love. Wang's boyfriend asked the protagonist suspiciously if he really makes a lot of money working as an ordinary cab driver. Yang Chen said that when wooing a girl you should be generous, it shows his love for Yuan Zhao. In response, Wang agreed that it wasn't that much money. The restaurant manager came into the booth and asked Wang to move his car as it was blocking the driveway. Wang said that he had asked earlier to reserve a parking space for him. When he arrived there was no space, so he left the car wherever he could. The protagonist gave the receptionist the keys and told the manager to put Van's car in his place. Yang Chen explained to Wang that there was a seat reserved for him, but when the protagonist arrived then the manager gave the seat to him. Wang asked the protagonist with surprise if he really owned the sports car that took his place. The protagonist explained that he came in a sports car since Yuan Zhao was going to her girlfriend. Yang Chen usually drives a more modest car. Xiao Li's girlfriend told Yuan Zhao not to hide who her boyfriend was. Yuan said, as if nothing had happened, that her boyfriend really was a cab driver. She added that she drove to the author's meeting in the boyfriend's car. The girlfriend asked incredulously that there was no way the cab driver could be so rich. 
The guy approached the protagonist and said he wanted to work at the same company as him. Wang said that it happens that people rent cars to show off to girls. Wang then turned to Yuan and told her that she should be careful not to be deceived. The girl replied that she was sure her boyfriend was being sincere with her. Wang asked the protagonist how much he spent on his car. He asked which dealership he had bought it from. Yang Chen told Wang to call the most popular dealership himself. Wang replied cheerfully that he had forgotten the number of the dealership. He suggested that the protagonist call it himself. Without thinking long, Yang Chen took out his phone and started dialing the number of the car dealership. The representative of the dealership greeted the protagonist and asked if he had any problems with the car. Yang Chen said he had a friend named Wang Tianyi who was interested in buying a sports car. The protagonist put the phone on speaker mode. The car dealer answered that he didn't know the customer named Wang Tianyi. Yang Chen cheerfully and politely thanked the car dealer for his concern. There was an oppressive, unpleasant silence at the table. No one said anything. At that time, the receptionist came in. The protagonist asked the girl if they still hadn't moved his car. She replied that they dared not drive the protagonist's car because it was very expensive. Yang Chen said that even if the manager scratched his car, he wouldn't blame him. After that, the main character said they had to go back with the girl. He thanked her for her hospitality. Yuan apologized to her girlfriend for not having time to prepare a gift for her. Xiao Li said that everything is fine, and she's even happy that her girlfriend just came to her birthday party. In parting, Yuan told the girl that they would see each other next time. At that time, the manager and a waitress came in. They brought drinks on a tray. The manager said it was the main character who bought all the guests' drinks. Then the manager apologized to Wang Tianyi for the incident with his parking space. Wang replied that the parking space was given to the protagonist because he drives a sports car. The manager explained that Yang Chen is the second largest shareholder of Baoking Motel. For this reason, he has priority for parking. The protagonist ordered that the number of parking spaces be increased. Wang Tianyi was very surprised he couldn't believe that an ordinary cab driver was the second largest shareholder. Recovering Wang asked that the manager pass on his thanks to the protagonist for the drinks. At the same time, the main character brought the girl Yuan to her apartment complex. The girl sitting in the car cheerfully suggested to the guy that he come over to her house. The protagonist hugged his girlfriend and told her to concentrate better on writing the novel. The Yuan girl waved goodbye after the departing protagonist. The main character in the evening was busy with his job as a cab driver. He arrived on a call. Yang Chen was sitting in a car outside the building he called customers and said he had arrived at the appointed place. Five minutes later, the guy called again and told the customers that he was waiting for them. The customers answered that they would be right there. Fifteen minutes later, a young couple with a suitcase approached the car. The girl asked the protagonist how long it would take him to reach his destination. Yang Chen replied that it would take them 45 minutes. The guy got excited. He told the driver that they had to get there in 30 minutes. After that, the guy asked Yang Chen grudgingly why they had stopped. The protagonist replied that the traffic light was red. The customer demanded to drive on. Yang Chen replied to his customers that he wanted to live. A guy asked why the driver talks to his passengers like that. The protagonist replied to the customers that if it had been another driver in his place, he would have canceled the order. The guy said angrily that he's giving the main character a bad review and a complaint for his horrible attitude. Ahead, a sign lit up warning that there was a roadblock. The protagonist stopped the car because there was another car in front. Customers in the salon asked angrily why they were stopping again. Yang Chen's patience ran out and he angrily commanded his customers to get out of the car. The guy said irritably that he couldn't even get another cab in this place. The protagonist decided not to wait any longer. He got out of the car and went to the back door. Yang Chen opened the back door in the car and commanded the customers to get out. Police officers at the roadblock approached the vehicle and asked what was going on here. The girl pointed to the main character and said that this driver has a bad attitude towards customers. Yang Chen calmly replied to the police officers that he had a camera in his cabin and could watch the tape. The police watched the video and asked the customer how he could demand the driver to run a red light. The guy apologized and said he was being rude. The police officer then suggested to the driver and customers that they should just apologize to each other and forget about the whole thing. The guy said he was a VP of the company and wouldn't apologize to the cabbie. The policeman commanded the driver to give the luggage to the customers and be free himself. As he was leaving, Yang Chen wished his client would never make it on time. The system congratulated the guy with a new negative feedback he received shares of the security company. Now the protagonist has an opportunity to call guards from the firm to solve problems. Yang Chen thought that it would be very excessive to send guards to deal with troublesome customers. The protagonist gets a call from his job that there has been a complaint against him. The boy was surprised and angry when he heard this. He stopped in the middle of the street. Yang Chen explained that he had a video from the cabin that showed what really happened. The girl from the cab service asked him to send her the video. The protagonist asked the girl to go out to dinner with him when she was free. She said she would contact him. Yang Chen thought happily to himself that he had invited the customer service girl over. 
The next day, the protagonist arrived at the firm's building where he would receive the stock. The receptionist led the way into the office and introduced Yang Chen to manager Chu. The manager shook the protagonist's hand and said he was the largest shareholder in their company at such a young age. The manager slipped the protagonist a stock transfer document. Yang Chen only had to sign the contract. At this time, the protagonist's phone rang in his pocket and he got distracted. The security guard at the housing complex reported that the main character's house had been vandalized. He asked the guy to come as soon as possible. Yang Chen looked at manager Chu and said that he would need his help. An hour later, the protagonist, accompanied by guards, arrived at his housing complex. A guard ran up and greeted Yang Chen. He said that the main character's house couldn't be sold until the outsiders left. Yang Chen told the guard not to worry and asked where the people who were interfering with the sale were. The guard pointed to a group of armed hooligans sitting at the door of the house. After that, the protagonist, accompanied by guards, walked towards the doors. Yang Chen commanded the guards to grab the hooligans sitting outside the house. The hooligans were frightened after they were captured and begged to be released. The leader of the gang begged the protagonist to spare them. He said they were paid money to destroy the house. Yang Chen asked the leader who sent him. The bully replied that he had been sent by Zhang Hengji. The protagonist told the hooligan that if they painted over the graffiti, he would not prosecute them. The bullies replied to the guy fearfully that they were going to do it all right now. Yang Chen thought that he had already handed over the evidence of the company's criminal activities to Yao Wushui Yong, but no action was taken. The protagonist prepared to solve the problem. The protagonist, accompanied by guards, arrived at Zhang Hinjin's house. One of the guys in the house asked Yang Chen unhappily what he was doing here. The protagonist replied to the guy that he should know why he was here. The guy angrily asked Yang Chen if he knew what he was doing. The protagonist asked the guards to bring the detained hooligan. The bully fearfully testified that they wanted to destroy the house on Zhang Henzi's instructions. The guy tapped the bully with his foot and said he was useless to him. Zhang Henzi told the protagonist that his company has been cooperating with the security firm for more than 10 years. Yang Chen took out a folder of documents. He said their cooperation was over. The guy provided a document that the security firm was terminating their contract. Zhang asked the protagonist who he thought he was when he talked about the end of the collaboration. Yang Chen said confidently that it was the end. Another man present said they had just renewed the contract for 10 years. It would cost a lot to unilaterally terminate it. Yang Chen said that there is a clause in the contract that terminates if the firm does something illegal. Zhang's company can be prosecuted for any illegal acts. The man asked if the main character thought they would ever go bankrupt. The protagonist reached into his pocket for his smartphone. He told the man that they were committing illegal acts. Yang Chen showed the interlocutor a video on his smartphone. The man was very surprised and did not understand where the protagonist got this information. The man angrily and excitedly asked the protagonist where he got the compromising information. Yang Chen sat down on the couch and cheerfully told the man and the guy that they better get ready for jail. The man turned to Butler Hong and told him to contact Mr. Shue for help. The man frightenedly promised that he would buy back the shares ten times the price if Shue would help him. The protagonist was interested and alarmed by what he heard. He thought that Shue belonged to the Shue Inong family. The butler asked the main character if his name was Yang Chen. The guy asked the butler who he was. The butler said he works for Shue Yong. He was authorized to talk to Zhang Yawu about buying back the shares. He planned to wait until the stock sale was over, and then publicize the evidence of the family's illegal activities. After the protagonist came in person, the butler can retire. The man shouted fearfully after the butler that he couldn't just walk away and leave him. After that, the man asked Butler Hong to call Mr. Shui for help. After that, the man approached the main character's guards. He said he would pay them three times as much if they beat up Yang Chen. The boy shouted loudly to the guards did they not hear his father's word. After that, several cars drove up to the house and people started coming out. The group of people headed inside the building where the main character was now. The girl asked if Yao Wu's company would be destroyed now. The guy answered that it should have been destroyed a long time ago because of their criminal activities. A man approached the protagonist and offered to negotiate. Yang Chen said he doesn't negotiate with criminals. The doors opened and Chu's manager walked in, accompanied by guards. The man asked manager Chu not to make any noise, or the neighbors would think that Yao Wu's company had done something wrong. He offered to sit down and talk. Manager Chu said he has proof of all Yao Wu company's crimes and will release them to the media soon. Afterwards, the manager asked the protagonist if he was doing well. The man was surprised. He asked manager Chu why he was being so nice to Yang Chen. The manager cheerfully announced that Yang Chen was the new major shareholder of their security company. The man was very much astonished. The manager added that Yang Chen had gotten 67% of the shares and he now controlled the company. The guy realized it was over for him and collapsed to his knees exhaustedly. The guy apologized to the protagonist and said he was only 28 years old and didn't want to go to jail. The protagonist replied to the guy that everything will now depend on his fate, whether he gets a chance or not. 
Two girls entered the room. They cheerfully greeted the protagonist. The guy told the girls to tell the police station what happened that day. The protagonist waved to the boy Zhang Henzi and wished a happy life for him and his father. The girl hugged the main character joyfully and said he was the best. After that, the protagonist left the building. He was accompanied by a girl and a security guard. At this time, not far away, sat in a car butler. He took a picture of the main character. Butler wrote to his superior that Yang Chen's personality is very mysterious. Even the director of the security firm treats him with respect. The protagonist put the girl in the car, wished her good luck, and said they would see each other later. After that, Yang Chen arrived in his cab to a large building at the request of a client. A cab driver asked a customer where she was. The girl asked the guy to go upstairs because she needed help. The protagonist agreed he got out of the car and walked into the building. He was greeted by a young girl in the building. Yang Chen asked her how he could help her. The client was excited to have a handsome driver come to see her. She said she needed advice on her outfit. Yang Chen didn't realize what was happening. The girl took his hand and led him to her. A girl stood in front of a guy and held up a miniskirt. She asked the main character if she would look good in it. Yang Chen, a little embarrassed, told the girl that she would look great in this outfit. He added that he would wait for her in the car. The girl told the protagonist to help her choose an outfit he liked. Yang Chen replied that he wasn't very good at clothes. The guy asked the girl to hurry up and said he would be waiting for her in the car. Three minutes later, the girl quickly dressed and walked down to the car. After getting into the car, the customer said her name was Kiki and asked the driver's name. Yang Chen introduced himself and asked the girl to fasten her seatbelt. The client asked the guy how long he drives the car every day. The protagonist answered that he works without a precise schedule. Tsitsi told the fun guy that he must not have a girlfriend with a job like that. She suggested that he solve the problem. The driver reminded the girl that he was driving and that she should stay out of his way. He also asked her not to ask him about his personal life. Kiki asked the guy how long it would take them to arrive. Yang Chen replied that they still had a few minutes to go. At this time, the girl on the phone began to write subscribers. They noticed that she found a new driver. Chiki told the protagonist that she ran out of money on her cell phone. Yang Chen asked the female passenger if she really wanted to borrow his phone. The girl told the guy that she just needed to make a phone call. He reminded her not to hit on him while he was driving. The driver reminded the girl that he has a camera in his car, and all actions are recorded. The client had just unbuckled her seatbelt. She was surprised there was a camera in the car. Chiki took the smartphone in her hand. She asked the guy what he thought about those bushes. The main character tells the girl to wait for him there. He's going to park the car. Chiki happily ran towards the bushes. She asked the guy to the main thing to hurry up. Yang Chen jumped quickly into the car and began to drive away at full speed. The customer ran after the car. She was yelling for the main character to come back. The main character said to himself that he was sick of problem customers. The system congratulated the guy on another bad review. He received 25% of Luri's company stock. He would be able to get the documents at the company's main office. Yang Chen thought that he had gotten a good reward, but he was greatly disturbed by the feedback from the Chiki girl. The client wrote that the chauffeur was very bad, and he wanted her to pay for the trip with her body. The protagonist stopped the car. He decided to contact his cab service. Yang Chen called the support girl and said he got a bad review from a female passenger. He said he would forward the video for analysis. The tech support worker said she would wait for the video to get to the bottom of the situation. The protagonist sent a video from the interior of the car via his smartphone. The tech support girl said that other drivers had also complained about Sitsi's customer. She deleted the bad review and blocked the customer's account. Yang Chen again suggested that the tech support girl go out to dinner. The tech support worker replied to the protagonist that she would be waiting for him. At that time, Sitsi was broadcasting from the forest. It was already evening. She told her followers that she would find a new driver to try again. A girl noticed her account was locked. She realized that the driver had complained about her. Users began to write various unpleasant comments to Kiki's girlfriend. Someone wrote that everyone was fed up with her. At this time, in the main office of Lurie's company, the director was researching how the protagonist could get 25% of their stock. The secretary came over and told the director that they had checked and found out that Yang Chen was actually able to buy 25% of their company's shares. The director thought about it and realized that the main character was very rich. He could help them expand their business. The director called the secretary by the name of Mary and told her to contact the protagonist. They should make a good impression on him. The secretary didn't put it off for long and decided to call Yang Chen right now. Mary told the protagonist that she was the secretary of the director of Lurie's company. She suggested that he discuss the future development of the company with them. Yang Chen explained to the secretary that he had no professional skills in this field. He was just interested in a steady annual dividend. He also asked to have his company's uniforms ordered. Mary said she would contact the head designer immediately to get him started. The secretary wasted no time in going and knocking on the head designer's office. Mary called the designer Miss Bass 
and said they had received a rush order for a set of work clothes. Miss Bass said grudgingly that her designs and served for the Fashion Week show, and she would not design workwear kits. The secretary asked the designer if she had heard that someone had bought 25% of their stock. Miss Bass wondered what kind of rich person would do that. The secretary says that the order for the clothes came from the new shareholder. After Bess finishes the design, she has to go to the protagonist's house and take measurements for the clothes he wears. The designer said designing workwear is a worthwhile challenge for her. Bess promised the secretary that she would design clothes that would appeal to the shareholder and his employees. The protagonist at this time arrived by car at the office of his cab company. A girl from the company's customer service was already waiting for the guy near the entrance. The girl told the driver that he looked much more handsome in real life than he did in the photo. The main character called the girl Liu Xin and said she looked amazing too. He invited her to sit down and said he would buy her dinner. Liu Xin asked the guy for a favor. She wanted to pick up her girlfriend and her boyfriend in the city so they could have dinner together. The main character told the girl that they needed to skip dinner, he would be uncomfortable having dinner with strangers. The girl agreed she told the guy she would treat him to dinner another time to show her gratitude. Very soon, Liu Xin together with the protagonist arrived at the train station building. The guy told the girl to go and meet her acquaintances and he would wait for her here. Yang Chen thought that thanks to Liu Xin, he could get a lot of negative reviews and the girl could delete them every time. Liu Xin went inside the train station, she saw her girlfriend and her boyfriend walking. The girl greeted her friend named Shul. She greeted her in return. Liu Xin asked her friend who the guy next to her was. Shui replied that her boyfriend's name was Zhao Wenbo. Zhu revealed that her boyfriend is the son of their manager. He also covered all the expenses for the trip. Shui asked Liu Xin why she still doesn't have a boyfriend. If this continues, she won't be able to get married. The main character standing by the trunk told customers to give their luggage. Shui asked Du Xin's girlfriend, what is that guy next to the car? Without thinking long, Liu Xin confidently called the main character her boyfriend. The main character decided to play along. He told customers that his name is Yang Chen, and he is Liu Xin's boyfriend. The Shui Rin girl greeted the protagonist and shook his hand. The main character asked the girl and her boyfriend what hotel they were staying at. Zhu said that they were staying at the Baoqing Hotel. She asked the protagonist where he worked. Yang Chen replied cheerfully, cheerfully to the girl that he works as a cab driver. Shui Rin told the protagonist that he could see Liu Xin daily. Venbo's boyfriend said he's the only child in the family. He has to contribute to the family business. Then he can inherit it. Liu Xin told her girlfriend that she was happy for her since she had found a wealthy guy. Zhu replied to the girl that she even has her own car for work. Liu Xin told her friends that her boyfriend drives an NT car. Zhu asked her boyfriend if he knew NT cars and how expensive they were. Wenbo said that such cars cost several million dollars. Wenbo asked the protagonist how he could use such a car to work as a cab driver. Yang Chen replied that he had only two cars and could not use his sports car to work as a cab driver. The passengers were surprised. They realized that someone who can afford an expensive sports car cannot be a cab driver. Wenbo asked the driver if he was very rich, why he worked as a cab driver. Yang Chen replied that he liked the carefree lifestyle. In a very short time, the protagonist, accompanied by his companions, arrived at the inn. Yang Cheng, along with fellow Wenbo and the girls, walked into the hotel lobby and went to the receptionist. The girl Xu told the receptionist that they had a room reserved and asked for the room key. The receptionist told the girl that they didn't have a reservation in her name. Zhu excitedly told the receptionist that they had booked a room on the website and now it was gone. The receptionist said that on weekends and public holidays a reservation is required at least two hours in advance. Guests did not make reservations in advance, so there are no rooms available for them. Zhui got very angry about it. She demanded that the receptionist call the manager. The hotel manager came in. He asked the main character what brought him here. Yang Chen pointed at his friends and said that he took them to the hotel. The manager replied that he would immediately take the guests to a luxurious room for free. The protagonist replied that the rules should be equal for everyone, and without rules the hotel can't operate. The manager agreed with the protagonist and replied that he understood. The manager then responded to the guests that he could not check them in without a prior reservation. The girl Shu asked the driver if he didn't want to help them. Yang Chen replied that he was just doing his job. After that, the main character told Lu Xin to take care of her friends, and it was time for him to leave. After that, Yang Chen turned around and silently left the hotel. The guests looked at him in silence. Afterward, Liu Xin asked the manager why he was so polite to the main character. The manager explained that Yang Chen is the second largest shareholder of their hotel. The guests were very much amazed that a cab driver could be the second largest shareholder from one of the best hotels in town. Girl Xu asked Liu Xin what exactly her boyfriend does and why he works as a cab driver if he is rich. Liu Xin said that she just started dating the main character and so she doesn't know much about him. Girl Xu sternly asked Lu Xin why her boyfriend didn't help them, even though he is a shareholder. 
Liu Xin replied to her girlfriend that she ridiculed the protagonist as soon as she got into the car. The manager wondered why the young and rich Yang Chen was interested in a completely ordinary girl. The protagonist at this time was hosting a girl he knew at his home. When Yang Chen got out of the car, he was greeted by his girlfriend near the entrance. The girl said Aunt Lan made bean soup. She said the soup would help the boy cool down. The guy called the girl Miss Zhu and told her to come to his house. The girl poured the boy's transferred bean soup into a large saucer. Yang Chen said that Aunt Wang was a good cook. The boy asked the girl if her butler had given her information about the family to Yao Wu. Miss Zhu told the guy that this was what she wanted to talk to him about. She added that she couldn't solve it earlier, so the protagonist had to intervene personally. Yang Chen said excitedly to Miss Shui not to talk like that. The guy said that he was the one who didn't give the Shui family time to sell the company's shares to Yao Wu. The girl Shu apologized to the protagonist for letting him down. Yang Chen replied to the girl that if he had any problems in the future, he would turn to her. Shue replied that it was time for her to leave. The main character thought that he would have more and more property and it would be harder to maintain it. He decided to hire a housekeeper. After the girl left, Yang Chen made the final decision that tomorrow he would find a housekeeper. The next day, the protagonist arrived in a neighboring area on a call. Cab was ordered by a woman with two kids a guy drove up to pick them up. When the woman and her children got into the car, Yang Chen told her to unbuckle their belts as they were leaving. During the ride, a woman asked why the protagonist was taking a longer route and demanded a U-turn. Yang Chen replied that they were on a one-way street. They can only turn right at the next traffic light. The woman said they could take the oncoming lane in the neighborhood. She accused the driver of taking a long route to make more money. Yang Chen asked the woman strictly what kind of example she sets for her children. She teaches them to break traffic rules. The passenger yelled at the driver that it was none of his business how she raised her children and she demanded a U-turn. Yang Cheng continued to the woman to approach the policeman at the post to enlighten her. Without thinking, the woman opened the door and ran out of the car. The passenger told the cop that she wanted to turn around here, but the driver disagreed in order to make more money. The policeman explained to the woman that the street was one way if the driver turned, he would be breaking the rules. Afterward, the policeman thanked the protagonist for following the rules. Yang Chen asked the woman if she wanted to continue driving. The customer replied angrily that she would walk. The woman told the guy angrily that she would leave his service an angry review. The system told the guy that a bad review would get him a secretary's girlfriend. She'd arrive at his door at 6 p.m. Yang Chen was very excited as the system gave him what he needed. The guy read the contract it stated all the details about his secretary girlfriend. Exactly at the appointed time at 6 o'clock in the evening, a girl secretary arrived at the meeting place of the protagonist. A guy drove up in a car. He asked the girl if her name was Miss Yu Shi. Next to the secretary was a bag she asked the protagonist if his name was Mr. Ian. Yang Chen checked with the receptionist to see if she knew what her job would be. Yu Shi replied that she would be the main character's personal secret responsible for taking care of his daily life. Yang Chen asked the secretary if she would be satisfied with the 50,000 salary. Yu Shi said it was great for her to get a big salary for her first job. The protagonist put the secretary in the car and drove her to his house. Yang Chen told the girl to choose which room she wanted to live in and they would go out to dinner in the evening. In the evening at the appointed time, the protagonist together with his secretary arrived at the restaurant. Yang Chen ordered a very expensive and fancy dinner with delicious dishes and with wine. When they were eating dinner, a girl at the side came over and said that she didn't expect to see Yu Shu here. A stranger asked the secretary if her boyfriend was sitting next to her. She said he was very handsome. Yu Shi strictly told her friend not to bother them. The stranger asked why her former classmate was so unfriendly. A girl came up to the main character and said her name was Zhang Lulu. She asked the guy when he met Yu Shu. Yang Chen replied that he met his secretary today. Lulu's girlfriend cheerfully said that Yu Shu came on a blind date. She recalled that the secretary had studied abroad and had a master's degree. The secretary yelled at her girlfriend to leave. She also added that she doesn't go on blind dates. Afterwards, Lulu asked Yu Shu with interest if she had already found a job. The girl said that she worked as a vice president in a large company and could recommend her. Yu Shu jumped up and yelled for her girlfriend to stop. She once again asked her to leave. The receptionist told a passing waitress that they were being interrupted for dinner. The waitress asked the Lulu girl with interest if she had a reservation. The girl told the waitress that she had reserved table number 34. The waitress then asked that the customer return to her seat. In parting, Lulu advised the protagonist to stay away from Yu Shi. The secretary could hand over the friends at any time. Yu Shi yelled angrily to her girlfriend that she could tell everyone what she did in college. After that, the girl Lulu became very angry with her former classmate. A young guy came up. He greeted the girl Lulu and asked what she was doing. The girl called the guy Mr. Lin and said he had to help her since she was being bullied here. At the same time, Mr. Lin saw the protagonist and greeted him and asked him what he was doing here. Yang Chen asked the guy if he couldn't see what he was doing here. After thinking for a while, Mr. Lin said he had asked a stupid question. 
He asked the protagonist if his girlfriend was sitting next to him. He said she was beautiful. Yang Chen said that his secretary was sitting next to him. He also said that Lulu's girlfriend was interrupting their dinner. The protagonist asked Mr. Lin how he planned to solve the problem. Afterwards, Mr. Lin said he would make his girlfriend Lulu apologize and they would all forget about it. Yang Chen asked Mr. Lin how they could all forget what happened if he couldn't keep track of his girlfriend. Lulu's girlfriend asked Mr. Lin why he was afraid of the protagonist, since he is the vice president of Luri's company. The guy yelled rudely at the girl to shut up and apologize to the main character and his girlfriend. Lulu immediately reminded her boyfriend that he had previously promised to help her. The guy demanded strictly from the girl to apologize to the guests. Lulu approached her friend and apologized for her behavior. Yushi demanded that her former classmate stay away from her as much as possible. Afterward, Lulu's girlfriend excitedly promised that the secretary would never see her again. The secretary told the guy that she didn't want to see Lulu and Mr. Lin anymore. Yang Chen told Lulu's girlfriend to wait. The main character asked Zhang Lulu how she could be passed on by her girlfriend Yu Shu. The secretary got excited and wanted to say something. The protagonist said he wanted to hear what Lulu had to say. Lulu said that she sat next to Yu Shu in the exam, but she didn't cheat from her. However, the observer thought otherwise and didn't credit her work. The secretary accused her friend of plagiarizing her article and then got caught. She then spread rumors that Yu Shu had betrayed her. Mr. Lin yelled at his girlfriend that she'd done a dirty deed and blamed it on another person. He punched her in the face. A waitress came over and told Mr. Lin to calm down and not hit his girlfriend. Mr. Lin checked with his girlfriend Zhang Lulu to see if anyone had hit her. The girl replied with resentment that no one had hit her. She had accidentally fallen and hit herself. Yang Chen said that Lulu has been upset all these years thinking that Yu Shu did her wrong. Lulu replied that she knew it was her fault. She couldn't let it go. The secretary tells the protagonist that she doesn't want to see her former classmate anymore. Mr. Lin apologized to the protagonist for the inconvenience. He also promised that Lulu would no longer bother his secretary. Afterwards, Mr. Lin led his distraught girlfriend away from the restaurant. Yang Chen received a message from the system that Yu Shi's loyalty level had been raised. The next day, the protagonist decided to give instructions to his secretary, Yu Shi. Yang Chen told the girl that he was going for a drive around town. He asked the girl to hire someone to clean the pool and garden. At this time, from a neighboring villa, the housekeeper watched the protagonist leave. The worker told her mistress that Yang Chen had left, but the girl stayed at his house. Mistress told her housekeeper to go and find out for herself. The maid approached the main character's villa. She rang the bell and asked if Mr. Yang was home. The secretary came out. She asked the housekeeper if she had come to see Mr. Yang. The maid said she was a housekeeper from the Eighth Fork. She said that her mistress and Mr. Yang are good friends. The housekeeper also said that she brought king crabs for the protagonist. Yu Shi said that the main character isn't here right now. She asked the housekeeper to give her the crabs. The housekeeper gave the secretary the package and told her she wouldn't distract her anymore. After talking to the secretary, the housekeeper went back to her villa. The mistress asked the maid how it went. The maid replied that they had made up too much. The maid said that the girl in the main character's house is his housekeeper. Mistress told the maid to continue to do her chores. Then mistress thought about it. She remembered that her father had told her many times to stick to the main character. At this time in Yang Chung's house, his secretary loaded the received king crabs into the refrigerator. The main character called and said he bought a car for Yu Xia. She would be able to get around the city faster. The girl thanked him. Yang Chen told the secretary that after she was free, they would go together to pick up the car. The main character decided to check if he had any new orders. The smartphone reported that there was a new order. Yang Chen got into his car and drove to call on his new clients. When the guy arrived at the address, he saw a bunch of young women waiting for him. Yang Chung leaned out of the auto and asked the women if they had ordered a cab. The woman then commanded her girlfriends to get in the car. The protagonist asked the passengers if they had really all decided to ride in the same car. The woman told the driver that there was no point in calling multiple cars if they could fit in one. The driver told the customers that his car could only hold five people. The woman said they all had good figures and would fit. When everyone was seated, the woman said they would save money perfectly if they ordered a cab for one person it would be a waste. The protagonist told the customers to buckle up as it was time to depart. During the ride, a female passenger asked Lee Jae's girlfriend if she remembered her lines. The protagonist listened to the conversations and decided that his female clients were rehearsing a marketing slogan. The customer in the front seat told the driver not to look around. Yang Cheng asked the female passengers if each of them had her own car. The girl replied that each of them had a car. She offered the guy to join them, after which he would get a new car in three months. The passenger asked the driver if he wanted to join them. She said that her ex-husband also worked as a driver but did not earn much. Yang Chen thanked the girl for the offer and said he already had a job. The girl suggested to the protagonist to add her to the chat room, she would leave him a good review. The driver told the passenger that he really liked his current job they drove up to the auto center. 
A customer told the guy that his destiny was to work as a cab driver for the rest of his life. After that, the client turned around and left. The protagonist looked after her. At the same time, Yu Shu's secretary greeted the protagonist. The girl asked Yang Chen what kind of people he was picking up and why there were so many of them. The guy replied that he had taken the order when he was on his way to the auto center. The protagonist then opened the door and exited his vehicle. The employee at the car center asked the guests what kind of car they would like to see. The receptionist replied that they had come to pick up the car ordered for Mr. Yang. The car service worker told customers to follow her. At this time, the main character turned to the side and saw a group of girls he was dropping off. After that, Yang Chung and his secretary went into the general manager's office. The manager greeted the protagonist and motioned for him to sit down. He told his subordinate Xiao Li to make tea for them. At that time, the main character received a negative feedback from a group of girls. The guy was surprised that the clients put all the blame on him. The system congratulated the guy on his new negative feedback he got 10 million with the option to increase the bonus. Yang Cheng was surprised as the system had new functions related to rewards. The manager brought the guy a glass on a tray and offered him some tea. Yang Chen replied to the manager that he was in a hurry and wanted to go see the car. After that, the protagonist along with the manager hurried to the car. As they walked through the salon, they saw several girls arguing with each other in front of them. The manager apologized to the protagonist and said he needed to step back. He showed Yang Chen where his car was parked. The receptionist told the guy that the new car is really awesome. He suggested to the girl that she take a look at the interior. When the girl was inside, the main character decided to take a picture of her. At that time, one of the clients he was giving a ride to came up behind the protagonist. She asked how the guy got here. The woman said that an ordinary cab driver can't afford an expensive car. She invited him to join their company. Yang Chen thanked him for the offer and reminded him that he liked his job. He asked the women where their cars were. The client pointed to a car standing next to her. She said she wanted to take a picture with the car. At that time, the receptionist came up to the guy. She asked what was going on. The guy replied that the women wanted to take a picture with their car. Then the women pulled out a piece of large red cloth they needed for a picture. While one of the women took pictures, the others held a red cloth near her girlfriend. Yu Shi's secretary asked the protagonist what the women around them were doing. Yang Chen showed his secretary his cell phone. The girl realized that the woman was taking a picture next to the car and posted a picture that it was her car. The main character told the secretary to let the women have fun while they can. At that time, the client said that the car had a license plate, so she had the owner and wanted to see him. The manager came over. He asked the woman if she had permission to take pictures of cars. The customer said she wanted to see the owner of the car. The manager said that the owner of the car was unable to check it out due to the actions of the customer. A woman asked the manager where the owner of the car was and why she couldn't see him. The manager pointed to the protagonist and said that the owner was standing right in front of the customer. The women were very, very surprised. They did not believe that the expensive car belonged to the cab driver. The manager told the customers not to talk and to leave. The woman asked the protagonist if the car was his. Yang Chen confirmed what she said. A customer asked the guy how a cab driver could buy a Rolls Royce. Yang Chen replied that she shouldn't be interested. The woman asked the guy to tell her how he acquired the automobile. The customer told the guy to forget what happened, and she had already deleted her negative review. She even offered to buy him dinner to apologize. The system told the guy that he had completed an additional task. The wheel will then be spun to find out his reward. When the host yells stop, a number will fall out, which will be his bonus multiplier. Yang Chung shouted a stop in time while spinning the bonus wheel. The system reported that the host got a multiplier of 8. As a result, the protagonist gets 80 million and the money will arrive in his bank account. The main character told a customer at a car dealership that they might meet, and in the meantime, they can add each other as friends. At the same time, Yang Chen winked at the car dealership manager who was standing next to him. The manager ordered the guards to kick out the women who were taking pictures of the cars. Security guards approached and pulled the female customers out of the car dealership building. The manager apologized to the protagonist. Yang Chen said he was satisfied with the car and was ready to sign the papers. The guy noticed that Miss Lin had arrived at the car dealership. He asked her if she was here to buy a car. The guy standing next to Miss Lin asked the protagonist why he was being so disrespectful to her. Miss Lin told the guy to stay out of the conversation and to get back in the car. Then the woman told the protagonist that if he helped her become the head of the company, she would give him 49% of the shares. The protagonist calmly replied to Miss Lin that he had absolutely no interest in her company. The guy turned around and started to walk away. He told the woman not to bother him anymore. Yang Chen instructed the secretary to go home first. He said he would work a little longer. The secretary said she wouldn't have any work at home and wanted to follow the protagonist. Yang Chen was fine with it. Then the driver arrived at the call he drove up to the big company building. A cab was ordered by two employees of the company. They were a young man and a girl. Yang Chen told the customers to fasten their seatbelts. 
They're heading toward Minju Tower. The girl told her companion manager Chen that their company really didn't have a free car. The man didn't like being forced to take a cab. The girl told the manager that they were driving in a nice car. She told him to look at the interior of the car. Manager Chen said they were riding in a regular cab driver's car. He added that powerful people don't take cabs. The driver told the client that even cab drivers can have good cars. He also said that the client could choose the make of the car when placing the order. The man got angry and told the driver that he was flattering himself. He added that a cab driver cannot own a luxury car worth several million. Yang Chen told the man to pay attention to the sports car following them. The customer replied that he didn't believe that the cab driver could own that car. Yang Chung said that the expensive car driving behind them is available for booking and cab work, but the price of the ride will be more expensive than a normal car. The man said he didn't believe an ordinary cab driver could come after him in a luxury car. Yang Chen said it was his car that was following them, driven by his secretary. Then the protagonist stopped. He got out of the car and gestured to the secretary to stop. Yu Shi got out of the car and asked excitedly to the protagonist if anything had happened to him. The guy said his client complained, so he'd let him ride in an expensive car. He offered to get in right away. Yu Shi told the manager that she really does ride in her boss's car. The customers were very much surprised. The girl asked the guy again if it was really his car. Yang Chen said there's a security camera inside the car, so customers can make sure that he is responsible for his words and actions. The man asked the guy how he could ride in such a luxury car. He offered to drive on. Yang Chen waved his hand and said that they would follow further down the path. A customer asked the driver if he was rich, why he worked as a cab driver. Yang Chen replied that he liked the free work. The man apologized to the protagonist for what he had said earlier. Yang Chen replied to the man not to even worry about it. He said that they were already at their destination and that the customers should not forget their things. The girl thanked the driver. She said she would ride in his car the next time she had a chance. The customers gave the protagonist a long stare. The manager said that he would never have worked as a cab driver if he had been rich. After the protagonist arrived home with the girl, she decided to give him back his car keys. The main character told the secretary to leave the keys at her place as it would be easier for her to get somewhere by car. She asked the guy if he was really leaving her the keys. Yang Chen confirmed that he gave the keys to the secretary and she thanked him. Yang Chen received a message from the system that his loyalty level has been raised. The guy thought that after he gave the car to Yu Shi, he had increased his level of loyalty. The protagonist got out of the car and suggested that the girl go shopping together. After that, Yang Cheng and his secretary arrived at a large shopping center. The secretary told the guy she needed to buy a charger she forgot to get when she got here. The guy agreed. Yu Shi rushed to a retail outlet where she could buy a charger. A guy and a girl were standing at the counter. The girl asked the guy to buy her an iPad. The guy said he didn't have any money and offered to buy the iPad another time. The girl suggested that her friend take out a loan from the bank. She reminded him that he already owed 50000 and a few extra thousand wouldn't make things worse. Yang Chen watched the couple's conversation from the sidelines. He realized that their relationship was very complicated. The guy continued to the girl to come back another time. She asked him strictly if it was difficult for him to buy an iPad. Afterward, the girl tapped her boyfriend in the face and told him he was useless. The girl capriciously shouted to the guy to kneel in front of her. The friend asked the girlfriend not to be angry. He promised to buy her an iPad some other time. The girl yelled for her boyfriend to get on his knees he did. The protagonist along with his girlfriend watched in amazement at what was happening. The girl told the guy that she had agreed to go out with him and he couldn't buy anything right now. She grabbed him by the ear. Yang Chen came over and said that gifts are given from the heart, not required. The girl told the protagonist that she would punish her boyfriend for not being able to buy her gifts. Yang Chen asked the girl why her boyfriend should buy her something. She replied that she wouldn't date a guy without gifts. At this time, the receptionist came up. She told the protagonist that she was done with the shopping and offered to come back. Yang Chen told the cranky girl that his secretary paid for the charger herself. The girl asked the secretary whether she pays for her own purchases when she goes shopping. She added that the secretary was very beautiful and there was no need to humiliate herself. Yu Shi said calmly that she has arms and legs she can work on her own and not rely on others. After that, the cranky girl turned around and walked away. Her boyfriend was still on his knees. The main character told the fun guy to find a better girl. After the protagonist and the secretary made their purchases, they went down to the garage. As they were walking through the underground parking garage, they saw a guy and a girl in front of them. Yang Chen looked closely and saw Wang Jun in front of him. The guy was hugging the girl, and she said she missed him a lot. The protagonist wondered if he should approach a guy with a girl. The secretary asked wonderingly to the guy why they had stopped. The protagonist turned to the secretary and told her to wait for him in the car. The guy then reached into his pocket and pulled out his smartphone to call someone now. The guy called the girl's acquaintance and said that Xiao Jin was drunk and he should pick her up. 
The protagonist walked up to the guy and called him Wang Ju. The guy was still standing with the girl. Wang Ju turned around to the protagonist and said cheerfully that it had been a long time since they had seen each other. Yang Chen replied that they hadn't seen each other for more than three years since freshman year. Wang Ju asked him what he had been doing lately. The protagonist replied that he works as a cab driver. Wang Ju said that he was the vice president of a resort business. He asked why Yang Chen was working as a cab driver since he had studied marketing before. The protagonist said that he works as a cab driver and earns a living while he takes care of business. Wang Ju told him to ask him for help if he needed anything. Yang Chen asked his friend who the girl next to him was. Wang Ju replied that a guy was coming to pick up his drunken friend. After that, the protagonist along with his friend and the girl waited for her boyfriend. An excited guy arrived. He asked those present who had called him. Wang Ju told the guy who arrived that Xiao Jing's girl was now in his hands. After that, Wang Ju wished the guy and his girlfriend happiness. He suggested to Yang Chen to go and have a drink. The main character asked his friend why he was giving the girl to someone else. Wang Ju said that if a girl can't get over her ex, there is no point in their relationship. The protagonist told his friend that he understood him completely and suggested we go for a drink. Friends were sitting in a restaurant around there with booze and appetizers they were drinking over health. Yang Chen asked his friend if he knew the guy who came to get the girl. Wang Ju replied that he didn't know the guy, but judging by his car, he must be a rich man. Yang Chen asked his friend if he really wanted to date Xiao Jing's girlfriend. Wang Ju happily replied to his friend that he really wanted to date that girl. The protagonist told his friend confidently that he would definitely help him. Wang Jun's face was already purple from the heavy dose of alcohol. With a slurred tongue, the young man tried to prove that he didn't care about Xiao Jin. Yang Chen smiled. He realized that his interlocutor had reached the right condition and offered to call a car to the house. The bright yellow cab smoothly stopped at the entrance of a small cafe a few minutes later. The young man carefully placed Wang Jun on the seat and closed the door. Not an hour later, the young man had already showered and was walking past the ornate couch, wiping his head with a towel. Looking through the notifications on his phone, Yang Chen discovered that streamer Li Qi Ning was lying in a hospital bed. It turned out that her boss had sent his men to extend her contract. During the showdown with them, the girl injured her leg. Yang Chen was very upset and promised to deal with the company of the boss, and the girl herself offered to work for herself. For the first time in these days, Qi Ning smiled. She was doubly pleased. It was a great honor for her to work in the company of a young man. Yang Chen got right down to business and made his way to his office. In the drawer of his secretary, there was always a stack of blank forms for such an occasion. The young man knocked politely on the door of his secretary Yu Shi's room. In his hands, Yang Chen held the necessary package of documents. The girl immediately opened the door. When she saw the half-naked boss in front of her, she was a little embarrassed and asked him what he needed. Yang Chen smiled and handed over a sealed envelope of papers. Yu Shu needs to register a streaming company. The secretary accepted the documents and promised that she would look into it. The time was late, and they said goodnight to each other. In the morning, one of the cab customers checked the route on her phone and was horrified to discover that she had made a slight mistake. She needed to go to the north gate. The young man flatly refused to make a detour. The cab had already arrived at the place indicated in the order. He offered to make a new request. The customer was immediately furious because it was taking too long to place a new order. She threatened the driver with a bad review. Yang Chen frowned. He stated that the rating did not bother him. The cab has arrived at its destination. The girl must leave the car. The passenger lowered her feet to the ground in black patent high-heeled shoes. She angrily declared that she had not been taken to that gate the first time. As the cab pulled some distance away, the woman angrily exclaimed that she would definitely leave a bad review. The customer kept her promise. A few seconds later, the mobile app received a notification about the negative feedback. This time, the reward was Yang Chen's ownership of a company that owns a coastal resort. The young man liked this award very much. Now his employees had a place to have a good rest after working days. In the late afternoon, Yang Chen returned to the villa. Yu Shu had just prepared dinner and offered to look through the documents. Yang Chen was very satisfied with hiring this secretary. He was not wrong. Yu Shi was doing all of his assignments with precision. The young man suggested that she have dinner together. The secretary was embarrassed and said she needed to bring another set of dishes. Suddenly the phone rang. Wang Jun joyfully announced that he was inviting Yang Chen to the wedding on Sunday. The young man revealed that that wasn't all. Xiao Jin is pregnant with his child, they found out after a DNA test at the hospital. Yang Chen could not believe the words of his interlocutor. Events were developing very quickly. Wang Jun invited him to visit a coastal resort. The young man promised to definitely come at the specified time. Yu Shu came to the table and waited for the conversation to end. 
the girl had already managed to put on her makeup. After picking up the chopsticks, Yushi worriedly asked what was wrong. Yang Chun smiled and raised his glass of red wine. He replied that he simply couldn't keep up with the pace of modern life. The next day, the cab parked outside the apartment complex. Satisfied with the driver, the clients waved goodbye. Suddenly, a new notification came on his phone. Yang Chen realized that the customer was nearby. Not far away stood a young couple with a small child in their arms wrapped in a sheet. They were discussing a cab order. The young man looked out the window. There was no one else around. Apparently, the couple had booked a cab ride. Yang Chen confirmed receipt of the order. At the same second, the man excitedly informed his companion that the order had been accepted. Yang Chen got out of the car and said hello politely. He named the code he received and assumed that they had ordered the cab. The woman tearfully exclaimed that their son had a high fever. They needed to get to the hospital immediately. The young man assured me that it would be no problem and offered to take a seat in the car. The couple hurriedly got into the back seat. As soon as the car moved from the spot, the young couple asked the driver to go faster. They were very worried. Yang Chen frowned and asked to buckle up. He didn't see it as a problem. The young man always made concessions to customers. The driver made sure the passengers were securely buckled in and pushed the gas pedal to the floor, intending to tackle early. Yang Chen was in such a hurry to deliver customers that he no longer paid attention even to the red traffic light. A few minutes later, the passengers with the baby in their arms got out of the cab. Yang Chen waved goodbye, and the couple thanked him for the ride. Looking at the system notifications for the trip, the young man turned pale. It turned out that he had run three red signals during the route. The guy ran out of the cab catching up with the couple with the baby. He needed to get the passenger statement so he wouldn't have a problem with the fine. There were no more customers in the hospital lobby. Yang Chen ran up to the nurse behind the counter and summarized the situation. The passengers were in the emergency room. The doctor had just written a prescription and asked the young father to go to the pharmacy. Yang Chen inquired how the baby was feeling. The man replied that everything was fine. He would put a positive feedback later. The young man explained that he wasn't looking for them because of the rating. The system has removed the driver's points and he needs help from the customer. The young father worriedly replied that he and his wife had to attend to the child's health right now, so he couldn't help. Yang Chen didn't understand why the man was acting like this. He explained that it wouldn't take much time to write a statement. In response, the customer said that the young man was in his way and ran to the pharmacy. The driver looked at him in surprise. Literally a minute later, a new system notification came in. The guy pissed off the client, and the client retaliated by putting up a negative review. Yang Chen read the review carefully. The couple warned subsequent passengers that it was better not to do business with him. The young man sighed heavily. He had tried his best to please the couple and had only asked for help, but it was his own fault. For the negative feedback he received, the man received 30% of the stock of a large law firm. A phone call stopped him just outside the car. An unfamiliar man asked if the number belonged to Yang Chen. The law firm representative politely asked if the young man had any comments or suggestions. Yang Chen said they could operate as usual. He asked if the firm could resolve the misunderstanding with the passenger. The man smiled. Naturally, they can delay the client for two weeks. Yang Chen will be able to settle his matter. The young man was very excited. This was just what he needed right now. Yang Chen was happy to work with professionals. The lawyer laughed and assured that there would be no difficulties. The company would consider the case as a welcome bonus to the new shareholder. Yang Chen was relaxing at the pool villa together with Yu Shu. The girl couldn't hold on to the water at all, so the boss provided her with an inflatable lap. Suddenly the phone rang. Wiping his head with a towel, the young man answered the call. It turned out that yesterday's client was ready to cooperate with him. The young man replied that he was not interested in the passenger's testimony. The man should talk to his lawyer. The young father was very scared. He asked to change his lawyer because Zhang Xiang would send him to jail for a whole year. Yang Chen smirked. The lawyer was really good and intimidated the man properly. He repeated that the lawyer would tell everything. After finishing the call, the young man disconnected the phone. Yu Shu climbed out of the pool and worriedly asked what was wrong. After finding out that nothing much happened, the girl asked her boss for help applying sunscreen. Yang Chen smiled. He was always happy to help the pretty secretary. Yu Shu handed him a yellow bottle of sunscreen. The girl was very pleased that her boss had agreed to help her right away. She even closed her eyes in joy. The young man asked Yu Shu to lie on his stomach. He would start applying sunscreen from his back. The secretary lay down on the chaise lounge. Yang Chen applied some cream to her lower back and rubbed it evenly into the girl's skin between the parts of the split swimsuit. Some more protective cream went on the secretary's shoulder blades and neck. The young man noted that the girl had excellent skin. Yang Chen applied the last of the cream to Yu Shi's legs and gently rubbed it in, trying not to miss anything. The secretary was very embarrassed to have to feel the young man's hands on her body all the time. She blushed more and more. Luckily, the boss asked to take his phone since his hands were dirty. 
The girl nodded her head readily. Yang Chen told them who they needed to call. He asked him not to forget Wang Jiayi from the Color Dawn shop as well. While the young man wiped his hands with a towel, Yu Shu held the phone to his ear so that the boss could have a business conversation. After the conversation was over, the girl pulled out the sunscreen and stated that she now had to apply sunscreen. Yang Chen sat down on the chaise lounge and smiled. He had no objection to the beauty applying cream to his body with her delicate hands. The boss only now saw that Yu Shi was standing beside him as red as a boiled crayfish. The girl explained that she was a little embarrassed to be so close. The young man lay down on the chaise lounge and closed his eyes. They agreed that Yang Chen would not look at the girl so as not to embarrass her. At half past eight in the evening, a man drove up to the Baoqing Hotel. The hotel staff hurriedly stretched out in front of him. Wang Jiayi was already here. She couldn't believe that Yang Chen had become the new second shareholder of their company. The young man apologized for being late to the slightly embarrassed girl, Pang Ru Dan. She was the president of the company. The woman introduced Miss Bass, the head designer, to Yang Chen. The girl with red hair smiled shyly. The man held out his hand to Miss Bass. He smiled and said he was very glad to meet her. The girl responded in kind. Ju Don introduced one of the sales partners. Wang Jiayi smiled slyly at the young man. She was pleased to see him here. At the traditional handshake exchange, the embarrassed girl offered to come to Yang Chen's home to celebrate his successes. Pang Ru Dan and Miss Bass couldn't believe Wang Jiayi's words. This was crossing all boundaries for the young people who met. The young man smiled embarrassedly and suggested that Wang Jiayi talk about this event a little later. Right now they had a common cause. The president of the company had been watching the guy and the girl all this time. Pang Ru Dan realized that she was wrong. The couple had known each other for a long time. Yang Chen took his seat at the round table that was already set for dinner. The young man suggested that all formalities be dropped. Miss Bass immediately walked over to him with a notebook in her hand. She already had a design project for work clothes ready. Wang Jiayi jealously watched Yang Chen and the head designer chatting sweetly. He seemed like a perfect man to her. After the banquet was over, Miss Bass gave her new employee a hand in farewell and promised to choose a better design next time. Gradually, everyone left the hall. Only Wang Jiayi and Yang Chen remained at the table. The girl glanced towards the door. She really wanted to hug the young man. Yang Chen didn't mind anything, and Wang Jiayi immediately put her arms around his neck and pressed herself tightly against him. The young man blushed with embarrassment. It turned out that she had been asked to have dinner with her boss. Yang Chen gently took the girl by the chin and asked her how she liked the surprise. While the embarrassed sales associate couldn't say a word, the young man put his arms around her legs and lifted her up to his weight. The boss carried the girl to a secluded corner where no one could disturb them. He sat Wang Jiayi on the wooden railing, enjoying her kisses. Rubbing his eyes after his nap, the boy looked around. Unfortunately, his girlfriend had left again and hadn't said goodbye to him. Only a note reminded Wang Jiayi of Wang Jiayi's stay. She thanked him for a wonderful evening and left 3,000 yuan. The young man sighed heavily. The fun was over and it was time to get to work. He picked up the phone and dialed a number. Yang Chen asked his interlocutor how the store opening was going. He was told that preparations were in full swing. After absentmindedly pulling on his pants and shoes, the young man said that Wang Jiayi would be interning with them for half a year. Yang Chen finished talking and continued to get dressed. He was a little worried about having to go to the resort. He should have finished everything by now. In the meeting room, everything was already ready. The employees bowed at the same time to greet their boss. Yang Chen took his seat at the table and motioned for those present to begin the meeting. On the table in front of him were the necessary papers and a notebook. One of the speakers rose from his seat and said that this time it would be about buying Jinhai and Haiyang resorts. This name was familiar to the young man. It was at the Jinhai resort where Wang Jun and Xiao Jin were scheduled to get married. Yang Chen demanded to immediately contact the management of both companies and organize a video conference. Half an hour later, all the issues were settled and the resort managers were ready to start negotiations. The video link session began. The representatives of Li Haiyang and Zhang Sukun were quite surprised to see such a young and prosperous young man. Yang Chen had to admit that he had recently made a very large purchase and would now be unable to deal with them. The interlocutors did not understand what the man meant and asked him to elaborate on his lack of cooperation. Turns out the guy only has 200 million yuan. That's only enough to buy one company. He can't buy both. The speaker was amazed by the boss's bold decision. This was his way of reducing the value of the companies. Li Haiyang and Zhang Suchun almost tearfully begged each other to give up the right to deal, each needing money. Yang Chen coldly asked his interlocutors to continue this conversation without him. He needed to continue his meeting. The young man made a wave to the speaker and asked him to end the current video session. The man turned off the video signal. The speaker asked the director what he intended to do next with the owners of those two companies. Yang Chen reported that the price of those resorts is not true. 
he asked who offered to buy those companies. It turned out that the former chairman, Zhou Hai Bin, had decided to do this. The young man angrily threw the package of documents on the table. He slapped his heel on the table with force and said that given the circumstances, the terms of the purchase of those resorts would be renegotiated. Yang Chen left the office with a quick step. All the employees bowed goodbye to the boss and wished him a good day. Yang Chen got out of the car and opened the passenger side door. He held out his hand to Yu Shu and helped her get out. Out of the corner of his eye, he noticed a black armored limousine pulling into the parking lot. He had a bad feeling about it. A man he knew well, Li Ming, wearing a blue suit and accompanied by several bodyguards, stepped out of the car. Yang Chen immediately dialed his company's number and asked them to send some tough guys to Jinhai Resort. Meanwhile, his person attracted the attention of several other people. As soon as the young man finished talking, three guys came closer. They were three of his classmates. Each of them considered himself a fairly successful businessman. With cheerful smiles, they surrounded Yang Chen. The young man confessed that he had not expected to meet them at this resort. Turning to Yu Shi, he introduced the guys to her, introducing the secretary as his girlfriend. She was immediately embarrassed. Yang Chen whispered and asked him not to give away his secret. Yu Shu had to agree to play along with his boss. One of the guys said that he had heard about Yang Chen's job as a cab driver. He smiled disdainfully. His status was high. The second young man mockingly asked how much one could earn as a cab driver now. He also considered himself a successful man. The young man smiled and evasively replied that he earns quite enough, he has enough for a good life. The third guy suggested that it was good to have a freelance job, he was sick of dealing with suppliers. Yang Chen immediately realized that they were all just mocking him, and considered themselves much higher in social status. After a good laugh, the three friends went to the gift-giving table. One of them handed over a puffy red envelope. The solid man was happy about the solid gift. He smiled and said that Wang Jun was very lucky to have such friends. The young man turned around to Yang Chen. He smiled and said that it was time for them to go. They would wait for the young man in the hall. Yu Xu and her companion approached the table. The girl opened the zipper on her purse and reached in for their gift. They had the same red envelope for wedding gifts, but it looked much thinner. The man thanked the couple for the gift. One of the young men noticed that Yang Chen's envelope looked too thin and offered his financial help. The second young man also offered to take their envelope. He was even willing to lend them 5,000 yuan for a gift. Yang Chen smiled and informed him that what really matters is not the gift, but the feelings you put into it. The secretary opened the envelope. In it was a gold check with a huge sum of money overlapping the boy's gifts. With a smile, Yu Shu explained that this amount of money simply wouldn't fit in the envelope. The man at the table stood up in surprise. All three young men froze. They thought they had outshone everyone by presenting the young man with 5,000 yuan each for his wedding. Yang Chen smirked and reminded him that what really matters is not the gift, but the feelings you put into it. The man at the table laughed naively and exclaimed that he liked these words. Wang Jun's classmates cheered him. Yang Chen didn't intend to talk much. He apologized and said that he didn't want to be late for the wedding ceremony. The three friends could not believe that an ordinary cab driver could have so much money. They agreed that the young man was moonlighting somewhere. They arrived at the ceremony on time. Wang Jun and Xiao Jin walked down the red carpet to a round of applause. The dispenser asked the young man if he agreed to marry Xiao Jin and love her for the rest of his life. Wang Jun immediately replied that he agreed. The man asked the beautiful bride the exact same question. To everyone's surprise, someone in the crowd shouted that he did not agree. Li Ming stepped forward with a huge bouquet of blue roses and loudly repeated in a loud voice that he was against this wedding. Wang Jun turned black with anger. He was over the moon. Everything was going so well if not for these uninvited guests. The young man asked what the matter was. Li Ming informed him that it didn't take too much thought to guess why he had come here. He knelt down in front of the beautiful Xiao Jin and presented her with a bouquet of blue roses. The young man asked her to marry him. The girl took the flowers. Emotions overwhelmed her. Tears appeared in her eyes. The bride asked Wang Jun to apologize. She explained that she loved Li Min, so she was canceling the wedding. The groom was furious because he had asked her to think it over. The new groom realized that events were shaping up in his favor. He said that Wang Jun would not be able to make Xiao Jin happy. Li Ming's support group started cheering him on. They were all filming what was happening on their phone cameras. At that moment, the bride's father approached them and demanded that the girl immediately explain what was going on here. Xiao Jin cried and talked about Wang Jun's baby. It turned out that she actually loved Li Ming. The man looked at the challenger and stated to his daughter that he and her mom would support her always, no matter what happened. Wang Jun was mad with anger. As soon as Li Ming showed up, the whole wedding immediately went wrong. Suddenly, Yang Chen stepped forward. He smiled and said that it would be quite difficult to disrupt his friend's wedding. Wang Jun tried to stop the young man. He didn't want his best friend to get into trouble because of him. 
Yang Chen said that everything is under control, he will help the guy regain his dignity. But for that to happen, he had to want to do it himself. Wang Jun became even more angry and clenched his fists. Of course, he was willing to fight for the girl he loved. Li Ming smiled and tried to smooth over the conflict. He reminded the audience that the girl had decided to go with him. Both sides raised their voices at each other more and more, and so did not immediately see the young men running down the path. They were bodyguards from a security agency. The leader apologized for the delay. Because of the traffic jam, they couldn't arrive earlier. One of Wang Jun's acquaintances whispered in his comrade's ear that these well-built guys work for a security company. Yang Chen was blacker than a cloud. He said that he didn't ask for people to be sent to him so often that they had the right to be late. All the bodyguards humbly bowed to the young man. The chief of the guards admitted his guilt and was ready to be punished for it. It was hard to believe, but the friends saw with their own eyes how the bodyguards obeyed Yang Chen's cab driver. Meanwhile, the young man pointed his finger at Li Ming and said that that guy had come to disrupt his friend's wedding. In addition, Yang Chen asked what they would do if it involved their children. The security chief's fists clenched by themselves. The young man was glad that his seed had fallen on fertile ground. He patted the man's shoulder approvingly. The bodyguard stood by his side and only waited for a command. Yang Chen ordered to punish the impudent people who were ruining the party. A moment later, Li Ming was squeezed into a tight ring with his men. He asked fearfully what this meant. No one answered the young man. Everything was already clear. He shouted worriedly that he was willing to pay twice as much as Yang Chen. At the same second, one of the bodyguards angrily started choking him. Li Ming cried out and asked him to let go. Meanwhile, Yang Chen pointed to the license plate of the black car to the security chief. It turned out that the limousine belonged to his son. Mr. Qi was very surprised. The black car with gold inlays immediately seemed quite familiar to him. Xiao Jin assumed that Li Ming had stolen this car. The young man excitedly explained that he didn't steal it, but rented it. The bodyguard swooped down on him and started shouting. The young man through tears proved that he wanted to marry this girl. This whole situation made the bride reconsider her views on marriage. She slapped Li Min's face with the bouquet as hard as she could. Xiao Jin excitedly exclaimed that Li Ming had tricked her and suggested that Wang Jun continue their wedding. To the girl's surprise, the groom did not embrace her or even smile. He shouted angrily that he did not want to see her again. The parents calmed the roaring Xiao Jin. The bride's mother reminded her that the girl was pregnant by him. Meanwhile, the bodyguards brought Li Ming to his knees by force. He almost cried in frustration and begged to be let go. Yang Chen asked his friend Wang Jun what to do next with that guy. The young man asked him to put him away. Li Ming looked very pitiful. The bodyguards clasped his hands behind his back when they were ordered to kick the guy out. Yang Chen walked over to his friend and put his hand on his shoulder. He stated that Wang Jun would now decide what to do next on his own. The young man was at a complete loss. He recognized that the child was indeed his, but the wedding was no longer necessary. Yang Chen firmly said that no one is his advisor. The groom must make the decision his heart tells him to make. In the resulting silence, the clink of a broken bottle sounded like thunder. The shards scattered far around. Xiao Jin put the rose to her throat and demanded that Wang Jun marry her, or else she would kill herself. The young man couldn't understand what was going on. At that moment, Yu Xu came over and gently took his hand. She forgot to say something. It turned out that Xiao Jin had tested positive for AIDS, and this child should not be kept anyway. Wang Jun angrily turned to his former fiancé and frowningly asked if it was true. The girl shouted that it was a lie. The young man demanded that Xiao Jin's family leave the area or he would sue them for spreading HIV. The bride was simply desperate. She wailed that Wang Jun would regret it and made a small cut on his throat. At the same second, Xiao Jin rushed towards her fiancé into her arms. The young man tried to push the girl away from him. She was now dangerous. He fell on the carpet. The bride rushed after him, but she was held by her mother's hand. Wang Jun warned that she might infect everyone. Yang Chen turned to the bodyguards and ordered them to immediately call an ambulance and prevent the bride from touching the others. Wang Jun stood there trembling with fear. His hands were stained with his fiancé's blood. Now he himself could die. Yang Chen brought him out of his shock and shouted that there was no need to just stand there. He himself should immediately report for examination. The agitated young man ran to the hospital. Yu Shi worriedly told her boss that he also had blood on his hands. At that moment, a systemic message came in. It turned out that Yang Chen was immune to all diseases. The young man decided for the sake of appearances to still go to the hospital so that the secretary would not worry about his well-being. Only the bride and her parents remained on the carpet. Passing by them with Yu Shu, Yang Chen was glad that it was over. Suddenly, the phone rang in his pocket. The young man was annoyed that he could not get any rest anywhere. Turns out it was his manager who called. He managed to get the total cost of both resorts estimated at 200 million. Naturally, the boss immediately agreed to the contract because originally they wanted to sell him every resort at that price. The next day, 
Li Haiyang and Zhang Sukun were already sitting at the negotiation table in the office. They signed the contract rather quickly. Li Haiyan was very happy to deal with such a talented leader. Yang Chun smiled. He too was pleased with the cooperation with the man. Zhang Sukun said that he had already contributed most of the amount. Only 80 million remained to be added, the young man thought. He had another 90 million in virtual currency to spend. The meeting was over and all the participants left the meeting. Only Yang Chen remained in the room. He stared at the screen of the phone. The young man remembered that one of the quick investments of virtual currency is gifts on live broadcasts. He logged on to one of the girls' live stream and sent her an expensive gift. The streamer asked if he needed a wife. Yang Chen wrote to the girl that he had recently opened his agency and was offering a well-paying job. Unfortunately, even the expensive gifts only took two million. The young man put his feet up on the table, thinking about how best to spend the money. That evening, the last order was placed outside a nightclub. Two girls in high heels immediately ran up to the black car. Yang Chen called out the application code. The girl in the blue blouse and jeans was tipsy. She confirmed the request with a slurred tongue. Her friend behaved more appropriately. She demanded that her companion immediately fasten her seatbelt. Paying no attention to her friend, the girl leaned her head toward the window and began to hum pop tunes merrily. The driver demanded to move away immediately. Sticking your head out the window while driving is quite dangerous. The sober traveling companion was fed up with it, and she grabbed the girl's hands, pulling her away from the window by force. At that moment, the drunken passenger regretted that she was not traveling with her boyfriend. The other girl replied that she didn't have to be a man. The fingers of their hands intertwined in a burst of feeling. Suddenly Yang Chen realized that the customer was nauseous and asked to use the bags lying on the back seat. Covering her mouth with her hand, the cheerful passenger declared that she was absolutely fine. The driver had just imagined it. Turning around to the female customers, Yang Chen friendly informed them that their car has arrived at the location. He asked them not to forget their belongings. Suddenly the young man saw that the female passengers were no longer in the car. As soon as the car stopped, they jumped out like a scalded man. Opening the back door of the cab, the driver realized what was wrong. That girl still couldn't stand it. She threw up right on the seat. Yang Chen angrily demanded that they stop immediately. But the girls ran away without even responding to his shouts. The young man ran after the customers, but had to stop helplessly. None of the passers-by looked like those girls. At the same time, the girls stood a meter away from him, peering out from around the corner. They were very glad that they had been able to escape so quickly. After looking at the app's notifications, the customer indignantly yelled that the driver had charged them $500 to wash their car. Her traveling companion was also angry and advised her friend to put a bad review on the trip. He deserved it. For this review, Yang Chen received 20% of the shares of an international medical company. Its head, Thomas Robinson, sat at the table. The man ordered the secretary to be summoned and asked the girl to contact that shareholder for a conversation. The branch manager in China, Zhang Xinmiao, was very satisfied. Now their department will have more weight in the company meetings. The man called a secretary over the conference call and asked to contact Yang Chen as soon as possible for a face-to-face -face meeting. The young man stopped by one of the 24-hour car washes at the time and had no idea that he had become very popular. When he answered the phone, the surprised young man learned that he was receiving a call from the United States. The CEO personally congratulated him on his stock purchase. Tom Robinson was pleased to hear that the young businessman was interested in the profits of the company and hoped for a substantial dividend. He was ready to pay the young man a million dollars annually, but the interlocutor made it clear that he was busy. He needed to continue working in a cab. The man banged his fist angrily on the table. He had no idea that a cab driver in China could buy their stock. Late in the evening, Yang Chen arrived at his luxury villa. Yushi met him in the lobby with the contract. She had managed to negotiate the copyright. The young man looked incredulously at the convenient terms of the deal. The secretary worriedly suggested that she had miscalculated the price. The boss smiled and gave the girl a thumbs up as a sign of approval. He informed her that he was satisfied with the price. Yushi smiled shyly and thanked her boss. She invited her host to the table. They have a lot of dishes for dinner tonight. The next day, Yang Chen took a cab to the agreed place. An acquaintance was waiting for him there. Zhao Yun revealed that she was standing at the entrance wearing a white t-shirt and jean shorts. Yang Chen asked where exactly she could be found. The girl misunderstood and replied that it was on her thighs, meaning her shorts. The driver said angrily that he meant where she herself was. While Zhao Yun was pondering her answer, Yang Chen shouted that he could already see where she was and waved his hand. The girl turned around. Sitting down in the back seat, the passenger laughed embarrassedly at having misunderstood his question. Yang Chen laughed in response and asked where to go. It turned out that her teacher was lying in a cancer hospital. The driver started the engine and pushed the pedal to the floor. He asked the girl to buckle up. They would be going quite fast. 
Zhao Yun was very happy with the trip. She waved goodbye to her acquaintance. The young man was also happy to meet her. When the girl left, Yang Chen saw a very familiar silhouette through the window. It was his teacher Chen. The young man immediately jumped out of the car and asked what the woman was doing on the grounds of this cancer hospital. The teacher was happy to see the young man. It had been too long. She didn't think Yang Chen would recognize her. The young man stepped closer. The woman worriedly asked him to keep his distance. She was sick and didn't want to infect him. Ignoring this, Yang Chen hugged the teacher tightly and asked why she left then and didn't warn anyone. The woman cried. She said that John Nish's creditors had switched to their family. She didn't want to involve anyone. The young man asked what exactly Miss Chen was sick with. The teacher replied that she had liver cancer and had not much time left. Yang Chen almost cried. Sincere worry was reflected in his eyes. He felt sorry that there was nothing he could do to help. She said she had lived enough and asked what he was doing here. She said she had lived enough and asked what he was doing here. The young man explained that he was just giving a friend a ride. Miss Chen asked to stay with her a little longer if time permitted. She said that their mutual acquaintance Yanni was due to arrive soon. They hadn't seen each other in years. The young man and the teacher went inside the room. Several visitors crowded around the bed on which the woman was lying. Zhao Yun asked in surprise what Yang Chen was doing here. Yang Tianming jealously inquired who it was. The girl turned to him and replied in surprise that it was her friend. He was giving her a ride to the hospital. The young man calmed down. He was a secret admirer of Zhao Yun and so he inquired about what exactly her friend was doing. Yang Chen came closer and admitted that he works as a cab driver. Yang Tianming raised his hand in a friendly manner and introduced himself. The woman in the hospital bed raised her hand cordially. She was pleased that Miss Chen had come to see her again. The teacher smiled at her colleague. She noted that several students had come to see her, but Chen herself had only one. Suddenly, the doors of the room opened. Teacher Zhang Yanni's daughter walked into the room. The girl was wearing a beautiful blue dress. Miss Chen cheerfully told Yanni that one of her old friends had come to visit her today. The young man waved to the girl in a friendly manner. She cried when she recognized her classmate. Yanni was overwhelmed with emotions. The girl was very much worried. She threw herself into Yang Chen's arms, unable to hold back her tears, and confusingly began to tell him that she was very worried about her mother. The young man hugged Yanni tightly and confidently told the girl that everything would be fine. Her mother would definitely pull through. Zhao Yun and her classmate watched Yanni and Yang Chen meet. The girl looked sadly at her acquaintance. Chen Ming wasn't indifferent either. He was amazed that the cab driver had such a cute childhood friend. Miss Chen comforted Zhang Yanni as best she could and said that everything would be fine. Yang Chen looked at them sadly. At that moment, quick footsteps sounded in the corridor. The doctors returned to the ward with a report on the progress of the disease. It turned out that modern technology could perform the surgery, but it was their hospital that would not take it because of the woman's age. Tian Ming asked for advice on who to go to. He hinted that his father would donate more money to the hospital. One of the doctors remarked that this operation would require the best specialists. He had no such people in mind. The young man boastfully stated that his father owns a chain of supermarkets and they have money. He asked only to be told where to find doctors. After some thought, the doctor advised me to contact an international medical company with this question. Yang Chen heard the whole conversation. He wanted to believe that his company's employees would be able to save the teacher. Zhao Yun exclaimed that this company's services would be very expensive. They even refused to accept health insurance. The man stated that he could not say anything else. He reminded that we need to act faster. Every day counts. The doctor left the room. Tian Ming said that money didn't matter. They needed to cure their teacher. Now the only hope was in the young man. Tian Ming, proud of himself, said that he would contact his father and solve everything. Zhang Yani ran up to him and reminded him of her mother. The young man smiled and promised to help the woman. The girl thanked her savior fervently. Yang Chen didn't pay any attention to them at all. He had more important things to do. The young man contacted the head of a medical company in China. Zhang Sen Miao agreed to examine the woman at his place. As soon as Yang Chen finished his correspondence, Yang Tian Ming approached him. The young man didn't understand what was wanted from him at first. The rich and confident guy hinted that he had his eye on Zhao Yun and Zhang Yani. He could help the teacher if Yang Chen backed out. After waving goodbye, Tian Ming demanded to make a decision quickly. This completely confused the young man. Miss Chen and Zhang Yani were standing in the lobby of the hospital. Yang Chen approached them and offered to give the teacher a ride. The woman was very pleased. She apologized for taking up too much of the young man's free time. They went down to the first floor of the hospital and joined the rest of the students who were waiting for the doctors. The oncology specialist and his assistant appeared on the doorstep. The man asked which one of them was Mr. Yang. The young man immediately proudly stuck out his chest and pounded his fist on it. He was happy to show everyone that his name decided everything. The man introduced himself. 
His name is Wang Zhong Jin, the hospital director ordered the examination of the teacher. The boy led the doctor to his teacher. The man asked the patient to follow him for an examination. The teacher was helped out of her bunk. As if apologizing, she told Miss Chen that it would soon be her turn to be examined. One of the classmates in a brown dress stood beside Tian Ming and admired how quickly he had organized everything. The young man became even more proud and said condescendingly that he could fulfill any request if he only asked. Zhang Yani apologized and let go of her mother's hand. She told Miss Chen that she would be right back. She needed to go out. Unsuspecting, the girl left the room and hurriedly went about her business. Suddenly, Tian Ming called out to her. Zhang Yani turned around embarrassed. She didn't expect to see this boastful guy with rich parents here. The young man put his arm around her shoulders and offered to have a snack together. He would definitely arrange for her mother to be examined tomorrow. The girl immediately burst out and turned around to face him. She angrily exclaimed that Tian Ming was letting himself go too much. Smiling lustfully, the young man declared that nothing was free, and such a beauty should understand that. Tian Ming suggested that the girl take her time to answer and think carefully. Perhaps her mother would still be alive by then. Zhang Yani could barely contain herself, her hands clenched into fists by herself. Unfortunately, a dear person's life depended on this boar. Yang Chen noticed the saddened girl out of the corner of his eye. Right now he was worried about Zhang Sen Miao. He still hadn't sent the doctors. The young man was tired of waiting. He took the phone out of his pocket with the firm intention of saying everything he thought about the branch director. Yang Chen angrily reported that he had been waiting for specialists for an hour, and still no one had come to the hospital yet. The man stated that it was impossible. Dr. Wang had already called him and told him that he had accepted the teacher for examination. The young man became even more angry. Yes, Zhang Jin had indeed arrived at the hospital, but he was currently busy with another patient. Zhang Sen Miao realized that there was a serious mistake. He promised to call back the doctors right away and settle the matter. At this moment, the culprit of the incident, Tian Ming, was calmly washing his hands and did not suspect anything. A notification came to his phone. His powerful father finally replied that he couldn't do anything. He had no connections with the international hospital. Yang Tian Ming began to suspect that it was time to leave the hospital. His relatives had nothing to do with him at all. At the exit, Wang Zhang Jin caught him and said that he and his assistant had finished examining the patient. The young man tried his best to hide his panic. He said in a voice trembling with fear that the doctor had good news. The room was packed with all the students. Dr. Wang reported that Yang is a shareholder in the company, and the teacher will receive close care. Zhao Yun looked at the young man with loving eyes. She asked why Tian Ming hadn't confessed before. The teacher was very pleased. She said that her life was now in the hands of the young man. She trusted him. Tian Ming looked around and asked where Teacher Chen had gone. It turned out that a few nurses had moved her to another room. The clouds were getting thicker and thicker. The young man lied that his father had called him and demanded that he come home immediately. At this moment, Sen Miao together with the director entered the ward. The head of the clinic was indignant. He gave Dr. Wang clear instructions. Yang Tin Ming was so nervous that he was drenched in sweat. He realized that his deception would be revealed any minute now. Wang Zhongjin was quite surprised to see Director Li in the chamber. He asked the man why he had come. The branch manager turned black with anger. He stated that Wang should have just taken care of the shareholder's teacher, but he did nothing. The puzzled specialist pointed his finger at Young and explained that he had performed the examination for him as requested. Director Li couldn't take it anymore and shouted that Mr. Yang had nothing to do with it. Their shareholder's name is something else entirely. Wang Zhongjin began to realize that he had just been tricked. He slowly shifted his gaze to Tian Ming. The young man immediately admitted that he was not a shareholder. Now Specialist Wang had already lost his temper and angrily shouted that Yang should have reported it right away and not deceive people. Tian Ming only had one last argument left. With a trembling voice, he revealed that he was sure that his father had tried his best. Zhang Sen Miao stopped their squabbling and said that they should find the real shareholder as soon as possible. He resented it. The company's top executives and doctors ran out into the hallway. They had to work very hard to regain their trust. Tian Ming silently watched them. The teacher asked the young man with interest what was going on here and what all the obnoxious noise in the ward was about. Yang Tian Ming didn't want to lie even more, so he evasively told the patient that he didn't really know. Zhang Sen Miao entered the chamber and introduced himself. He expressed his sincere regrets about what had happened. Miss Chen looked at the men who entered in surprise. She realized that they had come for a reason, but she didn't understand what had happened. Director Li stepped forward and introduced himself, shaking the young man's hand firmly. He was glad for the opportunity to make amends. The mother and daughter froze with undisguised surprise in their eyes. They couldn't believe that the clinic director was treating Yang Chen like this. Meanwhile, Mr. Li bowed politely to the young man and asked him to apologize for not specifying his client's full name. Yang Chen condescendingly said that everything was already in the past. 
Now he was only interested in the treatment of this patient. Zheng Senmiao called for specialist Zhang Jin and demanded that the woman be brought in immediately for a full examination. The young man smiled and asked Miss Chen to go with the doctors for an examination. He stated that all her wishes would be honored. Yang Chen said that he recently acquired 20% of the shares of an international company. These people will do everything. Zhang Yani was even more surprised because she knew that the guy worked as a cab driver. The young man replied that it didn't stop him from buying stocks. The girl almost burst into tears. She remembered that bad conversation. It was a pity that Yang Chen only told the truth now. Crimson with anger, Zhang Yani turned around to leave. She was serious about beating up that boorish and insolent person. It didn't take long to find the boy. He himself came to Miss Chen's room together with the teacher. The girl was slightly surprised at the pleasant coincidence. Showering Tian Ming with a hail of curses, Zhang Yani slapped his fist on his left cheek with all her might and explained the reason. The teacher was extremely surprised by the young man's ungenerous act and said that he should apologize immediately. Tian Ming grabbed his swollen cheek and wailed that he was just joking and the girl actually dared to hit him. Unable to control himself because of his emotions, the young man lunged at Zhang Yani and tried to hit her. Yang Chen grabbed his wrist. He looked coldly at the cocky youngster and asked in a calm voice why he had decided to do this. The teacher now looked at Tian Ming in a completely different way. She exclaimed that the guy had just lost his mind. The young man was angry. He yelled that he wasn't going to apologize. He would call his father and his men would come to the hospital. Zhang Yani looked thoughtfully at the fleeing young man and confessed to Yang Chen that she couldn't help herself and hit Tian Ming. The guy replied that she was in no danger now. He was ready to help her at any moment if someone else was harassing her. The girl smiled embarrassedly and thanked him for everything. Miss Chen walked out of the room. She was embarrassed that the young man had gone to so much trouble. Yang Chen smiled and walked closer to Zhang Yani. He gently touched her cheek and said that it would be good for her to be examined as well. Both women left. The teacher approached him, accompanied by the remaining students, and expressed her regret. She admitted that she was a pretty bad classroom teacher. That's why there was so much drama here. The young man smiled and stated that she was wrong. It wasn't her fault here at all. That guy had nothing to do with her. The teacher was afraid that Tian Ming would cause her to be treated worse. She asked Zhao Yun to influence her friend. The woman was so nervous that she had to wipe her face with a handkerchief. She couldn't understand how things could have gone so far. Zhang Sen Miao witnessed the recent conflict and asked Yang Chen if he needed help. The young man said he could handle it by himself. At this moment, an angry Yang Tian Ming burst into the room and gloatingly said that he had already called uncle and father. They would be here soon. Yang Chen smiled. He said that no amount of connections would help the young man regain his lost dignity. The branch manager asked in surprise how his relatives could even afford to attack a shareholder. Tian Ming smirked. He had recently talked to his father, and he had explained to him that the third shareholder in the company was not something to be afraid of. Zhang Sen Miao slowly said that the young man simply did not grasp the direct connection between their international company and the hospital. The man asked Yang Chen not to worry about anything. He would make sure that this young man left the building himself. The branch manager ordered his men to take Tian Ming out. He was stubborn and asked to wait until his father arrived. Zhao Yun's entire attention had now turned to Yang Chen. She looked at him with the same loving eyes as she had recently looked at his rival. The girl asked him if he could help their teacher at the same time. Yang Chen immediately agreed because he had a dispute with only that guy. Zhao Yun threw herself into her friend's arms and kissed her tightly, closing her eyes. She immediately blushed red from embarrassment. The girl whispered that Yang Chen might misunderstand her a bit, but they were friends after all. The satisfied young man replied that it was fine. At this moment, the stomping of feet could be heard in the corridor. The relatives of the offended Tian Ming rushed to his rescue. The young man almost whimpered like a child at the sight of the family and asked for help. Yang Gu asked who dared to hurt his son. Yang Tian Ming now felt that he had power in this city. He ran forward and swung the door to the chamber with a kick of his foot. Pointing his finger at Yang Chen, the young man squealed that he was the one causing trouble. The boy replied that there was no need to complain to his parents. The man shouted fiercely that he himself had never once raised a hand against his son. No one dares slap him. The teacher guiltily said that everything happened because of her illness. That's why her students gathered in the ward. Yang Gu angrily said that he knows her situation. But the woman has nothing to do with it. He only wants the one who insulted her son. Zhao Yun couldn't stand it and shouted that it was Qian Ming's own fault. She revealed that the guy had rightly been slapped. The young man's father turned to him and angrily asked if this girl was telling the truth. Qian Ming shouted that he was just joking. Yang Chen laughed and said that the young man himself was to blame for what happened. There was nothing to offend an honest girl. Yang Gu became enraged. He shouted that the guy just didn't realize who he was dealing with, so he dared to talk like that. The young man laughed and said that as an ordinary chairman of a supermarket chain, the man would not do anything to him. 
Yang Gu decided to go tricky and whispered in his son's ear to quickly pretend to feel sick. Qian Ming immediately grimaced and stated that he had a very bad headache. He might vomit right now. Staggering, the young man fell to the floor and exclaimed that he had to be examined. He might have a concussion. Yang Chen smiled and suggested that he talk to his lawyer, Zhang Xiang. The man turned pale. He knew that lawyer was no joke. The young man explained that he was a senior partner in a law firm, in addition to shares in a multinational corporation. The man realized that things had taken a completely different turn and ordered his supposedly sick son to get up off the floor. Yang Gu smiled and said that there was a slight misunderstanding. He suggested that we just forget about the incident. Yang Chen stated that it is too late. No one can threaten to retaliate and quietly leave. The lawyer is already aware of this case. The man smiled and once again tried to smooth over the conflict. He promised to punish the son who had caused the incident. Yang Tianming turned pale. In this situation, his father actually had to take his side. But things happened differently. The angry Yang Gu kicked his son forward hard. He loudly reprimanded the boy who was roaring with resentment and demanded that he apologize to Yang Chen immediately. Suddenly, someone knocked on the door of the room. A solid-looking man in an expensive suit crossed the threshold of the room. Zhang Xiang arrived with all the necessary papers. He smiled and asked his business partner what had happened. Yang Gu began to panic. Not long ago, he thought the guy was bluffing, but the guy had really called this lawyer. The young man smiled and suggested that the Yang family discuss all matters with lawyer Zhang. The man smirked gloatingly. This was an easy case. Yang Gu pleaded not to involve a lawyer in this case. That little misunderstanding they could settle on their own. Zhang Xiang stopped smiling and said that it was not for him to decide. He asked the man to step aside for further conversation. In full view of everyone, the lawyer led him out of the room under his arm. On the way, the man begged the lawyer to listen to him and not to judge him harshly. Meanwhile, Miss Chen and Wang Zhongjin returned to the room. The doctor said he would be able to provide a treatment plan tomorrow. Yang Chen was very satisfied that the operation would take place. He smiled warmly and asked to take the best possible care of his teacher. The man demanded that the woman be immediately transferred to a more comfortable room. The assistant rushed to fulfill the order. Miss Chen tried to protest and stated that she felt fine in the general ward. She didn't need the frills. Yang Chen put his hand on her shoulder and asked her to just follow the doctor's orders. It would be better. The young man said goodbye to Zhang Yani and asked him to take care of his mother. The girl asked if she could come to visit him later. The guy smiled warmly. Yang Chen stated that Zhang Yani is like a sister to him. The doors of his house are always open to her. A young man was driving across the city bridge and saw a tall girl in a blue dress. She was heading towards the railings of the bridge. Right in front of the driver, a stranger tried to climb over the railing of the bridge. He knew immediately what she was up to. Yang Chen ran out of the car when the girl had already dangled her feet down. She asked how rich his family was. The young man smiled at this straightforwardness. He stated that he earned money in a cab. He never had a lot of money. Li Yun cried and said through her tears that it would not be bad at all if he turned out to have a lot of money. Yang Chen asked why she was so concerned about the money issue. Without turning around, the girl replied that in that case, she could marry him. She declared that she didn't care to marry someone she didn't like, and better a stranger than that Zhou Bin. The young man said that her dress looked expensive. It didn't look like a girl like that had money problems. She sobbed and explained that her father was forcing her to marry a man she didn't love. Just thinking about it makes her not want to live. Yan Yun was too distracted and let go of her hands, causing her body to slide down the railing of the bridge. Yang Chen rushed to the girl's rescue, reaching out his hands to her as he went. He could not allow such a ridiculous death. Fortunately, the young man was in time. He managed to grab the beauty's hand at the last moment and prevent her from falling. Yan Yun tearfully demanded to let go of her hand. She was in a lot of pain. Out of fear, he tried not to look down. Yang Chen explained in surprise that falling from such a height into the water would cause her body to suffer the same injuries as when she came into contact with concrete. This made the girl take a different view of the situation. She demanded to be dragged onto the bridge. She didn't want a painful death. Pulling Yan Yun onto the railing of the bridge, the young man said that she didn't need to die at all. She is young and beautiful. Everything is still ahead of her. The rescued cutie shook her head contritely. In their time, money plays a big role. It's not worth living without it at all. Yang Chen was surprised that the girl had taken up again. A second ago, she had almost died and didn't even think about it. The young man realized that it was useless to talk further and said goodbye to her. Yan Yun shouted back that she regretted that he was just a cab driver. Early in the morning, the phone rang in the villa. Yang Chen began to yawn and stretch sweetly, starting to wake up. Turns out he got a call from the same girl who almost committed suicide on the bridge yesterday. Yang Chen asked where she got the license plate number. 
Yun Yun said she figured it out from the license plate through a cab driver program. She stated that she had booked his car at the amusement park for today and asked the young man not to be late. The girl saw a black cab pulling up from afar and asked to leave the car outside. They would be resting in the park. Yang Chen was surprised and offered to find another person if Yan Yun didn't need a car ride. He already had a lot of things to do. The blue-eyed beauty smiled and offered to just enjoy her free time, getting paid for it. The young man frowned and said he had to go about his business. No one could just buy his personal time. The girl ran up to the cab and asked it to stop. She offered just a ride if the walk didn't suit her. Yang Chen sighed heavily and pressed the door release button. He realized that Yan Yun would not unhook from him. Sitting in the front seat, the beautiful woman asked to be taken to the outskirts of the city. She would pay for the time and gasoline, and a thousand yuan on top of that. After a little thought, the young man offered to take her to a coastal resort. The girl gladly agreed. In fact, Yang Chen suggested going to the coastal resort for a reason. He wanted to see for himself how his business was doing. As soon as the black cab pulled away from the amusement park, it was tailed by a big blue car. The driver reported that Yan Yun got into an unknown vehicle. The second caller asked the driver to follow the subject's movements. When Yang Chen arrived at the resort, he noticed that none of the employees were working. Lazily leaning on the table, they were drinking beer. The girl got out of the car and surprisingly stated that she had been to this resort three years ago. But now everything looked different. No one was working. The young man said that you can't leave it like that. You have to complain. His companion laughed. No one would pay attention to complaints. Yang Chen indignantly said that they were obliged to work because he was paying their wages out of his own pocket. Yan Yun immediately stopped laughing. She asked what the young man meant when he said he was paying them money. The guy irritatedly called the manager and complained that the staff was inactive. They could lose customers that way. The man apologized for not being able to supervise. He had to attend to other things related to the resort. The manager promised to provide the best service immediately. The young man's companion asked with interest what he had been told. Yang Chen smiled and suggested that the beauty wait a bit, she would see for herself. The girl said that he was being overconfident. A voice came from the loudspeaker and warned that the employees would be fired if they did not work. Everyone grabbed their brooms and went about their duties. Yan Yun was very impressed. She couldn't believe that an ordinary complaint was able to influence the resort staff. Yang Chen proudly said that after such a thing, they just have to provide the best service to their visitors. On the way, the girl proposed to conclude a fake marriage. The young man refused. He might just fall in love with her in that case. The pretty girl laughed. She assumed that with a sense of humor like that, the guy must have had a lot of girls. The girl took Yang Chen under her arm and chatted sweetly with him on the way to the compound. They didn't notice that they were being filmed from behind. After lunch, the young man drove Yan Yun to the villa. She left the black car with a smile and waved her hand in a friendly manner. No sooner had the young man started the engine than some respectable man in glasses knocked demandingly on the side window. Yang Chen rolled down his window and asked what he wanted. The man replied that his boss wanted to talk to him. He led the guy over to a white car and asked to speak to his boss. He's waiting in the back seat. The elderly bearded man turned out to be Li Yang Yun's father. He carelessly handed the young man a check for half a million yuan. Yang Chen laughed and asked what this meant. He said that he was not interested in male persons at all. Li Lian Shun explained what the matter was. He wanted his daughter to just give up on this young man. The young man stated that usually in such cases we are talking about millions, and the man offered him only 500,000. Lian Shun frowned and demanded to settle for what was offered. Otherwise, he was not responsible for the consequences. Yang Chen realized that it was better not to argue now, and hid the check in his pocket. In any case, half a million was also money. He thanked the man and said goodbye. Lian Shun shouted back that he expected him to fulfill the terms of the deal. Yang Chen moved into his car and buckled up. As soon as he started the engine, he realized that the exit was blocked. There were three cars directly in front of him. A black BMW pulled up closer. Two white sedans occupied both lanes. The door of the black car opened. The driver in an expensive suit stepped out leisurely and looked at his opponent. Yang Chen suggested that the young man block the road for the purpose of robbery. Zhou Bin said he understood who he was dealing with. A tall guy with two protruding front teeth introduced himself to Yang Chen. The young man now understood why the groom didn't like Yan Yun. Zhou Bin handed over a check for 200,000 and demanded to forget about her. In their family, their reputation is very precious. No one should know about the cab driver. Yang Chen got cocky and told the guy that 200,000 was too small an amount for him to forget about Yan Yun. Zhou Bin shouted that it was already too much. If it wasn't for the solid deal made the other day, he wouldn't have given so much. The young man calmly replied that 200,000 would make absolutely no difference. Another 100,000 should be added to that amount. The girl's fiancé thought for a moment. 
He could afford to spend that kind of money in exchange for this kid to leave the girl alone. Joe Bin handed the guy another check for 100000 Yang Chen promised that he wouldn't even go near Yan Yun now. The groom began to like this approach. He promised that he would give the young man a membership card for his chain of stores after they opened. Joe Bin ran to his car. Yang Chen was also very satisfied. Before he had even started working, he had earned a lot of money. At the address of the next order stood a girl in a green dress. The young man clarified the order number and offered to take a seat in the back. Li Xiaoying sat on the seat and said that she needed to get to Minhua Garden. The driver outlined the best route. The young man started the engine and began driving along the established route, smoothly depressing the clutch. The passenger angrily clenched her fists and yelled that the driver shouldn't have left so quickly. Yang Chen smiled and asked what was wrong. As far as he knew, the application form had specified that the passenger would be alone. Li Xiaoying wailed that the driver should check the safety of the car, and he didn't even adjust the seat of his car. The young man calmly replied that it was his personal vehicle, and he had checked its safety before traveling. The finicky customer was getting more and more agitated. She was sure that the driver had bought a license. He even held the steering wheel incorrectly. After a few minutes, Xiaoying got tired of arguing, and she quieted down. Yang Chen couldn't understand where this weirdo came from. A female passenger exclaimed that she was starting to feel nauseous. The young man humbly replied that he was driving evenly without acceleration. Stopping the cab at Minghua Garden, the driver announced his arrival and asked Xiao Ying not to forget her things. The disgruntled customer left the vehicle and muttered that she would never use that cab again. After muttering to the driver that she was going to vomit, the girl walked away in a business-like manner. Yang Chen calmly drove on. Suddenly the ringtone of Xiao Ying's forgotten phone played in the cabin. The ringtone sounded stronger and more insistent. The young man was angry, for he had clearly told that obnoxious customer not to forget her things in the cab. He picked up the phone. Li Xiaoying reported that she had forgotten her phone. She would wait for him at the place where she left. As they approached the entrance to Minhua Garden, Yang Chen stopped between two crosswalks and handed the girl the phone through the window. To his surprise, the passenger angrily yelled that he was coming back too slowly she already wanted to call the police. The young man recalled that he asked the girl not to forget anything, but still she left her phone and was still going to call the police. He got out of the car and offered to call the police. Xiao Ying shouted that she was the financial director of a supermarket chain. Yang Chen calmly replied that the customer has the right to leave a bad review, but as the CFO, there is nothing she can do to him. The girl was angry and wagged her finger at him. She promised that after a while the young man would regret his words. Yang Chen got into the cab and slammed the door irritably. This crazy woman had ruined his mood. The cab service app received a new notification. As you might expect, Xiao Ying put in a bad review. Yang Chen was angry. He vowed to buy out Longliang's supermarket chain. Then she herself would be out of a job. The system notice pleased him. It turned out that the young man had received 46% of the Longliang network for a bad review. The system administrator jumped into the guy's lap. He thanked her profusely, just the reward he needed right now. Plus, it turned out that the system would give him back half the cost of the company, provided the young man purchased it outright. Yang Chen was overjoyed and decided to have Yu Shi withdraw the money from the bank tomorrow. The only thing left would be to buy the company. Pu Chun Hua, chairman of the company, graciously welcomed the new shareholder and gave details about their chain of stores. The man asked the guest who would manage the store chain in the future. Yang Chen smiled and said that he would leave him in that position. Chun Hua bowed politely and thanked him for his trust. The young man said he wanted to know something. He showed the manager a video of a recent trip with a scandalous lady and asked if he knew such a woman. The man said with surprise that it was their CFO Li Xiaoying. He couldn't believe that the woman dared to talk like that. Yang Chen demanded her immediate dismissal without negotiation and compensation. Xiaoying is ruining their company's image. Chun Hua promised that he would do it right away. He invited the guest to go to the office and read the company report. After a while, Li Xiaoying demandingly knocked on the door of the company manager's office. From the very doorstep, the woman angrily began to resent that Chairman Pu had fired her without a valid reason. It was only now that she was surprised to see that cab driver sitting in the manager's chair and wondered what he was doing here. Chun Hua revealed that this was their major shareholder. He showed a video from the car. With her behavior, Xiao Ying defamed the company's image, so she was fired. The girl couldn't believe that the cab driver had shares in the company. Moreover, they would lose about a billion if she was fired. Yang Chen frowned and said that it was none of her business. Xiao Ying begged for an indulgence, but the new headmaster stood firm. A former employee gloated that even under her leadership the company was losing money. Now they will go bankrupt even faster. Chun Hua started to get angry and exclaimed that he would call security if the girl didn't leave their company right now. Xiao Ying walked out. The chairman apologized for the girl's behavior. 
Yang Chun replied that it was not his fault. The woman was making fun of the company. He asked if the Ling Loan Company was really suffering serious losses. The man said he was ashamed. It was true. The chairman stated that he had several ideas for deliveries at one time, but there was no way to implement the plan now. Yang Chen was interested. It turned out that Qinhua was considering buying an overseas chain store to reduce import prices. The young man complimented the chairman and took the report with interest. He said he would consider such an option in the near future. The shareholder asked if there were any specific proposals. The man suggested two most promising targets to choose from. Yang Chen looked over the information. He asked the chairman to organize talks with representatives of both companies. Qin Hua warmly thanked the young man for his support. He assured that he would do his best to save the company. Yang Chen said goodbye and left the office. The chairman bowed in farewell and wished the new manager a good day. The business was over. Now he could have some fun. The young man dialed the number of his new acquaintance, Zhou Bin. He asked me to send a girl to his room tonight, but it has to look like a blind date and not arouse suspicion. At the appointed time, a red-haired girl with brightly painted lips knocked on the room. She said that Li Lian Xiong had sent her. The girl asked to follow her and led her to a large table with drinks and food. She offered to choose a drink. Out of the corner of his eye, Yang Chen noticed Li Lian Xiong and his daughter Yan Yun walking past him down the corridor. She was surprised that Yang Chen was also here and walked closer. The young man pointed to a girl in a tight black mini and said that she was just a customer. The girl introduced herself as Yang Chen's fiancée. She hoped that Yan Yun understood everything correctly and wouldn't bother them anymore. The girl almost roared with resentment. She was bitter to hear that this handsome man actually had a fiancé. Pulling herself together, Li Yan Yun proudly turned around, hiding her tears. She promised that she would never bother the couple again. Seeing the saddened and crying daughter, Li Yan Xiong rejoiced in his heart. Yang Chen had indeed kept his word. The girl had the feeling that the whole world had turned against her. The girl felt as if the whole world had turned against her. Meanwhile, the hotel clerk asked permission to leave. Her role was done, and there was no need to stay any longer. Li Yan Yun noticed with interest that Yang Chen's fiancé was leaving the hall. She decided to take advantage of it. The girl came to the table and with a face reddened from alcohol, she asked where the guy's fiancé had gone. After hearing that she had left, Yan Yun asked why he himself was still at the table. Yang Chen calmly replied that the food was very expensive. He couldn't leave it behind. The interlocutor asked how he got a fiancé in the first place. She admitted that she had hoped that their relationship would develop. Yang Chen stated that she had too much to drink. She should go back to her table. People might misunderstand them if they see them together. Li Yan Yun sat on the young man's lap and hugged his neck. She reminded him that she wanted to have a non-marital relationship with him. At this moment, Zhou Bing's loud voice resounded in the hall. Taking the microphone in his hands, he asked for the attention of everyone present. His assistants unfurled a huge marriage proposal banner. The man wanted the whole audience to see it. Lian Xiong thanked the young man for his attention and explained that his daughter had gone to the restroom. She would be back soon. The two interlocutors were very surprised when they heard Yang Chen's loud voice. The guy shouted that Miss Li was in the hall. The young man walked out from behind the table, forcing the girl hugging him to rise with him while simultaneously trying to politely push her away. Lian Xiong couldn't believe that the situation had changed so quickly. He worriedly asked his daughter what was going on. Yang Chen kept trying to get rid of the intrusive girl and rudely told her to leave. Yan Yun stayed where she was, as if she didn't understand the hints. Zhou Bing became angry and clenched his fists. He asked his fiance what she was doing at that table with a stranger. Lian Xiong worriedly asked his future son-in-law to be a little calmer. They didn't need to attract a lot of attention. As she approached the annoyed groom, Yan Yun demanded to step aside. She needed to go to the restroom. Zhou Bing couldn't believe that everything was happening in reality and became angry. Lian Xiong excitedly said that it was a small misunderstanding. He explained that to realize their project, he had paid off Yang Chen with money and hired a woman to act out the scene. Everything would have been fine, but he didn't leave with her. Zhou Bing surprisingly admitted that he too had given the young man 300,000 to leave his fiance alone and stay away from her. He stated that Yang Chen was very cunning. The young man replied that they had both offered him money themselves, so it was foolish to refuse it. At this moment, Yan Yun herself came to their table. She noticed that all three of them were acting as if they knew each other. The girl looked from one man to the other in surprise, confused. She asked confusedly what was going on here. Zhou Bing shouted that that guy took their money and met with another woman for the sake of stopping seeing her. Li Yan Yun couldn't believe that she had been cheated out of money. She asked if it was true. The young man admitted that he had received 800,000. Zhou Bing was pleased with himself. He knew that an ordinary cab driver like this couldn't even dream of a beauty like Yan Yun. 
To everyone's surprise, the girl threw herself into Yang Chen's arms and offered to date her since he was no longer poor. The girl's father demanded that the outrage stop. He was ashamed in front of the guests. Zhou Bin couldn't believe that he had helped the guy with his money. Yan Yun indignantly stated that she doesn't like Zhou Bin. Besides, she doesn't understand why she would chase away a person she likes. Zhou Bing indignantly declared that the cab driver who agreed to leave the girl alone for money was unworthy of her attention. Bell countered that it was a pretty smart move. He just involved them in his game and got the money. So she made her choice. Zhou Bing approached the young man and grudgingly said that he had failed to fulfill what he had promised. He demanded the check back. Yang Chen laid out the check and pressed his palm against the table. He suggested the man go and get it himself if he wasn't afraid. Zhou Bing became angry and assumed that the interlocutor was trying to intimidate him. He boastfully said that he was not afraid of anyone and held out his hand. At the very moment he tried to take the written check, Yang Chen struck his elbow joint with a lightning fast movement. The infernal pain made the young man stop and crouch on his knee, clutching his bruise. Tears streamed from his eyes. Suddenly, three other men in business suits approached them. One of them demanded that the outrage be stopped immediately. Zhou Bing looked up and was surprised to recognize his father. He asked what the man's occasion was at the inn. It turned out that a big banquet of Longlian's trade group was scheduled for that evening with the company's major shareholders in attendance. The man realized and inquired about his son's well-being. He suggested that he go to the hospital. The young man refused. He only wanted revenge. Yang Chen made a secret sign to the chairman. Pu Qinghua realized that the young man wanted to keep his identity secret. Zhang Ming walked over to him and placed a hand on his shoulder. The man assured him that no one would dare to bully him again. Li Yunyan exclaimed that it was their business and spread her hands apart, not letting the chairman go any further. She demanded not to interfere. Lian Xiang grabbed his daughter's hand and asked her to shut up. Because of a flighty girl, the relationship with the man who could buy ten of their stores could deteriorate. The girl shouted that this conflict started precisely because of Zhou Bin. He should be punished immediately. The man is angry. He doesn't care about their internal conflicts, but he can't stay away when his brother is hurt. The guy explained to Yan Yun that he agreed to forget about everything if she would leave the cab driver. The girl refused, and Zhang claimed that she was causing a lot of trouble. Lian Xiong apologized for his daughter's behavior. The man suggested that she was badly brought up as a child. He's ready to take it on himself. Yan Yun shouted indignantly that he shouldn't talk to elders like that. She can see perfectly well that Zhang is ill-mannered. Lian Xiong could no longer tolerate his daughter's antics. He called her a brat and grabbed her arm, demanding her to leave with him. Zhang exclaimed that the girl was very cheeky and was behaving even cheekier than her father. This prank will cost them a lot of money. Yan Yun stated that he would not be able to intimidate anyone. The man was frightened and shouted at his daughter. He reminded her that he had told her to be quiet and swung. Yang Chen was alert. He saw that the girl did not notice the danger, and within a second he was beside her. The young man pulled her close to him. Picking Yan Yun up in his arms, he frowned, saying that the girl was being threatened, but instead of protecting her, he was beating his own daughter. The man clenched his fists and shouted that the common cab driver couldn't even stand up for himself and was going to teach him about life. Yang Chen revealed that Lian Xiong had acquired Zhou Hai's supply chain, giving him his stores in return. That's why he insists on the girl and Zhou Bin getting married. As proof, he showed a video of his conversation with the young man. Zhou Bin directly stated that he would be fabulously rich after the family merger. The man excitedly shouted that it was secretly filming. Yang Chen smiled and said that every cab has a video recorder. It is not forbidden. Lian Xiang realized that he had been tricked and angrily turned towards the guests. He indignantly said that Zhou Hai actually wanted to be related to him. The man glumly replied that he himself was no better. At one time, Lian Xiang had once staked out the Zhou family's supply chain, so they both had plans for the future. Yan Yun couldn't believe that everyone was just using her. The worst part was realizing that even her father had implemented his plan with her help. She couldn't stand it and roared. Zheng exclaimed that the cab driver knew how to stir up enmity. To intensify the conflict between the families, he took Li Yan Yun for himself. Zhou Bing shouted that he was absolutely right. It was because of this rogue that everything happened, so there was no need to waste time. It's time to teach him a lesson. Yang Chen disdainfully said that he would not even talk to him. He asked that Zhang call his father. The man nervously announced that he was losing patience. He admitted that he didn't usually bully weak kids, but it didn't matter now. Jing Hua watched their conflict and begged the heavens with all his heart for Zhang to calm down. He has no idea who is standing in front of him. Zhou Bing said that the guy was acting too arrogant. Zhang Ming suggested going outside to talk if he had the guts. Yang Chen said that he would gladly go out for some fresh air if he could get him outside the hotel. Zhang asked Zhou Bin to wait for him outside. He would now return with a guy who would answer all their questions. 
Jinghua asked furtively why Yang Chen did not want to reveal his identity. The young man replied that he had his own reasons, long to explain. Zhang Ming noticed the strange communication between the guy and the manager. He asked the chairman what they had in common. The man replied that his car broke down, so he hired a cab driver. Zhang Ming said that Jing Hua was quite witty. Zhang Ming led the guy towards the exit. He was followed by six guards. The man asked if the young man was sure he could handle them all. Yang Chen turned around as he walked and smiled widely. He said that he didn't intend to fight anyone at all. He was misunderstood. Zhang Ming assumed that the young man was scared. He spread his hands and agreed to let Yang Chen go if he admitted his guilt. The boy pointed behind his back with his hand. If his guys were itching to get their hands on him, they'd better talk to the young man. Behind Yang Chen's back, about a dozen tough guys appeared. There was no doubt that they didn't mind fighting either. Zhang Ming was now scared himself and excitedly said that he shouldn't be beaten. He was a very respectable customer here. No one listened to him. The bodyguards started fighting with each other. Yang Chen dodged the guy's punch and scared him even more. The young man grabbed Zhang Ming's ear and started twisting it. He said that he would not touch him just because of respect for his father, but he should watch his actions from now on. The intense pain almost made the man cry. He asked indignantly who he was dealing with, suspecting it was more than just a cab driver. Yang Chen smiled widely and told his opponent that he was not actually wrong. He was in fact the most ordinary cab driver. At this moment, Li Yun ran up to him and excitedly asked how the young man was feeling and if he was injured. Hearing a familiar name, Zhang Ming turned pale and assumed that it was the same Yang Chen who had bought out 45% of Long Liang's shares. The young man smiled and reminded him that he had asked to speak to Zhang Ming's father. It was the man's own fault for not listening to him well. The girl couldn't believe that Yang Chen was so rich that he was able to buy a controlling stake in the retail chain. She happily grabbed his hand and dragged him behind her. Yun Yan stated that Lian Xiong would definitely be very happy to see them together. The young man said glumly that the girl had misunderstood him. He didn't really show any interest in her. Zhang Ming smiled and said that some people were originally very rich, so a guy didn't need to be together with her. The girl got angry and yelled at him to shut up. Today was clearly not her day. She had found out about the cab driver's wealth too late. Li Yunyan approached the young man and asked if he thought she was ugly. Yan replied to the girl that she was very beautiful. With tears in her eyes, the interlocutor asked why they couldn't be together. The guy stated that he did not like the type of girl she was. Yun Yan rushed away and screamed that she hated him. Yang Chen said that her logic was quite strange. Jiang Ming said that it was true. She is not used to receiving rejection and that is why she behaves like this. He apologized for Zhou Bin being rude to him. The young man clapped his interlocutor on the shoulder in a friendly manner and stated that he changes his mind faster than a woman. Yang Chen offered to teach Zhou Bing a little lesson. He asked to organize a meeting and invite Lian Xiong, Zhou Hai, and Pu Qinghua. Zhang Ming and his bodyguards returned to the banquet hall. He had a very aggressive expression on his face. Zhou Bing greeted the man with a smile on his face. He asked how it went and if the guy had been beaten up enough. The unexpected blow caused the young man himself to fall to the floor. He had never imagined that Zhang would hit him. Zhou Bing grabbed his cheek and roared. His father demanded an explanation as to why Zhang Ming had hit the young man. The young man replied glumly that it was only helping him to raise his son properly. Money does not solve all the problems in their lives. He called out loudly to the three men and demanded that they follow him. Zhou Hai couldn't understand what had occurred to him and where they were going. Opening the door, the young man looked inside and smiled. He announced that he had brought the men to discuss as Yang Chen had requested. After sipping some tea, the guy waved his hand carelessly. Zhang Ming bowed to him and said that he was already leaving. Zhou Hai couldn't believe his eyes. Stammering, he asked the guy he thought was a cab driver who he really was. Pu Qinghua smiled and introduced the young man. He holds a controlling interest in the Longliang supermarket retail chain. Zhou Hai couldn't believe that the cab driver had so much money. Lian Xiong suspected that all this time, Yang Chen was just playing around with them. The young man smiled and stated that it didn't matter. Since marriage between the families had become impossible, he offered to buy both their companies. Zhou Hai slammed his hand on the table irritably. He said that his company was making a good profit, so there was no need to sell it. Lian Xiong turned pale. He realized that in the future, all of his investments would go to his son-in-law since he only had one daughter. Yang Chen realized from the man's face that he agreed and offered to allocate him additional shares that could go to Yan Yun. Mr. Li no longer hesitated. He said that he would like to receive a certain sum in shares and asked what the young man could offer. Yang Chen agreed to give half of the amount in cash and the other half in additional shares at the rate of two yuan apiece. Lian Xiong exclaimed that they were in agreement. Zhou Hai shouted that the old man was crazy. The store is profitable. It shouldn't be sold. The man replied that his daughter will not marry Zhou Bin. So it is better to take care of her future life. She can live on interest. 
Zhou Hai turned to Yang Chen and exclaimed that the guy is just cheating. He wouldn't agree to make such a deal. The young man asked to tell Mr. Li the detailed terms of the contract. He himself needs to talk to Mr. Zhou in private. The man realized what he was getting at and threatened him with his index finger. The man realized what he was doing and threatened him with his index finger. Young Chun closed his eyes and summoned the pretty girl who personified the powerful reward system. She asked what the owner would like. The guy clarified if he could buy Binhai's company and return half of the price. The system administrator reported that she received the owner's order to purchase the trading company. His wish has already been fulfilled. Yang Chen smiled and suggested that Zhou Hai think carefully again before answering the question about selling his company. The man immediately shouted that he would sell it immediately. He was willing to give it away even at half price, so it would cost the young man 500 million. Walking out of the office, Yang Chen informed the others that Zhou Hai had graciously agreed to sell his company for half price. In response to Mr. Li's question, the man replied that he was honored. As a token of his appreciation, he gave the company for half the price. Pu Qinghua was very surprised. He couldn't understand how Yang Chen had managed to pull off such a deal. The young man said that he had managed to charm Mr. Zhou, so it was only natural to get a solid discount. The two people stood there, unable to utter a word. Yang Chen said that the evening had been a success, and it was time to get back to business. Zhou Bin reminds his father that the guy beat him up. At the same time, he calmly makes a deal with him as if he had been bewitched. Zhou Hai couldn't stand it and punched him himself, telling him to shut up. He promised to break both his legs next time. The boy clutched his bruised cheek and roared. He couldn't understand what was happening to them all. Two days later, Yang Chen met with the director and three international cancer specialists at the hospital. The boy said hello to the specialists and said he trusted them. After the course of treatment, he will organize a banquet as a token of gratitude. Chen Chunlan was very happy to see her disciple and greeted him warmly. She was pleased that Yang Chen had taken the time to stop by. The young man said that foreign specialists had arrived. The probability of a successful operation is very high, so she will be cured soon. Chunlan burst into tears and confessed that she would have died already if not for his help. She had nothing to be proud of except that Yang Chen was her student. The young man stated that there was no need to say such words. In fact, Chen should be most proud of her daughter Yanni. A pretty nurse entered the room. A little embarrassed at the sight of the handsome young man, she told the woman that a new stage of treatment was beginning. Smiling, the girl handed the patient a form to fill out. Chun Lan thanked Miss Chen for her concern. The nurse furtively studied the handsome young man. Her friend was no match for him. She assumed the boy was the patient's son. The girl was so engrossed that she did not immediately hear the woman's voice. She had to sell her house for the cure, and the box with the address would be empty. The nurse was surprised that they don't even rent a house. Miss Chen explained that she lives in the hospital, and her daughter lives in the dormitory. Yang Chen asked why they needed the address of the patients. The girl explained that it was for the convenience of the staff. They needed to visit patients at their place of residence. The young man dictated the address of his house to the nurse. He was going to sell it anyway, so let the teacher live there. Mrs. Chen protested. She can't accept a noble gesture. There is not enough life to pay for everything. Yang Chen hugged her arm and said that this should be considered as a reward for her kindness. The woman only needs to worry about her health now. Her former student's words made sense. The woman agreed to accept the house and cried with happiness. An hour later, the young man came to the parking lot. There was a lot of noise around. Gawkers were watching the declarations of love with interest. Zhang Qin kneeled down with a bouquet of flowers. Jun Jun disdainfully turned away and declared that it was not worth wasting her time. She did not like him. A young man with a huge armful of flowers surprisingly said that he loved her. He was well provided for and guaranteed a happy life together. The girl irritably replied that even a hundred million wouldn't change her mind. She had already said earlier that his type was not suitable. Zhang Qin stood up and angrily asked to be told what type of man she was referring to and asked her to show at least one of them. Jun Jun immediately turned towards the surprised Yang Chen and pointed her finger at him triumphantly. The young man couldn't believe it. Nurse Chen, a recent acquaintance, winked playfully at him as if asking him to play along. Yang Chen asked why she didn't tell him earlier. He had liked the girl for a long time. He was just afraid to admit it. Jun Jun gently placed her hands on his shoulders and said that she feared his rejection, so she didn't want to show her feelings either. Zhang Qin angrily asked his competitor if he could boast of having a Lamborghini. Yang Chen smiled. He did not have such a car. The young man assumed that he had a lot of money. Hearing a negative answer, he asked why Jun Jun chose him. Yang Chen replied that the girl liked spending money on him. She hugged him and said that she was just letting him live off her. The young man walked to his black car and grabbed the door handle. He apologized to Zhang Qin for the turn of events. Yang Chen explained that he should find another girl now and suggested Jun Jun to go somewhere to eat. Still holding the huge bouquet of flowers, the young man looked perplexed at the departing cab. 
He couldn't understand why he had been treated like that. After making sure that there was no chase after them, Yang Chen told Jun Jun that after that, that guy was unlikely to chase her. The girl offered to have a snack on her tab, but the young man exclaimed that he really owed her a treat for taking good care of her. Jun Jun took out her phone and showed the address of a restaurant nearby. The prices there are quite democratic. Suddenly, a tinkling melody played in the girl's bag. Yun Yu Yun grudgingly reached for her cell phone. She angrily told her father that she wasn't going to quit her job. He doesn't even have to try to talk her out of it. The man shouted that Jun Jun had never even taken care of her elders. If she didn't quit, he would take her out of the hospital himself. The girl recalled that the old people drove her mother to depression and she threw herself out of the window. No, she is not coming home. The conversation is over. Yang Chen was surprised to realize that Jun Jun had run away from her parents' home and only became a nurse because of arguments in the family. Crying, the girl said that after her mother's death, her father treated her well. But the old people wanted another grandchild, so she went to work. Soon, Yang Chen and Jun Jun were chatting merrily at the table. Tasting the fine wine, they looked at each other with a smile. A sloppily dressed old man walked into the restaurant. He was accompanied by a joyful girl in a smart dress, holding a present in her hands. The man's path was blocked by a disgruntled manager. The old man said that his granddaughter was ten years old, and he promised to show her Western cuisine. The waiter exclaimed that his odor would scare away the other customers. In addition, the staff would have to clean the table and chairs. The old man asked sadly if he could have takeout. The manager inquired about what exactly to pack for him. He took an order for one steak and asked me to pay 149 yuan first, and then go outside quickly. The little girl no longer wanted any steak because of this behavior. She pulled her grandfather home. The old man said it was okay, he never goes back on his word. After paying for the order, the man and his granddaughter headed for the exit of the restaurant. Young Chen got up from the table and invited them to his table. The young man explained that the old man had paid for his order, so he had the right to be in the hall. His companion smiled happily. The man said that he didn't want to disturb the peace of other customers. Yang Chen pushed him to his table and promised that no one would hurt him. The young man put the girl's gift on the table and offered the old man a seat next to him. He thanked him sincerely. An opulent woman turned to their table and exclaimed that they were causing the other diners to lose their appetite. Jun Jun said she could smell her cheap perfume three tables away and could ask the administration to throw the customer out. The waiter glumly reminded him that he had asked the man to leave the room. The old man grimaced and said that they were just leaving. Yang Chen imperiously placed a hand on his guest's shoulder and declared that the man would not go anywhere until he had eaten. He stated that the old man paid his bill, so the restaurant is obligated to serve him here. He doesn't need to wait outside. The manager stated that the man was dressed in rags and his odor was negatively affecting the rest of the restaurant's customers. Yang Chen stated that he is allergic to the strong smell of perfume and would like to escort someone out. If he goes to the hospital, the restaurant will be held responsible. The waiter frowned slightly. He realized he was going to have a hard time with this handsome man and said he'd asked for it. Meanwhile, the general manager came out into the hall. He wrinkled his nose and asked where the stench was coming from. The waiter pointed to a table. The man said that they had to rely on the opinion of the majority of diners and let the poor people leave. Yang Chen stated that he had to disappoint him. No one would leave the restaurant just because the manager wanted them to. Chen Shui introduced himself. He stated that he had been running the restaurant for 10 years. He demanded that Zhang Yun call a lawyer. The man proudly said that lawyer Chen is a senior lawyer of the company. They face a period of 10 to 15 days. Zhong Jun had heard of that lawyer, Zhang Xiang. He was known for being able to put any lawyer in the county behind bars. The man declared that they didn't stand a chance. The plump woman cheered and snorted. The accuser turned into the accused. The old man realized where this was going. He thanked the boy and the girl worriedly and said he didn't want to cause any trouble. Yang Chen suggested that he stay and enjoy his granddaughter's birthday party. The man wondered if it would add to the trouble. The young man assured that he could stay in place as long as necessary. He was in full control of the situation. Chen Shu returned to the table accompanied by a respectable man and exclaimed that all the trouble was because of that guy, he should be taught a lesson. The lawyer was surprised to recognize one of the company's shareholders and exclaimed that this was a very interesting coincidence. Chen Shui suspected that the guy's situation wasn't that simple and asked the lawyer if they knew each other. Yang Chen glumly asked the lawyer to look into the situation. The man promised that he would talk to the restaurant administration himself. The young man returned to the table and smiled. He told his companions that the situation had been resolved and they could continue eating. Cheng Shui asked the lawyer who the guy was. The man replied that Yang Chen is a shareholder of their company. There could be big trouble if the boss found out. Jun Jun could not believe that her interlocutor was the third shareholder of the company. The young man calmly confirmed it. The girl smiled delightedly. She said that they had nothing to fear. They could go on celebrating the birthday.
The two managers shamefully walked over to the table. Cheng Shui took the blame and asked the young man not to stoop to his level. Yang Chen disdainfully turned away and brought the glass to his mouth. He stated that he wanted to eat properly. There was no need to bother them. Chen Shu turned around to the table with the plump woman and asked the guards to send her out the door, the smell of her perfume disturbing the others. She indignantly shouted that she was paying the bill. The waiter led the crying lady out the door. She exclaimed resentfully that she hadn't had time to finish her meal yet. Jun Jun asked the little girl how she liked the food. The girl enthusiastically said that she had never tasted such juicy beef before. Miss Chen suggested we do it again sometime. The birthday girl said there was no need for that. Now she can keep steak conversations going at school. The old man said sadly that he hoped to live a few more years and give his granddaughter a decent upbringing. It will be hard for her herself in this world. The girl exclaimed that her grandfather would live to be a hundred years old. She would still have time to finish college and get a good job. Jun Jun promised to pay for her tuition. She needs to study well to be able to go to college. The man took the wine glass and exclaimed that he would be very grateful. Often he just doesn't have any money and has to rummage through garbage cans. Yang Chen said that the price of training would only cost the price of a good bag. No need to thank them. The old man was uncomfortable. Money does not grow on trees. Jun Jun took out a large knife and smiled. She slyly asked if it was time to cut the cake and taste it. The birthday girl joyfully exclaimed that it was time to begin. The girl suggested first lighting candles and making a wish. After sticking the right amount of small, ornate-looking candles into the cake, Jun Jun took a lighter and lit them. The little girl folded her hands and wished aloud all the innermost things. At the end, she wished the boy and the girl to get married and have a big family. The old man laughed. Children always speak sincerely. Jun Jun smiled while hiding her tears. She had wanted to be a mom for a long time. The birthday girl immediately noticed that the girl was blushing and asked in surprise what had happened to her. Jun Jun laughed. She replied that everything was fine. Perhaps it was because there was a burning candle nearby. Lawyer Chen approached the table. He asked if Mr. Yang wanted to file a complaint for poor service and demand compensation. The young man got excited and asked to take over the old man's business. He said that he would be very disappointed if the restaurant continued to operate. Seeing off the honored guests, the lawyer said that his client may not worry. He guarantees a successful outcome of the case. The birthday girl asked the guy interestedly what happened to this restaurant and where all the people disappeared to. Yang Chen stroked her head and explained that the restaurant was closed due to complaints. The girl rejoiced and said that those bad people deserved such a fate. After walking a few meters, the young man stopped and retrieved a check from his pocket that was left over from the showdown with the Lee family. He gave it to the man and asked him to cash it in for the education and upbringing of his granddaughter. When she grows up, he will employ her. The old man unfolded the receipt with trembling hands. He couldn't believe his eyes. The check was for 300,000 yuan. The man fell to his knees in gratitude. Yang Chen reminded him that the money was for his granddaughter's education, but not for a luxurious life. The old man asked the name of his benefactor. The young man introduced himself and explained that he had no intention of using the money. It would have expired anyway. He stroked the girl's head and asked her to study hard. The birthday girl smiled and said her name was Jian Xinyue. She promised to pay back the guy in the future. The man and his granddaughter led the young man and the girl to the parking lot. At the cab, all four of them said goodbye to each other in a friendly manner. Blushing slightly from embarrassment, Jun Jun asked the handsome man what he was doing in general. He managed to impress everyone. Yang Chen opened the passenger door of his car and smiled. He stated that he was only working in a cab. The girl smiled and asked to tell a little about herself as a sign of trust. The driver replied that he had no orders today, so he would give her a ride home. Jun Jun said admiringly that he really is a cab driver, but she couldn't believe it. She inquired about what else he does. At one of the intersections, a lanky guy stopped the cab. Yang Chen asked the passenger to take the front seat. Having spotted the beauty in the back seat, the young man cunningly declared that he would rather sit in the back, as he might get carsick in the front. Yang Chen said that in that case, he would put the girl in the front. The passenger promised to pay an extra hundred dollars if they rode with the girl in the back. The guy immediately sat down closer to Jun Jun and offered to add him as a friend on WeChat. They could have a great time together. The girl did not react to him in any way. The passenger asked the driver indignantly what was wrong. This girl is obviously deaf or dumb. Yang Chen laughed. The young man couldn't believe that he was so unlucky. The pretty girl with the perfect figure couldn't hear him or talk to him. Half an hour later, the client walked out and slammed the door irritably. At the beginning of the trip, he was sure he could arrange a romantic encounter. Jun Jun burst out laughing and said that she was having a lot of fun. Yang Chen asked her to stop laughing. He should receive a negative feedback now. The girl couldn't stop laughing and said there was no such thing. The young man explained that the client had given him $100, but he could not make an acquaintance with her. 
Another negative review came in on the communicator. The guy said he had a feeling about it. The guy criticized not only him, but the cab service itself. Jun Jun couldn't believe her eyes. The passenger cheekily accused the young man of swindling him out of a hundred dollars and blamed the entire transportation company. The system reacted immediately. One hundred million yuan was transferred to the driver for this negative feedback. The funds can be used for any purpose. Yang Chen hugged the system administrator and thanked her. He was glad that the system knew his needs and rewarded him with cash. Suddenly, the young man remembered that his phone was in Jun Jun's hands. He turned around and asked him to give the phone back to him. Unfortunately, he was a little late. The girl managed to see that he had 130 million in his bank account. She asked interestedly what Yang Chen was actually doing. The young man smiled and replied that Jun Jun had seen it herself. He had dropped off a passenger. The girl asked him where he got 130 million. Cab drivers can't earn that much from driving passengers. Yang Chen smiled and replied that they couldn't. She just counted a couple extra zeros in his bank account. After the trip, Jun Jun thanked her companion for a wonderful evening and offered to go inside. The young man said that it was late. He didn't want to wake up her relatives. Walking towards the house, the girl smiled. She was very pleased that Yang Chen had turned out to be a proper gentleman. Meanwhile, the young man's cell phone rang in the car. It turned out to be his aunt calling with important news. Xiao Fei is coming to visit him for a couple of days. In addition, her cousin Zhang Hailin is returning from studying abroad. She needs to be picked up at the airport. Yusha's secretary met him at home and asked if he had any errands to run. She was curious to know what the boss had been doing all day. Yang Chun handed the assistant a bag of documents. He had registered several companies in his name, so he needed to hire employees to manage them as soon as possible. The girl remarked in surprise that in this case all staff members should be educated and have management skills. The boss stated that is what he is talking about. There is no rush. You have to be careful about recruitment. He's prepared to offer salaries one-third above the industry average. Turning his head to Yushu, Yang Chun exclaimed that the girl's outfit was very cute. It emphasized her beauty. Without giving the secretary a second thought, the young man waved her off and said he was tired and was going to bed. They would see each other tomorrow. The girl's cheeks immediately flushed. She realized that the director had complimented her on her excellent figure. The next day, the young man found himself in a traffic jam. For 15 minutes, the cars in front of him had not moved. It was impossible to endure. As luck would have it, it was at this very moment that the client who should have been picked up from the airport, Zhang Hailin, called. The girl asked irritably why he was still standing in traffic. She said she would rather borrow a car from a friend. The young man frowned and explained that he didn't owe her anything. If Zhang Hailin wanted, she could go back and ask her friend to give her a ride. The girl demanded to hurry up and cut off the call. Yang Chen was insulted. He was helping her for free and didn't even deserve a thank you. After a while, the young man drove up to the specified terminal. A tall girl in a green dress immediately opened the back door of the car. Without waiting for her to sit comfortably in the seat, Yang Chen depressed the clutch and confidently moved out of the seat. Zhang Heilin excitedly shouted that he needed to stop. Her travel bag was left on the roadway. The young man frowned at the passenger and asked why she didn't bring her bag into the cab before getting in. The girl asked why he wouldn't come out and help her. Yang Chen explained that he was only here at his aunt's request, so she should go out and get her luggage herself. Zhang Hailin blushed with anger and asked what caused this attitude. The young man replied that she was the first to start acting inappropriately. After picking up her bag on the road, the passenger barely dragged it to the cab and looked angrily at the bored driver. Yang Chen asked where to take her. Zhang Hailin said in surprise that her aunt should have told him everything. At that time, the girl received a call from her mother, informing her that her aunt had asked to arrange a blind date with the very same young man. After a short conversation, Yang Chen took the girl to one of the cheap hotels so she could stay there for a while. They were greeted at the reception by a polite staff member. She suggested a nice room. The young man handed the key to the girl. Zhang Heilin asked where he wanted to eat. The guy replied that she could choose a comfortable room on any of the three floors. The girl angrily informed him that his aunt should have warned him. She doesn't eat alone. He agreed to keep her company and called the elevator. Zhang Heilin kept wondering how much the guy had had enough. If he imagines this is a date, she will reject all his advances. As soon as they sat down at the table, the waiter brought a menu and said hello politely. He offered to choose something for dinner. Zhang Heilin ordered a cappuccino without milk. The young man was surprised. It sounded just like green pepper with pork, but without the pork. The waiter smiled politely and explained that cappuccino is made with fresh milk. He doesn't understand what the customer means. The girl said glumly that she had ordered such a thing for herself abroad. The waiter decided not to argue and accepted the strange order. Zhang Heilin asked if she could order something more expensive. The young man offered to order her food considering how well they knew each other. The girl added some caviar and one portion of foie gras to her order. 
She also asked for a bottle of champagne to be opened, Yang Chen said in surprise, that they didn't have such a good relationship. The interlocutor explained that the level of their relationship would increase with the increase of the order price. The waiter asked the young man if he could have the usual. The waiter asked the young man if he could have the usual. Zhang Hailin noticed that he was well known here. She asked why the young man would not buy a better car. Yang Chen said that he had not thought about it. The girl was disappointed. She didn't need a guy with no ambition and an old car. She asked about his monthly salary. Yang Chen replied that he gets about 10,000. Zhang Hailin exclaimed that it was impossible to live and maintain a house on that amount of money. She sighed heavily. The young man asked if she had found a job. The companion proudly replied that she had easily found a job thanks to her talent and was working as a secretary to the CEO. Yang Chen assumed that her salary was not bad. Zhang Hailin said that she gets 20,000 so he was not suitable as a partner. The young man replied that he couldn't argue with that and offered to split the dinner. Each of them would pay 6,000 each. Besides, the foie gras with caviar and champagne was ordered by her personally. The girl blushed with anger. She couldn't believe that a young man would come to dinner with her and then split the cost in half. Yang Chen said that he doesn't have to treat his companion well since she doesn't like him. In addition, she has to pay for her hotel accommodation. Zhang Hailin frightenedly waved her hands and admitted that she didn't have that kind of money. The girl had not counted on such expenses. The young man said glumly that his aunt had only asked him to meet her. There was no question of paying for her lodging. He suggested asking his boss for help. It would strengthen their relationship. Zhang Hailin thought it was a pretty good idea, so she decided to call the chief. Her interlocutor turned out to be quite resourceful. The girl confusedly explained to her boss that she had some difficulties at the hotel. She would greatly appreciate the help. After the call, she proudly told her companion that her director and her daughter were coming over for dinner. Yang Chen assumed that the management really appreciated her. Zhang Halin said that her boss was traveling abroad on a business trip. He was visiting her home for a month. Yang Chen said that he now understood everything. The girl realized that she had said too much and clamped her hand over her mouth. But then she calmed herself. She realized that she had said too much and clamped her hand over her mouth. But then she calmed herself. After fifteen minutes, some girl asked the young man what he was doing here. Yang Chen turned his head in surprise. Chen Junjun joyfully exclaimed that it was a funny coincidence. She had come along with her father to meet Zhang Hailin. The man frowned and asked if they knew each other. Jun Jun admiringly replied that she knew him. He was her friend. The girl introduced her father, and she and the young man shook hands. The man was surprised that he knew his secretary. Zhang Hailin complained that her aunt's nephew ordered too many expensive dishes, so she had to ask her boss for an advance to pay the bill. The man laughed. He exclaimed that many young people want to taste good and tasty food, he understood. Yang Chen suggested sitting at the table since everyone was already familiar with each other. Mr. Chen said that tonight's dinner was on him. They could eat whatever they wanted. The young man laughed. He stated that all of Chen's wealth would one day go to Zhang Halin, so a small dinner meant nothing. The girl frowned. Mr. Chen was surprised and asked the young man to explain in detail what he wanted to say. Yang Chen spoke with a smile about his trip to the United States. If he marries Zhang Hailin and they have a son, he will inherit all the family's property. The girl turned pale and began to stammer with fear. She tried to explain to the others that she didn't mean that at all. Chen Junjun couldn't believe it. Completely by accident, one of her father's secrets had been revealed to her. She grabbed the wine glass. With anger, the girl poured its contents right into the face of her father's mistress. She shouted that this was an unheard of impertinence. Jun Jun firmly stated that she would never return to the family. She would never ask for a single penny of money. So father better hurry up and let Halen inherit all the property. The girl took Yang Chen under her arm and walked out from the table with him. She shouted that she didn't want to see her father. The man asked her to stay in vain. He angrily slapped Zhang Hailin and said that he had almost succeeded in bringing his daughter home. But she had ruined everything with her chatter. Mr. Chen irritably walked out from behind the table. The girl tearfully asked to pay the bill. She really has no money. Leaning on his cane, Chen approached the black car and asked his daughter not to leave. He would explain everything now. Zhang Halin ran out after her and shouted that Chen Jun couldn't put her alone. The waiter rushed after her and demanded to pay the bill. The girl threw herself on her boss's neck and begged him to help her pay the bill. The man glumly asked her to leave him alone. Wiping her tears, Jun Jun told the cab that today she was even going to go back to her father's house and make peace with the old people. Yang Chen stated that it is more important to take what is hers legally. Giving Halin's property would be an insult to decent girls. Jun Jun exclaimed that the young man was right. Half of her father's company belonged to her mother, so it was something to fight for. Yang Chen agreed to give the girl a ride home. He reassured her and told her that there was nothing to worry about. They would manage. When the old man saw the two of them together, 
he gave a sorrowful sigh. A young girl like this already dares to bring boys home. She got angry and announced that their wonderful son had found a young daughter-in-law for them, so they would have a grandchild in the near future. The grandmother immediately rejoiced. The old man did not hide his satisfaction. He was proud that there would be an heir in the family. Jun Jun frowned. From the reaction of the old men, she immediately realized that she was not mistaken about their true feelings for her. The man said she would get the house and a million in cash, but would sign a pledge not to claim the family property. The girl shouted indignantly that she only wanted her mother's share. She would not allow it to be given to another woman. Her grandmother smirked and reminded her that her mother had died ten years ago, so she had no assets. Jun Joan got even more angry and shouted that it was the old men who had driven her to her death. She would never forgive that. The old woman stated that many families want to raise a son from a young daughter-in-law. She sees no reason to refuse that girl. The girl turned pale. Her arguments were over. Yang Chen said that this conversation was useless. She had better look for a lawyer. The old man suggested that Jun Jun wanted to get the inheritance. He informed that fighting was useless. She would get nothing. Yang Chen frowningly said that the girl is entitled to her mother's share. They can ask a lawyer. Right now, they better take care of themselves. After they left, the old people were a little worried. The man said that their son should get married quickly if that girl was pregnant. At this time, Chen was unaware of the conversation between Jun Jun and his parents. He was enjoying the pleasures of love. The phone rang in a very bad way. The old man said he had heard about his young friend. Wet with sweat, Chen asked how he knew. The man talked about his meeting with Jun Jun and her claim to the inheritance. If that girl is pregnant, we should get married immediately. Chen DeLong jumped off the bed and angrily asked where his daughter was. He will come soon and sort everything out. Zhang Hailin quickly realized what was going on. She begged the heavens to help her get pregnant. It was only because of this that she endured the humiliation of being humiliated. Chen DeLong got dressed and told his mistress that he had some urgent business at home. He handed her a credit card and offered to rest before work. The girl embarrassedly stated that she could really use the rest. He had been simply marvelous and had devastated her. The man hugged her goodbye and told her that he had completely forgotten today in his haste, but she should take care of birth control in the future. Chen DeLong hurriedly walked on the red carpet. He cursed Jun Jun, who he couldn't reach. That stubborn girl had blocked his number. Yang Chen brought the girl to the house and promised to give the case to Zhang Xian. She will get everything that is hers by law. The girl shouted that she didn't want to split the company now. She asked if Yang Chen could help her lead the company into bankruptcy. The guy replied that it was not necessary to go to radical measures. He clarified whether it was necessary to break up their family business. Jun Jun clenched her fists and firmly said that she would pay him back immediately after the company ceased to exist. The young man outlined his plan. He proposed to enlist the support of smaller hospitals and lure staff to them. That way, the main hospital would suffer losses. The girl promised that she would do the right thing. She promised to give Yang Chen two-thirds of the company after a successful operation. The young man willingly agreed to such a reward. He knew that the system would give him absolute control over the company. After saying goodbye to Jun Jun, Yang Chen went to his law firm to hurry up and take care of her case. Superintendent Li introduced the young investor to his partners. Yang Chen greeted the customers politely. The partners furtively discussed his abilities. The girl knew that the company's shares could not be bought for any money. The superintendent gave a little tour and showed a huge room where civil trials were handled. The boy liked it. In the office, Mr. Li put a drink on the table and asked how he could help. The young man told him about the problem with the medical company. After listening to him, the man smiled and stated that the case was very simple. He guaranteed a successful outcome without involving the court. Yang Chen was satisfied. He thanked the lawyer and gave a thumbs up. The young man knew that this guy would succeed. Meanwhile, in the Chen family's huge house, there was a heated discussion about the situation. Jun Jun was not supposed to receive the inheritance. Chen DeLong brought the girl over. His parents cheerfully chatted with her, hoping that they would soon get the family's heir. At this moment, Jun Jun appeared on the doorstep with a lawyer. The daughter advised her father to decide quickly. If it was not resolved amicably, she would go to court. Chen DeLong smiled deceitfully and asked the lawyer for a word. The man asked to speak in the presence of his client. Mr. Chen stated that she is just a child and does not understand anything. The lawyer showed the inheritance package and asked if the man understood what it meant. The old man got angry and declared that the little brat wanted to snatch their family property. She should follow her mother. Zhang's lawyer asked him to watch his words. Next time, he will hold him accountable for disrespecting his client. Chen Dalong asked his father not to be so nervous. Zhang Hailin asked everyone to stop arguing about the inheritance. She admitted that she was to blame for all of this and would only qualify for child support if she became pregnant. The grandmother said that from now on, she would recognize her as an equal owner of the house. As soon as a grandson was born, all the property would fall into his hands. 
Zhang urged the family to resolve things amicably and showed the power of attorney. He stated that they might face some difficulties. Chen Delong got angry and said that Zhang had gone too far. He grabbed the phone and called his lawyer. Fifteen minutes later, the door of the house opened. A man in a business suit appeared on the threshold and looked around the room. Zhang Jun Lai immediately recognized the lawyer and said that they hadn't seen each other for a long time. He asked in surprise what Zhang was doing here. The lawyer said hello to his colleague and offered to cut to the chase. He was interested in the 48% of the company that belonged to Jun Jun's mother. Chen Delong was a little scared and shouted that everything was fair here. He offered his lawyer an increase in his fee. Jun Lai hesitantly said that the business is required to be divided, but they can discuss everything privately so as not to bring it to court. Otherwise, the company will be in trouble. Chen Delong offered his daughter 10 million and a villa. But in doing so, she and the elders on her mother's side refuse everything else. Jun Jun disdainfully folded her arms on her chest and turned away. Things had gone too far, and she responded with an emphatic refusal. The girl stated that it was not about money at all. She wanted her mother's share. The old man shouted that she was out of her mind, that it was impossible. Chen Delong asked them not to shout. The matter wouldn't move faster because of them arguing loudly. The man agreed to give her a portion of the business, not including the stock of the international hospital. In fact, the hospital generated 70% of the income. Jun Jun immediately agreed. Everything was going according to plan. She admired how Yang Chen had calculated his opponent's every move. The girl went to lawyer Zhang and asked him to sign the contract. The lawyer promised to do everything properly. The formalities were over. The lawyer and the girl left the house and went to his car. Chen Delong told the family that it's not all lost yet. He has most of the business. He will send out gifts and poach employees. His daughter will be left with nothing. Zhang Heilin walked up to the man and said that she was sorry. Frowning, she asked for forgiveness. In response to his question, the girl silently reached into her bag and retrieved a positive pregnancy test from there. She embarrassedly stated that she had been using protection, but the pills had not worked. Halen stated that she had no ulterior motive. The old man cheerfully stated that this was out of the question. His wife added that they would be very happy to have an heir. The man asked how long ago she found out about it. The girl admitted that she had not been to the hospital yet. She had used a quick test. The woman joyfully asked to rush Jung Halen to the hospital so that they could get confirmation of the happy news. Chen Delong took the girl's hand and declared that he would do everything. They headed towards the exit of the house. The old men were satisfied. At the hospital, the man sat the girl on a couch in the lobby and asked her to wait while he paid for any necessary procedures. As soon as he moved a few meters away, Zhang Halen's phone vibrated. She immediately pulled it out of her purse. Zhang Xiao texted her that there was no need to worry about the DNA test. It had only been a couple of days. The girl immediately calmed down. At that time, Yang Chen met his cousin Xiao Fei at the train station. They saw each other from afar and waved their hands. Smiling, Xiao Fei said that she didn't mind having fun, but she wanted to talk to her cousin first. The aunt said that she was pregnant. The young man wondered about Zhang Hailin's health. Chen Delong was already almost 50 years old, yet he was able to impregnate her. He promised to drop Xiao Fei off at her cousin's house and asked her not to have dinner at their house. He would pick her up at 6 o'clock in the evening. Zhang Hailin was happy to see Xiao Fei. The cousin smiled and said that it had been a long time since they had seen each other. The girl suggested that the driver should also come into the house and keep her company. Otherwise, her aunt would find her not very hospitable. Yang Chen stated that he needed to earn a living, unlike girls who fall for rich men and enjoy life. She exclaimed that the young man was just jealous and handed over an invitation to the wedding to be held at the Baoking Inn. The young man smiled and declared that he would convince the girl to come to the wedding. They would prepare a huge gift for the newlyweds. After a while, Yang Chen and Jun Jun were having coffee. The young man took out a wedding invitation from his pocket. Jun Jun read the text of the invitation with undisguised surprise, which included the date and place of the ceremony. The girl angrily tore the invitation into small shreds. She admitted that her father and Jiang Hailin's wedding had made her furious. Yang Chen said that this is good news. Now they will be tied together, but Jun Jun will take all the business for himself. In addition, Hailin will have to take care of the old people. The interlocutor said that she was glad to hear that. She calmed down a little. Jun Jun asked what he would eat. Today is her treat. It was a happy day for Zhang Hailin. Today, she was marrying a rich man and expected to receive a substantial sum of money. Yang Chen and Jun Jun also came to the ceremony. The girl was wearing a black evening dress today. She heard the guests discussing her father and the young bride. The woman assumed she was the same age as the groom's daughter. Jun Jun immediately frowned. She was tired of this kind of talk. The young man whispered in her ear that she should stay calm and put his arm around her shoulder. A smiling toastmaster against a background of colorful balloons offered a warm welcome to the bride and groom. 
Chen Delong and Zhang Hailin walked solemnly on the red carpet. Their every step was filmed on their cell phones. The host asked the newlyweds what they would like to say to the guests. The girl said that today was a very important day for them. Taking advantage of the moment, Zhang Hailin asked Jun Jun if she was blessing her and her father. The girl didn't expect such impudence. The Toastmaster asked the guests to welcome Miss Chen. She will come on stage and bless the marriage of her father and his bride. Jun Jun snorted disdainfully. The young man whispered and asked his companion not to show her true feelings to the guests. The girl gathered herself and stepped onto the red carpet. She walked confidently to the stage and stopped in front of the stage manager. The man smiled and stated that Miss Chen looked great. He asked the girl to share her thoughts about her father's future life. Jun Jun said that she was very satisfied. Someone will need to take care of the old people. She warned her mother that she was now in charge of the whole household. The bride replied that they would hire a nanny, but the child's upbringing would require her help. Jun Jun said that she was still a child and would not take on the responsibility. She turned to her grandparents and asked them what they thought about it. The old men immediately fell silent. The girl deftly used their own words. Chen Delong tried to smile and said that he was very happy to see his daughter at his wedding today anyway. One man whispered to his companion that it looked like running away from home. She laughed and replied that he too would run away if the stepmother were his age. Back in her seat, the girl finally exhaled. Yang Chen reminded her that they had come to watch the show. She should relax. At this moment, Xiao Fei wearing a beautiful blue dress walked up to their table. She was happy to meet her cousin. The beauty assumed that Yang Chen had come with his girlfriend. The young man introduced them to each other. Jun Jun greeted the girl warmly. Xiao Fei revealed that their family was actually against the marriage. Jun Jun realized that it was Zhang Hailin's initiative. The cousin told Yang Chen that his mother wanted to arrange another blind date. The young man asked her to tell him that he didn't need it. His aunt had bad taste. Xiao Fei took his hand and offered to tell him herself. Her mother had already told her that Yang Chen was still not getting married. The girl came to one of the tables and said cheerfully that she had brought her cousin. The young man assumed that the woman was not fit to be his aunt. The girl turned her head and laughed. Of course she was his aunt. The boy could be sure of that. The woman introduced Zhang Dachun, Zhang Hailin's uncle, and her aunt Li Lan Ying. The pair looked warily at Yang Chen. The aunt introduced the young man to her older sister and brother-in-law. Li Lan Ying asked if he was the kind of guy who would leave without paying for his food. Yang Chen corrected his aunt and explained that they actually split the bill equally. He didn't have to give the girl a free ride or pay for her dinner. The woman frowned and said that on the blind date he was supposed to pay for dinner. Her sister said the young man was honest, so he didn't treat the girl. Zhang Dachin sipped his wine and said that they were lucky. Otherwise, the guy would have tricked Zhang Hailin and she would have missed her chance. Yang Chen stated that he wanted to clarify something. He said that their daughter had narrated her long-standing relationship with Chen Delong. He just didn't want to interfere. Zhang Dachun shouted that no one dared to spread rumors about his daughter. He slapped his palm on the table and said that he was going to slap her. Zhang Heilin saw the quarrel between the parents and the young man. She told the groom that his daughter and that guy were causing them trouble again. Chen Delong shouted that making a scandal at his wedding was too impertinent. He would deal with it. The man stated that today was his holiday and he didn't want any trouble. If Yang Chen continues like this, he is not responsible for himself. The young man smiled and said he hadn't done anything illegal. But the groom is wrong. He might be in trouble. Zhang Heilin indignantly asked what he was really trying to accomplish. She assumed that he was causing trouble on purpose. Suddenly, the double door to the ceremonial hall swung open. Everyone's attention turned to the new guests. Several men in business suits entered the hall. They represented various powerful organizations. Yang Chen confidingly said that the problem was not him at all. If he were Chen Delong, he would have joined his daughter and enjoyed the show. Returning to his companion, the young man announced that the show was starting. Jun Jun wondered how his father would react. Yang Chen stated that he would not take legal action if they received compensation. We are talking about a substantial amount of money. The girl didn't quite understand what he was talking about. But during the time she got to know the guy, she realized that he always calculates his opponent's moves. All three of them were big shots. Zhang Xiang from the law firm. Chen Dawu represented the Bao King Hotel. Zhang Sen Miao was the chairman and was in charge of the hospital. Chen Delong smiled and thanked the distinguished guests for coming to his wedding. He was very happy to see them on this day. Chen Dao asked his assistants to play the video for the groom. Two guys started the broadcast on a laptop. The man pulled out a small remote and pressed a button, launching a video on the big screen for all to see. He stated that this video explains everything. On that day, Zhang Heilin ordered expensive meals by herself and defamed the young man. She will be held accountable by the law. Chen Dao approached the young man and asked if he was satisfied with this outcome. 
Yang Chen said that he was satisfied. Xiao Fei whispered with her mom and marveled at how much power her cousin had. Everyone around him obeys him. Zhang Senmiao said that in case of breach of contract, the hospital has the right to demand a refund of triple the contract value. The man suggested that he wanted to be forced to pay old bills. Zhang Senmiao explained that due to a number of violations, the contract was being cancelled. He showed the package of documents and said that the wedding would have to be stopped. We were talking about a pretty substantial amount of money, so they'd better start now. Chen Delong couldn't hold back any longer. He shook his fists and shouted that they were all very cruel people. Today was his wedding day. Zhang Senmiao offered to sit down at the negotiation table for five minutes. Otherwise, the case will be handed over to the police. There will be no second chance. He walked over to Yang Chen and thanked him fervently. The young man reciprocated and thanked him for working together. The man worriedly said that he would not have known anything if Yang Chen had not said anything. But now they know about the problems in the hospital group. The chairman said that he would take care of things from there. He promised that he would follow the boy's instructions. Yang Chen stated that in that case, he would entrust the matter to them. He got up from the table and gently hugged Jun 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 by the shoulder. The young man said that it was time for them to go. Chen DeLong suspected that they were in on it. He shouted that his biological daughter shouldn't put him in jail. The girl replied glumly that everything depended on him. If the negotiations went well and he gave the money, there would be no trouble. The man shouted that she was too cruel. Jun Jun angrily said that he should have protected the interests of his wife and daughter. Then such a thing wouldn't have happened. A guest from the hall whispered to her companion that one should not blame one's daughter for all adversity. She, too, was indignant that such thoughts appeared in someone's head. Everything was crumbling right in front of Zhang Hailin's eyes. Despite her tears, she decided to endure all the hardships and get her hands on the stock. She would not give up her property to anyone. The bride roared and asked the groom what would happen to their son if the money was taken away from them. The man replied that there was nothing he could do. He didn't decide anything anymore. Halen whispered in his ear that Yang Chen was hanging around his daughter. If she could be persuaded to soften her stance, the young man would leave them alone. The old people begged the girl to give up. The grandmother asked to feel sorry for her father. The grandfather said he apologized and asked her not to be so heartless. Jun Jun dismissively waved both of them away and exclaimed that no one would pity her herself if she gave in to her father. She resolutely turned away and took her companion under her arm. Together with Yang Chen, the girl left without paying attention to anyone. She was so angry she didn't hear her grandmother fall to her knees, offering deep regrets and begging for pity. The crying bride asked her parents what she should do now. If Chen DeLong is at fault, they will lose the money altogether. The father replied that they would handle everything. The girl screamed that the hospital was demanding compensation, and the company was on the verge of closing down. If she got married, she would go into debt. Her life would be ruined. Li Lanying angrily exclaimed that they didn't need a marriage with huge debts. She demanded that the wedding ceremony be cancelled immediately. Zhang Heilin roared even more. Through her sobs, she informed her parents that the marriage had already been registered. Li Lanyin hugged the girl and cried herself. Her young daughter had gotten pregnant because of deception. And now she has to pay back other people's debts. Xiao Fei's mother said that tears will not save anyone. If Zhang Heilin was really cheated, she should get rid of the child and get a divorce. The girl cried out in tears that her aunt must speak to her nephew. Let the young man give her advice. He must pity her. All the relatives, including Chen Delong and his parents, shouted with one voice that on such a matter, they should discuss everything with young Chen. Xiao Fei told Chen Delong that there was no need to involve her mother. This matter was only for the hospital. The man begged her to help for the sake of saving the child and the marriage. The woman overheard the conversation about herself and hesitantly said she would try to talk to her nephew. Turning to her daughter, she told Xiao Fei that it was time for them to go. The two women headed towards the exit. The Jiang family looked at them, hoping only for the boy. Chen Dalong walked onto the stage and smiled fake smile. The man announced to the guests that he had urgent business to attend to. The wedding was cancelled, and all gifts would be returned. All the guests dispersed. The man thought with resentment that Yang Chen had ruined his entire family. He can't let the guy forgive that. Meanwhile, Yang Chen and Jun Jun were already in the parking lot of the hotel. They didn't care at all what was going on inside. The young man reported that he did not want to involve the girl in further proceedings. He asked her to disconnect her phone until 8 a.m. Suddenly the young man's phone rang. He told his aunt that he understood what it was about and asked her not to interfere. It's about billions of dollars. She repeated his words with surprise. The woman had never imagined that there was a lot of money involved in these proceedings. Getting into the car, Yang Chen said that with a thorough investigation, there could be a lot more money. The aunt sighed. She realized that Zhang Hailin would not get anywhere. The woman said that she and Xiao Fei would spend the night at his place tonight. 
Yang Chen said that he had reserved a suite especially for them. It was better for both of them to stay at the hotel today. Already in the car, he told the girl that his aunt and cousin were coming to visit him today. Jun Jun said that given the events, they would have a lot to talk about. In the evening, Xiao Fei and her mother paid a visit to the young man. He greeted them warmly at the villa and invited them to go to the second floor. There was already a table set up with all sorts of dishes. Yang Chun knew that they didn't get to eat at the wedding, so he prepared a decent dinner. Ms. Xiao Fei exclaimed delightedly that she had the best cousin in the world. Her mother was more reserved, but she was also happy. As soon as they sat down at the table, Xiao Fei asked if Yang Chun knew how hard her cousin was going through. The young man replied glumly that it was her own fault. Xiao Fei sadly said that she felt sorry for the girl. Her aunt turned to her and said that she herself just shouldn't be like that, or her mother would go crazy. The girl exclaimed that her cousin was very rich and could be approached. Yang Chen didn't mind buying something for Xiao Fei if need be. She smiled and said he was very good. Her aunt noticed that her daughter was getting carried away and asked her to hurry up and finish her food. She had to go to class tomorrow. Yang Chen raised his wine glass and volunteered to give the girl a ride to the educational institution. He knows the road well. His ex-girlfriend studies there as well. The next morning, the young man picked up his cousin and brought Xiao Fei to the University of Economics and Finance building. At the gatehouse, a familiar security guard Zhang came out to meet the car. Yang Chen handed him a pack of cigarettes. The man inquired how the guy was doing and assumed he had brought to settle his relatives at the university. Yang Chen introduced his cousin. She would be attending the class. The young man asked to take care of her. The girl happily waved her hand to the guard. The man put his hand to his temple and assured me that there would be no problem. If someone were to molest, it would be enough to just tell him. Xiao Fei thanked him. After chatting with the guard some more, Yang Chen drove up to the university dormitory and stopped the car. Opening the trunk, he noted that there was not so much luggage during his studies. The young man asked why the girl needed so much stuff. Xiao Fei replied that the girls had much more stuff. She thanked her brother, who had to carry a huge bag on his shoulder and drag a traveling suitcase behind him. The check-in went quickly. Ten minutes later, Yang Chen walked out of the building enjoying a cold drink. Suddenly, he was surprised to notice that his car was surrounded by several young girls. He could not understand what was happening. Yang Chen took a quick step towards the car and asked the girls what he could do to help them. One of the girls offered herself for 600 yuan. She was willing to offer a discount. Her girlfriend agreed to just spend the night together after the expensive car ride. The young man stated that there had been a slight misunderstanding. He didn't need a girlfriend for the night at all right now. One of the girls said that the guy proposed himself and now pretends he doesn't understand anything. Yang Chen's throat was dry. The girl smiled and offered to add her to WeChat. If the guy needed anything, she would take care of it. The young man replied that he didn't have a contact space already. He slammed the door shut, paying no attention to the girls. One of them bowed politely to the boy in farewell. There was a message on his phone from Chen Liang. He suggested organizing a classmate reunion at the Jinshen Resort this weekend. The young man suspected it was one of his unfriends but then remembered that they had a normal relationship and decided to go to the meeting. He had more important things to do right now. Yang Chen went to the office of his law firm to find out how Chen DeLong's case was going. The chairman of the hospital group and the lawyer were just waiting for the young man in the meeting room and were glad to meet him. Yang Chen took his seat and carelessly put his foot on his knee. He asked if the documents for this case were already ready. Zhang Sen Miao said that the client was willing to hand over the business and compensate for the 150 million loss but required Yang Chen to be present when the documents were handed over. The young man stated that he didn't have time for that. Jun Jun could handle it on her own. Besides, Dalong is not in a position to make demands. The chairman said he understood perfectly. He will notify his client of Yang Chen's refusal to attend the trial. A lawyer has unveiled a new plan to raise capital. This could allow the Long Lion chain to expand and buy a new coastal business. Yang Chen looked at the development plan thoughtfully and said it was a good idea. He asked how much money should be invested in the project. After quickly calculating everything on the calculator, Zhang Xiang showed the result. The controlling stake would cost about one and a half billion. The young man thought for a moment. He could easily withdraw a billion from the Binhai company's funds. The problem was that there was only 400,000 left in the account, and it wouldn't be enough anyway. Yang Chen asked the lawyer to prepare everything and conduct preliminary negotiations. They will discuss all the details later. Immediately after talking to the lawyer, the young man went to the Shengjin Investment Bank. Its building stood proudly in the center of the city. Bank Vice President Chen Liang said happily that three years after graduation, he could finally take revenge on the guy. After sipping some wine, the young man declared that not only would he win this time, but he would also put his opponent through the same suffering he had gone through. 
In a residential neighborhood, Yang Chen suddenly received a new order. He immediately estimated that the trip would be profitable. The city was about 80 kilometers away. The pretty girl asked the handsome man if he really works as a cab driver all day long. The young man smiled and assured the passenger that she had nothing to worry about. He is a professional driver. The customer smiled and started to fasten his seatbelt. She asked if he was thinking of quitting his job and enjoying the beautiful views of nature. Yang Chen replied that he would be vacationing in retirement. Fang Yingqi introduced herself to the young man and said she needed a partner for a trip between Sichuan Province and Tibet. The guy warns that he won't be able to resist her beauty. He did not guarantee that his mind could triumph over his desires. Fang Yingqi blushed and said that the young man is very straightforward. However, he is more honest than the other applicants with dirty thoughts pretending to be gentlemen. The trip went by quickly. The young man stopped the cab at a parking lot belonging to the Jinshan Resort. Fang Yingqi waved goodbye cheerfully and thanked her for the trip. She suggested we meet sometime when we had free time. The young man got out of the car and looked around. He called to Zhang Yang that he was already at the place, but there was no one in sight. The guy promised to pick him up at the entrance. A few minutes later, a man in a green jacket walked up to Yang Chen and greeted him cheerfully. Zhang Yang furtively looked around and whispered that there was no one here. He had a very important matter. The young man asked what was wrong. The man replied that Chen Liang came in an expensive car with his secretary to show his superiority. The so-called meeting could complicate their relationship. Yang Chen asked why act so foolishly and set a trap just to show his superiority. He thanked his classmate for the warning and offered to let Chen Liang show his superiority over them. The banquet was organized in the luxurious Peony Hall. Yang Chen heard the familiar voices of his classmates from afar. One of the men greeted the guest. The girl standing next to him embarrassedly said that Yang Chen was just as handsome as he had been in her dreams all these years. The young man said hello to everyone and stated that Chen Liang had managed to organize a party and bring everyone together. Chen Liang smirked and stated that he was a little unnerved by those words. The guy seemed to be implying that he had crossed the line. Yang Chen shook his hand. He smiled and stated that the man had imagined it. In reality, Chen Liang and Zhou Yu had organized all the events. It was still the same now. Zhou Yu said that the situation has changed. Now Chen Liang gets 5 million a year. His girlfriend's father has a CEO. Chen Liang smirked and said that Yang Chen's success rate was much higher and asked him to tell what he was doing now. Suddenly, Fang Yingqi walked into the hall. She realized that the young man was on his way to the reunion and had just picked her up on the way. Chen Liang was surprised. Yang Chen smiled and said that he worked as a cab driver and Fang Yingqi was just voting on the road, so he gave her a ride. The girl asked when he planned to go back. She stated that she would like to return to the city with him. Chen Liang was glad that the young man turned out to be not as good as he was painted. Many teachers and classmates praised the boy who turned out to be an ordinary cab driver. Zhou Yu asked how Yang Chen had gotten to this kind of life. The young man replied that he actually felt good about himself. He worked as long as he wanted. Chen Liang assumed that his secretary had already organized a separate room. He suggested having tea and catching up. A pretty girl in business clothes entered the room. She told Chairman Chen that everything was ready. Chen Liang invited the guests to follow him. Yang Chen said that he would come a little later. He wanted to look around. The young man wasn't lying. He really wanted to look around his resort. The man asked him not to leave so soon. They could go together and see what interesting things they could do. He promised to pay the bill. The boy and girl marveled at the vice principal's material capabilities. They were grateful for the event. Yang Chen had nothing against exploring the nearby area together with Liang. The two of them were more fun. There was a fork in the beach with signs for fishing, boating, and a racetrack. In the same direction was an archery range. Yang Chen walked around the racetrack. He realized that the resort manager's brains were working properly. He knows how to attract tourists. Near the fishing spot, Zhang Yang suggested a fishing competition. They could catch a couple of fish and have them cooked. It should be interesting. Chen Liang said that he has already asked the secretary to airlift the fish directly from Lake Wandao. And today they have a rare meeting. He is treating the guests. Zhang Yang quickly calculated that in this case, the fish would cost thousands of yuan. Chen Liang smiled and reminded him that they had a meeting today. Stop talking about fish. Meanwhile, Yang Chen stopped behind the fishermen and watched intently as they caught fish. Chen Liang offered to fish. He would pay for the equipment rental. The young man replied that he was just watching those who were good at what they did. The bank vice president stated that he could not improve any skills unless he tried it himself. Suddenly, Yang Chen's phone rang. He apologized to his interlocutors and moved a little to the side so as not to disturb anyone. It turned out to be his personal secretary, Yu Shishi. The young man anxiously asked the girl what had happened. She said that Shengjin Bank wants to buy shares in Jinshan Resort. The president of the bank and Zhang, the manager of the resort, have already gone to the site. 
Yang Chen thanked the assistant for the information. He was surprised to realize that he was talking about the same bank where Chen Liang worked. A short time later, a red sports car parked next to the young man's black car. Liang Xiyun, the president of the bank, stepped out of the car. Her secretary followed her and held an umbrella over the woman's head. Passing by the cab, the president noticed a familiar license plate. She had long wanted to meet the owner of the financial institution. Liang Xiyun asked Mary to go to the office in charge of parking and find the owner of the black car. Ten minutes later, the secretary came running to the president, who was waiting for her at the entrance, and reported that she had managed to get a photo from the video cameras in the parking lot. The woman hadn't expected the boss to be so young, but she still asked to find him before lunch. She said she would walk the rest of the way and let Mary go. The girl regarded the resort unhappily. It was quite impossible to find one person. Her boss knows how to stump her subordinates. Yang Chen was at the boat dock at this time. He decided to take a little boat ride and relax. The young man asked Zhang Yang what had happened. As soon as the man found out, Yang Chen was nothing more than a cab driver, immediately began to look down on him. The man said that he had imagined it. He exclaimed that everyone in the college admired the boy's talent and predicted a great future for him. That's why he was very upset. After making a couple of oar strokes, Yang Chen said that there was no need to be sad. Life is full of surprises, and no one knows what the future holds. The young man added that they'd better have fun tonight. It was a rare occurrence, so it was a sin not to have a good time. The secretary had just arrived at the boat dock and was surprised to see the vice president. She asked Chen Lan what he was doing here. The man turned around in surprise and wondered what she herself was here for. He assumed that his boss Liang was also here. The girl said that they had come to assess the value of the resort. Liang Xiun instructed her to find the owner of the financial building. The woman walked over to her subordinates. Chen Liang said that he would have gone with them if he had known in advance. The bank president explained that she wanted to see the resort in person. The classmates approached the interlocutors, and the guy introduced them to his boss. He said that two were still boating on the lake. The woman said that she would walk around to see more. Chen Liang readily took the umbrella and offered to accompany her. She replied that it was not necessary. The young man handed over the umbrella and hoped that they would meet for lunch. Liang Xiyun said that she still had to meet with Zhang, the owner of the resort. The president walked to the parking lot just as Zhang stopped his sports car and opened the door. The president greeted the man warmly. Zhang Shuchun confusedly said that he did not expect to see her so early. He said that the potential buyer of the resort, Yang Chen, was also here, so we should talk to him first. The woman asked to invite him to lunch. Upon learning that a client wanted to meet with him, the young man eagerly told her that he was currently on a boat ride and would soon dock at the shore. Zhang Shuchun reported the details of the conversation to the bank president and offered to walk to the dock. The woman readily agreed. Liang Chen was very happy to see his immediate superior again and smiled at her. The rest of the guests were here as well. Liang Xiun stated that she was expecting a very important guest. The man stated that he was ready to organize whatever it took. All you had to do was say the word. Unaware of the guests, Yang Chen and Zhang Yang slowly sailed towards the dock. They had had a lot of fun on the boat. Zhou Yu grudgingly said that everyone was only waiting for the two of them. Liang Chen thought to himself that they were quite interesting, in no hurry to go anywhere. Zhang Yang started to wipe his face. He was very tired during the trip. After rowing, he just couldn't feel his hands. Zhang Shuchun hurriedly walked over to Yang Chen and gave him a hand, helping him get out of the boat. He said that Mr. Yang looked good. Chen Liang and Zhou Yu couldn't understand what was going on. They clearly heard that the cab driver was called Mr. Yang. Liang Xiyun smiled and assumed that he was the same Mr. Yang that Zhang had mentioned. She was glad to finally meet the owner of the financial institution. Chen Liang couldn't believe that all of this was real. Common sense told him that a cab driver couldn't have that much money. Zhang Yang whispered and asked his classmate why he was called Mr. The young man reminded him that life was full of surprises. Zhou Yu deceitfully laughed and said that Liang Chen was a master of playing hide-and-seek. He purposely let Liang Chen brag on purpose so that he could outshine him. Zhang Shuchun introduced the young man to the president of Shengjin Bank. She wants to invest in Qinshan Resort and came to see it. Liang Xiun shook the young man's hand and noticed that he was hard to find. Yang Chen apologized for keeping the two big bosses waiting. He turned to his classmates and apologized to them as well. Chen Liang was still in a state of shock and couldn't even move from his seat. The bank president approached Yang Chen and asked if he knew Chen Liang and the other people on the bank. The young man smiled and said that they all studied together. Chen Liang found a job in a bank after studying abroad and organized a reunion today. The woman frowned and asked why Chen Liang didn't tell her about their acquaintance. He said that an ordinary cab driver couldn't be Mr. Yang. Liang Xiyun shouted for him to shut up and better watch his words. He better apologize to Mr. Yang quickly. 
Chen Liang realized that a storm was coming and asked his boss not to get angry. He said that Yang Chen himself confessed about his work in the cab service. The woman was getting angrier and angrier. She said that the bank rented the building from Mr. Yang. In addition, the land also belonged to him. All the classmates couldn't believe what they heard. They were unanimously surprised that the resort belonged to Yang Chen. Yang Chen said that there was no need to be rude. In fact, Chen Liang was not lying. He actually works in a cab when he has free time. So there is no need to apologize. Liang Xiyun smiled and said that she understood everything. Yang Chen had gotten everything he wanted out of life, and now he was just living the life he wanted. The classmates were very happy to meet Yang Chen. Now they would have something to brag about when they got home. Zhou Yu said that he admired him. Chen Liang couldn't believe that all this was really happening. Yang Chen gets everything so easily from life, while he can't even get what he deserves with hard work. Zhang Xuchun said that it was getting hot, so they would leave for a private conversation. The president asked Yang Chen to join them. The young man apologized. He has a reunion right now. Chen Liang ordered organic fish, and they are having a whole fish festival for lunch. The woman looked at the vice president unhappily. He thought fearfully that he hadn't done anything wrong. There was nothing to stare at. Mr. Zhang suggested that the young man invite him and the president to his lunch. They wouldn't mind eating with him together. Chen Liang laughed pretentiously and exclaimed that he should have thought of this himself. Of course, Mrs. Liang and Mr. Zhang are also invited to lunch. The woman asked if Mr. Yang had any objections. The young man replied that Chen Liang was in charge here. He would accept any decision he made. Liang Xiyun laughed and thanked Yang Chen for the favor. She suggested to hurry up and enjoy the delicious food. Classmates furtively discussed Yang Chen's hidden abilities and his restraint. He never bragged about his accomplishments. Chen Liang resented the betrayal of his friends. It turned out that they were just flattering him, and it was very hurtful. The man organized the banquet in a separate spacious room numbered 888. Chen Liang was eager to restore his authority. After pouring wine for everyone, he immediately rose from the table and raised a toast to President Liang. The woman got angry and reminded him that Mr. Yang was here. He had once wrested the vice president's post from her daughter and still didn't understand the simple rules of etiquette. The young man obediently turned towards Yang Chen and smiled politely. He declared that he was drinking this toast to his health. The guy smiled and stated that there was no need for formalities. They had all studied together. The woman frowned, thinking that she should be more persistent. Chen Liang said that Yang Chen had always studied better than him and behaved with restraint. He wondered if the boy's character had changed over the years. Liang Xiun was fed up. She exclaimed that Chen Liang was just a blind wannabe who didn't know what he wanted himself. She demanded that he come out immediately. The woman apologized to Yang Chen for her rude tone. Her young daughter submits to this savage. The young man stated that it was their business. Chen Liang was just a classmate to him. Zhang Xuchun demanded that the bank president drink three glasses of wine in a row as punishment for impulsiveness. The woman readily admitted her guilt and agreed to drain three glasses of red wine in a row as an apology. Liang Xiyun stood up from the table and asked Mr. Yang to forgive her behavior. Closing her eyes, she drained her glass in one fell swoop. Zhang Yang secretly admired the young man. He seemed to do nothing, but even the bank president obediently listened to him. At this time, Yang Chen's phone rang. The young man looked at the screen unhappily. As it turned out, it was lawyer Zhang Xiang calling. The lawyer spotted a familiar license plate number and asked where the young man was now. The boy was surprised that the lawyer had also come to the resort. Zhang Xiang explained that he came to negotiate with a client and noticed his car. He asked which one to talk to first. Yang Chen said that the woman the lawyer was referring to was now sharing a meal with him, so he could join them in a separate room. The lawyer exclaimed that this was a very funny coincidence. He promised that he would be there soon and ran toward the entrance to the complex. A few minutes later, the door to the banquet hall opened. A smiling man in a business suit appeared on the threshold. Liang Xiyun was very surprised by the lawyer's appearance and wondered how he knew she was here. The man replied that he was passing by to talk to a customer, but saw Mr. Yang's car and decided to stop by to say hello, so he was happy to see them both. The woman was even more surprised. It turned out that lawyer Zhang and Mr. Yang knew each other well. Yang Chen smiled indulgently. Zhang Xiang explained that the young man was one of the three largest shareholders in his company. Zhang Yang respected the guy even more. The bank president was surprised that the influential young man was also the head of a law firm. She cursed her subordinate who had not invited Zhang Xiang to the table due to his absent-mindedness. Chen Liang couldn't understand what he had done wrong again. Yang Chen came to the rescue. He smiled slyly and delicately asked the vice president to put another chair for the guest. The young man only now realized his gaffe and the strange look of his superior. He asked the waiter to bring another chair. Liang Xiun offered to cut to the chase. She doesn't want to dwell on the details of the contract and will listen to the lawyer. There are no strangers in this room. 
Yang Chen said that it is worth considering all proposals as everyone here is their own. He said that he heard about the bank's intention to invest in Qinshan Resort. The woman said that this resort seems more attractive than others. She hopes Yang Chen will cede some of his shares to them. The young man inquired about the amount in question. Liang Xiyun was willing to give 70 million for 49% of the shares. Yang Chen raised his glass and declared that this was not the way to go. Either 100 million on top or 35% of the shares for 70 million. Zhang Xuchun thought that the guy was too ruthless to his business partners. He was demanding too much money. The woman exclaimed that it was too much. They offered a decent reward. This price is more than twice the market price. Yang Chen smiled and explained that with proper management, the resort will become very famous. This price is not a high price. The bank president wanted at least 40% of the shares. She wouldn't agree to less than that. Liang Xiyun asked her to carefully consider her proposal. Yang Chen, meanwhile, remembered that buying the entire resort cost him 45 million. So it's a bargain. He asked to return to the matter a little later in a private conversation. The woman rejoiced and raised a toast to the young man. Two hours had passed. A lot of alcohol had been drunk during that time, and there was virtually no food left on the tables. Liang Xiyun, with a flushed face, could barely stand on her feet but still begged to sell her shares. She promises to continue cooperation in the future. The woman couldn't stand it and burst into tears. She confessed that she had to make an important deal. Otherwise, she could be removed as the bank's president. Yang Chen pretended to give up. He proposed to his interlocutor to go into business together. She thanked him profusely for the concession. Helping Liang Xiyun move on a more or less level path, the young man led the woman to the parking lot with her car. Secretary Mary took her under her arm. The president said that he would be contacted tomorrow to discuss the details of the contract. Yang Chen asked them to drive carefully. Fang Yingqi had been waiting for the driver for a long time and was happy to see the young man. He admitted that he had a little too much alcohol. His driver was on his way. The girl asked him to drink less next time, and not to forget that a journey from Sichuan to Tibet awaited them. She really counts on his protection and support. Yang Chen laughed. He opened the car door and said that he could guarantee the girl's absolute safety. Meanwhile, at the Shengjin Investment Bank's head office, there was cause for rejoicing. The company sent many gifts for Liang Xiyun's group. The red wrappers with gold ribbons could barely fit on the table. Mary asked her boss to choose one of them. The woman asked to send Yang Chen back a black phone. She explained that the gifts were for the whole group, and the clients were also related to her. Mary took the black box with the phone and perplexedly said that she would take care of it right now. Liang Xiyun stopped her. The bank president asked to take all the gifts on the table and let the young man choose what he wanted. Mary was even more surprised, but dutifully put all the gifts into one huge black box with their list. She called Yang Chen and explained that the management had awarded them new phones. She would like to hand the young man one of them. The girl asked where to find him. The young man replied that his last customer had forgotten his phone, so he was going to Dongcheng to return the device to the owner. They could meet there. After a while, the young man drove up to an elite complex of guarded cottages. This area of the city was considered the most prestigious. Smiling, Yang Chen dialed the phone owner's backup number and said that he had brought him the machine. To his surprise, the guy replied that he was busy playing mahjong and gave him his address. The driver got angry and said he would take the phone to the police in five minutes. The customer shouted that the guy was asking for a bad review and began to tell how hard it was to get the phone. Yang Chen didn't listen and ended the call.